Good day to you. Are we live? Is this live? Can you hear me? Hello, world. I mean, well, what am I, a 1996 Microsoft Word document? Or no, what was that? What was the Hello World? Is it like WordPress or something? No, no, something used to say Hello World. But hello, space, space world. How are you guys doing it today? It is a, it is a hot, humid, moist, uh, windy day here in uh, uh, Space Canada. Um, but of course, uh, we are live with Dengus, and today, today, we will be exploring death in Elite Dangerous. Uh, first of all, this shout out to folks, how's it going? Loot and Dark Heavy 8. Dark Heavy 8. Whatever happened to Dark Heavy 6 and 7? That's a question, that's a mystery to investigate. But yeah, so, um, you know, today, uh, interesting stream planned, um, I did a little bit of a poll, um, so to speak, on YouTube, and asked people, you know, would you want to see me uh, continue to find ways to blow myself up, to uh, explore, um, like, Odyssey content and missions, to go on another kind of, like, uh, exploration tour or, like, space tourism, check stuff out, um, as well as, like, Star Citizen and a couple other um, uh, things. Well, uh, it turns out there's a resounding uh, uh, three-way tie, actually, between uh, checking out Odyssey missions, space exploration, and uh, finding new ways to rebuy. So I kind of figured I'd find a way that combines <laughs> at least a couple of those. Uh, so today we're going to be exploring death. Uh, so basically, blowing ourselves up uh, in all sorts of different fun, wacky ways, but with a slit towards exploration. And in the process, we're going to be visiting a lot of different locations. Um, I don't know if we'll get to them all in one stream. Uh, I punched a bunch of locations into my uh, this uh, uh, Down to Earth Astronomy's like multi waypoint planner, and uh, let's just say there's a four thousand light year trip that we've got ahead of us. I don't know if we're going to get to everything, but we'll get to a lot of it. And in the process of blowing ourselves up, we're going to see some interesting locations. And, uh, you know, just to start with, uh, you may see me here uh, parked on a planet surface, but this is no ordinary location. In fact, we are actually on the summit of, um, I believe, what used to be called Mount Neverest. I'm not sure if it still is, but uh, it is the tallest mountain I could find on Nervi 3A. Now, in Horizons, this was a much um, uh, bigger location, but um, it'll still do for our purposes. Uh, now... <laughs> I was on another mountain in Nervi, which I think is a little bit shorter than this one, but um, I think you can see it over there. And that one has an ice peak. We might check that out after. You can see the textures really just don't look great from afar. I'm running this in, um, what is it, like, sorry, I'm used to like 1920 by 1080, but it's like further up, uh, 250, 2550 by like 1440 or something like that. But you can see it kind of looks like that mountain has like a urban camouflage on it. Right? It's like desert camo. It's a, you know, uh, the mountain was auditioning to be an extra in Rambo 3 and then uh, accidentally got its um, uh, texture circuit, the circuits mixed. But yeah, here we are uh, parked on top of a mountain. And the first death that we're going to kick it off with is simply falling off a mountain. Um, we're going to do this in an SRV because that will allow us to get a little bit. Um, I, I tried um, jumping off these mountains, but oftentimes it turns into another form of mountain death, which um, we'll explore after this. <laughs> All right. Um, was it to the right? Yeah, I think it was this way. I was just exploring earlier, looking for like the sheerest drop to fall off of. And of course, this, this mountain has a lovely little landing zone up top, so you don't need to be a mountaineer. You don't need to, you know, climb the summit and do all that sort of stuff. You can just come and plop yourself down here, and you get a spectacular look. Now, in Horizons, apparently, I believe this mountain um, was high enough that you could actually launch an SRV into orbit. Uh, I do not believe that is uh, still the case. But it's still a pretty big one. It's the biggest mountain I could find. All right. So, I think we want to go... Yeah, that's a pretty sheer drop. All right, now I am uh, recording each one of these deaths, and I'm going to be putting together... I think, like, there'll be one video that has all the different ways you can die in Elite. And so far, I'm up to 75 different ways that you can die. Um, but I'll probably stagger them and release them in chunks. So I might do, like, how many ways can you die uh, in exploration versus in a station versus on a planet. Um, so I'll be recording these, obviously, and trying to get, like, as many shots as possible. 
Um, so, you know, maybe some of these deaths we'll have to do a couple times. <laughs> Hopefully not. Because these, these rebuy streams are quite expensive. Uh, okay, no, sorry. We want to go drop this way. Because, yeah, look at that sheer drop. That's pretty big. Uh, now, of course, this is going to be falling off a mountain. Uh, one of the ones later on will be falling off a cliff, which I'm counting as slightly different. But um, coming on these mountains is, is quite a, a cool experience and does kind of show off the, the, the pros and the cons of the, uh, of the uh, uh, new terrain generation. I know, actually, before we begin, I actually I did a roadmap for this stream, if you guys are interested in roadmaps. Uh, let's just check out the roadmap for the stream. So, just switching over here. Uh, phase one, we're going to do some stuff. Uh, then in phase two, we're going to do uh, more stuff, plus other things. Uh, phase three, we might look into a thing, uh, plus some stuff. Uh, phase four, we'll let you know. And phase five will be arcs. So that's the, uh, that is the roadmap for the stream, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have been trained in the school of roadmaps, and I'm very proud of my work here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was watching a little bit of um, yeah, mixing the pilot before this stream, uh, and their sort of criticism of the roadmap. And yeah, no, I got, I can't, I can't not agree that the the roadmap is kind of kind of crappy, <laughs> kind of short term. Even the even Upsetty and Ant is upset, and you know that you've really screwed up when when Ant is not digging it. I don't know. What do you guys think about the roadmap? What the hell is that? What the hell are you doing here, Beluga? Get out of here! This is not. It's not a tourist location, or maybe it is. It is kind of cool though when you're on um, planet surfaces. You just have these random NPC ships. All right, so we gotta <laughs> just fall down this cliff. This is a hard. This is a hard thing to do. Okay, so I think the, the problem is I'm probably gonna screw this up. I have a feeling I'm gonna screw this up. Uh, Okay, so I'm going to lock the camera on the terrain. I'm going to start rolling. And are you ready to die? This is the first death of the stream. Here we go. Uh, am I moving forward? Yeah, I'm moving forward. Oh god, oh god, oh god. No, don't break! Alright, see, that's what I was afraid would happen. It's hard to kill yourself on a mountain. It's not um, it's not an easy thing. It's not as easy as it looks. We will persevere. We will meet our maker. Uh, I'm thinking, I don't know, that, that, that wide shot, it's just going to uh, knock him out of view. Oh, wait, I want to go the opposite way of where I'm facing. Yeah, I want to go that way. I think, because really, I think I'm going to get this started not in camera mode so that I am able to thrust away from the cliff, and then I'm going to jump in there real quick. <laughs> yeah, give give your pre uh, pre death f's in the chat. All right. Um, oops. Um, okay. I think we are golden. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Oh, not black camera of doom. Hate black camera camera blackout. Oh god, oh god. Oh god. <laughs> it's happening. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. I'm in the mountain. Uh, hold on. What do I do to make this thought happen? Okay, uh, we're just going to do this from inside the SRV so that at least... Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's take the pips out of shields, just so that we don't accidentally... You know, I'm going to turn my shields off, because I don't want to survive this. The goal of this is actually to die. It's more as that sounds. Oh my god. Yeah, see, the camera mode would just be going blackout, because I'd be falling in that... Oh god, I think my ship just departed. Yep, we were far away, far away enough from the ship. The ground is rushing up. Oh god. Um, I'm just going to try and push away... From the cliff. Now the weird thing is, like, you know, I've fallen from orbit. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember when I was in the, the Scardi stream. Or the stream. See, look at that, look at that. If you... Okay. No, that's, uh... That was interesting. <laughs> so you land on your wheels, everything is fine, and then a minute later you're dead. 
Well, there we go, our first death in SRV. Now, in the new mechanics of the game, when you die, and it's a jurisdiction, legal status, clean, lovely. No crimes for blowing yourself up on a mountain. Uh, when you die in your SRV, you just um, go back to your ship, and same thing on foot. So, we did lose our SRV there, which means we'll have to, before we head into the bubble, have to restock. But when you do it on foot, you literally just show up in your ship. There's no, um, no problem there. Uh, so actually I wanted to look at that other mountain over there as well. So we'll try another little uh, death by mountain. Can I show you in the menu how many rebuys I had? And yes, F number one. Um, can I show you in, the, in, a, in a menu how many rebuys I've had? I don't... Oh, you mean like total? Is that actually um, information that I can pull up? Let me just crash to the ground first and then I'll see if I can find that. I didn't know that it counted your rebuys. It's probably not as big as you would, as your imagination would suppose, but uh, it's probably bigger than most people. <laughs> I wish I could do like a rebuy counter. Maybe for future streams, I'll figure out a way to do like uh, some sort of uh, overlay or something like that that counts your rebuys. Over here, we're just gonna check out a different mountain. This one is probably not as big as the one we were just on. You can see over there, that is quite the summit. Though, oddly enough, I was here um, on this planet last night. Maybe I'm on a different mountain, but the um, mountain that I was on earlier had ice and uh, snow effects that looked really, really cool. I don't know, maybe it's uh, maybe they melted because um, it's been out in the day all along. It's certainly possible. Yeah, I don't know if this mountain's going to be really enough of a, a sort of a steep slummit. Slummit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't know. This, is, this, is, this isn't a mountain. This is a hill. What kind of fool do you think I am? Okay, I think we're going back to the beginning. We'll try that. We'll try that uh, one more time, but not with uh, SRV, with just people feet. Um, what's up, Reese? How you doing? 07. And Machine! Mr. Machine, what are you doing here? How is it going, buddy? Yes, it's very going very good. Roberto is having a great time in the hold of your ship waiting for your next episode. <laughs> machine, how you doing, man? I've been seeing you a little bit um, playing Odyssey. How are you feeling about um, Space Legs? Is it, is it um, got you juiced as a creator? Is it um, uh, a little bit weird and, you know, like I'm, I'm very mixed on it. I think overall positive, but, you know, certainly it's not. Um, I wonder if you could hit this mountain in Super Cruise. Now you're thinking in portals. Uh, but yeah, it's gone pretty good, man. Um, I've been having some fun. Uh, doing some streams, mainly building myself up, uh, or checking stuff out, uh, getting back in the swing of things. I'm debating um, next week if I want to do, um, I was thinking like either CQC, maybe, it's been a while, um, or potentially going over to Star Citizen, where literally I know so little. I am so um, uninformed when I'm playing Star Citizen that it actually tends to be quite hilarious. <laughs> Frustrating for me, but I'm sure entertaining um, beyond that. But yeah, look at this. Um, you know, I wonder too, like, is this realistic geological formation? Like, on a planet like this, could a mountain this, um, I guess, you know, sharp, uh, truly form? Yeah, Machines vids are cool. If you guys don't know about Machines channel, please go uh, look for Machine with a, with a 1. Um, and subscribe to his videos and check them out. I uh, play a character in his series by the name of uh, Roberto, who's his uh, ship launch pilot. But uh, Machine and, and, and JK run uh, their own little sort of. Um, you're, you're not a, you're not a, a mystery investigation. You're more like a freelance uh, machines for hire. They'll do anything uh, for money, for the right for the right payment. Uh, but again, it's it just a wonderful uh, series with really cool animation. Uh, that sort of, um, you know, that, that's where I'm wondering uh, how Machine feels about Odyssey and how that is going to um, impact how he does videos. Kind of takes the load off for you guys like uh, you and Score of Inturgent because there's a lot more you can do in game without having to uh, animate everything. But that said, you know, there's still limitations. Even in the episode that I'm working on, which, you know, coming soon, coming soon, it's almost almost done. Um, but even in that video, um, you know, I'm using Odyssey, like, a large percentage of the time, but 
Still need to use my old school, you know, cut and paste kindergarten animation to uh, bring other characters into a shot or to accomplish something that's just not possible, right? But um, certainly Odyssey takes the, a huge load off um, uh, in terms of being like a filmmaker. Now, if they would just get rid of the stupid blackout camera, I'd be a super happy camper. Okay. So, I think, yeah, this is the nice cliff. This is our sharpest, steepest boy here. We'll just get down, I think, to this plateau, get a nice good running start. We'll start by this rock. This rock looks like a good starting place. What a fine rock it is. A little space rock. Alright. Let's do this from camera mode. Let me go to free cam. I think we'll do a little over the shoulder kind of mass effect style. Um, has anyone played the new um, Mass Effect re-release? Because I haven't played it myself. And I'm like, I'd be interested in getting back into that game. So yeah, here we go. We're just going to fall off the mountain now. <laughs> this is fourth rebuy. We're doing it. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, and jump. Okay, it's not as... See, this is what I mean. is like you need to get... Um, good speed to really get off of these things. Thankfully, the Explorer suit does have some pretty good uh, jetpacking, but I find that, like, you know, I wish I could, like the SRV, you could, um, uh, you know, face yourself forward. That's not really... That wasn't a death. Uh, but with the SRV, like, you could face yourself forward and use your boost to actually propel yourself. Okay, I think I'm going to do a running jump from inside because I can't run in camera modes. Yeah, I mean, if you like uh, Machines content, you should also check out Ascorbius. Uh, he's done some new videos. Uh, Turgeon Starstone. Um, I'm trying to think of who else um, is in that sort of, like, animation camp. I would say, like, um, uh, the mechanic is not necessarily animation, but does some really cool um, things in terms of, like, what he does in his videos that's, you know, not, um, uh, you know, not easy to do in the game or sort of thing. Yeah, see, that jetpack just makes me lose speed, right? It's like, I want to gain speed, but... Let's see. Is that going to kill me? No. See, it's actually... Like, it's very easy to die on a mountain in an SRV, but not so not so hard in feet. Or not so easy in feet. Why can't I jump? Oh, right, because I am... I am in forced running mode. I cannot stop. Yeah, this is now... If we go into camera mode, here we go. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> He's just running down a cliff face. <laughs> there's something kind of hilarious about this. It's just like, there's no way that the, the speed versus the, like the speed of my feet. It just doesn't work. Let's take a look. How does your face... Whoa. I'm becoming the planet. What's just happened? Oh. See, I'm fine. I didn't even probably lose a health bar. Nope. See, that this is um, not as easy as it, as, it, um, as it looks, folks. Trying to uh, kill yourself as an explorer. There are a few ways that you can do it accidentally, but there's no sh surefire way. Especially on a low G planet like this, we got 0 .09 uh, Gs. Okay, well, let's see here. So <laughs> I'll tell you, um, on the snow, the snowcap peak uh, planet that I found, I did get some footage already of, um, oops, <laughs> of me doing this sort of thing, and I'm debating whether or not I should go to the trouble of like photoshopping um, skis. Well, I want to use jets, but when you're running, uh, when you're, you know, sort of, um, I guess, like, I would call it skiing down the surface, you actually can't, um, you can't jump. Like, in this, in that mode, when you're, when you're sort of, uh, your legs are locked and you're just falling, it's just simply, a, uh, yeah, it won't let you do anything. Like, even moving, it just, like, moves your body, but my momentum is still going in the, in the same way. The sad thing is, it's just like, you know, okay, there you go, you're fine. 
Um, I think we'll go uh, and tr actually use a different method of death for this. Um, what can I do to... I want to basically waste my battery. Does this thing cost energy? No. Well, let's just see. If maybe we can just jetpack over the side. It, 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 it's incredibly hard to kill yourself with a mountain um, as a person, unless you can just gain the right velocity and then you go splat, which I managed to do last night through this um, weird skiing mechanic. And I don't know if you guys can see the terrain just morphing and shifting like that, and I'm not sure if that's necessary or if it, I don't know if it, it definitely bothers me. I would like to see better terrain generation in a future update. But for being how high this mountain is, it doesn't feel like it takes a very long time to get down. Getting up there? Different story. Got to be a real mountain here. Maybe if we just use that momentum, use that skiing momentum. Okay, okay, so we can use our jet and we've got some air. Okay. That might help us gain momentum. We'll skip these rocky bits, because these bits I might accidentally stop on. What we're trying to do is gain maximum velocity. Maybe if we like shoot behind us, the momentum will propel us forward. I actually hate this gun. <laughs> it's not very good, in my opinion, because the bullets are so um, slow. Right? It's like shooting, uh, uh, trying to shoot a ship. But yeah, this is essentially um, a new activity in Elite Dangerous. I think, like, you know, like, there's, like, hooners. And I think for, like, feet people, this will be, like, um, mountaineering or mountain hooning. Where you are skiing down the side of the mountain, uh, picking up tons of speed. Oh, look at that. Jetpack actually worked for uh, I feel like we're going to make it to the bottom alive, and that's just not right. That's not right. So I didn't even have my shields uh, active. And if I was trying to live, I'd be incredibly delighted, but in these rare occasions where I am uh, looking to uh, rebuy, it makes you wonder. All right, maybe this is it, maybe this is it. We're gonna hit the ground and go splat. Nope, nope, we're fine. You know why? It's because I'm, I'm wearing these Adidas. These Adidas sh <laughs> shoes are helping me out. What I could do though. What if I do? Oh, I don't have any frag grenades? How is that possible? I must have used them all. Alright, well. I wish that you could, um, you know, like use a rocket launcher and propel yourself. Rocket jumping or whatever. But yeah, I don't think this is gonna. This is not gonna happen. Not on this planet anyway. Uh, but that's okay. We are going to have to recall our ship because we're so uh, far away from it. I'm very curious where it's going to try to land. <laughs> How this is going to physically work. If we can't get our ship, I'm like, how do I even, like, can, is there a way to, like, manually um, kill yourself without grenades? Yeah, I know. It's like, um, I got my Adidas on, so let's do some Slavic squats. <laughs> we're, we're spotting. I just want to squat on stuff. I do love the fact that we can squat in this game. But yeah, I um, saw that that sort of quote-unquote roadmap that um, Frontier put out. I wasn't super impressed with it. Hello, Chip. Don't mind me. Just testing, just testing science. Oh, there you go. Ship under attack. Now I know my ammo range. Okay, it is going to attempt a landing, apparently, on planet. Or will it? Maybe it's, it wants me to come up to him? Uh, hello, ship. Are you gonna come down? Are you gonna try this? Maybe I can just get up here and uh, make my way up there. Oh, true! Yeah, the gun on sheath means lower, uh, slower movement. That is a good point that I often uh, forget about. Uh, and please do obviously let me know if the... Um, Audio uh, balance goes off at any moment. If music's too loud, 
not uh, listening to myself uh, while I stream, so it's up to you to let me know. Alright, I think we can make it. Just be conservative with our jet jump juice. Okay. Ooh, I just thought of a <laughs> thought of an interesting way where we might accomplish a rebuy. Okay, I'm gonna start rolling on this. Uh, let me just see here. How how does this look? <laughs> yep, my ship is a little confused. It really doesn't know what to do. It doesn't know where to land, so it's just sort of put itself into a little pause here. Oh, the taser could drain battery. That's a that's not a bad idea, actually. That's not a bad idea. I, I um actually I want to try just one thing and let's just see what would happen if I taser my ship. Oh wow, that takes off like twenty percent. Yeah, you can get rid of your oxygen really quickly. No, but I think the way that we're going to rebuy here is we're going to tell our ship to get out, get out of here, and then we're going to see uh, how that ends up working out for us. Oh no. Um, what happened? Okay, that's a way to get air. You coming back? Help me? <laughs> okay, this could result in an interesting splat. That's one way to get yourself some air, eh? Uh, you know some cool music last stream? Well, uh, all the music in the background, I just put um, a list of uh, all the Tokoso tracks together that Tom has um, sent and done for me for um, Elite Dangerous purposes. And uh, definitely, if you haven't heard of Tokoso, uh, a brilliant, brilliant musician, he's done one Elite Dangerous themed album, and he's got a ton of songs that um, aren't necessarily on an album, but are Elite Dangerous related. Um, and I've been using his music for a real long time, and uh, it's great stuff, man. Um, a lot of people know uh, the hit song, Living in the 80s. <laughs> it's one of my one of my favorites. All right, is this gonna be enough to? Yes, no we've done it. We splatted ourselves on a mountain. So all you need to do is just um, go halfway down the mountain, recall your ship, then get on top of your ship when it's confused, and then dismiss it. Brilliant. <laughs> Am I climbing the mountain? No, I'm actually descending the mountain. Uh, Captain Clerk Kirk is climbing a mountain. All right, I'm just gonna mark this off. I've got like a tracking document here on my uh, quote unquote roadmap. See, I showed you guys the public roadmap, um, but I have my own roadmap here that you're not allowed to see. <laughs> All right, well, see, that was a clean death, so we will just respawn up in the atmosphere of Nervi. So yeah, I actually do wanna go back down there one more time and do um, running out of, um, uh, life support. So this is just one more, and then we will depart Nervi, and the next place that we're going to be heading is actually going to be about 448 light years away. And uh, we're going to visit a few of these. Um, there are things called Lagrange Clouds. And see how we can um, uh, die within a Lagrange Cloud. Uh, we'll also be doing uh, Space Anomalies, so we'll be checking a few of them out. I've got, like, I think three different locations for each. I figure, what the hell, um, I'll go visit multiple ones, and then along the way there are other deaths that can be done in uh, pretty much any, any location, right? Um, some of them are going to require getting down to like 0% hull, and then smashing my way into a planet's atmosphere at <laughs> high velocities. So, there'll be tons of different ways. But I do want to get an on-foot um, running out of air, because it is actually horrifying. And kudos to the... Um, the devs for going that route because when you're running out of oxygen and, and choking and dying brilliant voila it's amazing and why what better place to do it than on nervy 3a the home of mount neverest oh definitely the ship gave um up momentum there reese i think it, it launched me up like a geyser all right let us disembark can we see the mountain from here actually don't see it, and that's weird, because I don't think we're that far from it, but there's a tall one. 
All right, so yeah, that, I'm gonna start recording just right now. We're gonna just deplete our suit's oxygen by just snapping the oxygen out of the air with electricity. I do actually really like the overload effect. What does it look like in um, camera mode? Is that working? I got it working once. Well, maybe it doesn't even have enough juice for overload? What's going on? Does it not even have enough uh, juice left in it for... No, I guess like once it gets to the 27%. So now, we wait. 27%, I wonder, with the jetpack, deplete that quicker. Doesn't seem like it. Actually, you know, I really don't want to wait around for like 27%. Hmm, I wasn't... Okay, 1%. So like... Let's... Okay, let's just see if we can get to 25. If it's about like 15 seconds per percentage, then... Yeah, I suppose I can wait. But I'm not gonna record this. Save hard drive space. I did get a, a, a whole new system recently. It's something I've been saving for pretty much since um, Summer Mid Horizons, where you knew that Odyssey was coming. We didn't know it was going to be space legs, or if it was going to be atmospheric, or ship interiors, or what it was going to be. But at some point or another, I, I, I kind of knew I had a bit of a potato, and was going to need to, you know, make the leap in order to play things like Star Citizen, or whatever the future of Elite was. So sort of so kind of squirreling away money. Look at this shiny little rock here. Um, yeah, and, um, you know, as a result, end up getting a pretty decent system. It has, like, the RTX, um, 3070, I believe it is. The, like, below the most expensive one. <coughs> um, and, yeah, I mean, frame rates, I'm getting, like, yeah, like, 90 frames per second right now. Or 100 frames per second, so that's pretty good. Um, in, like, space and, like, normal, um, uh, like, sort of Horizons-esque situations... I've seen it go as high as um, 144. So, game is working great there. Uh, now, when you, as soon as you go to a settlement and you're like inside of a settlement. Um, there we go. So, we're at 20%. Uh, as soon as you go inside a settlement, then the frames will go, for me now, it, it tends to be like, you know, around 30, right? Which is still pretty not great, but um, much better than it was, uh, you know, sort of during the, the first couple of weeks that it was out. Of course, Odyssey is still a pretty new, fresh expansion. Um, obviously, I think there's there's still a lot more work for them to do, but um, I'm loving the fact that we can run around on our space legs. This has opened up a whole new dimension to the game. That uh, my hope is that they continue to um, iterate and iterate and iterate. And yeah, Reese, exhaustion kill. I guess what would exhaustion kill be? Would that be like running out of O2? Is that what we would call exhaustion? Heat stroke, I guess that would be dying a heat death, right? So, like, if I could get on a very hot planet. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to get the list up to ideally 99 ways to die in Elite uh, Dangerous. That's kind of my goal, is to find 99 different ways to die. And, of course, you know, the first ones are obvious ones, like self-destruct or get shot or, uh, you know, interdiction's gone wrong and such. Um, but then as you start crossing off those obvious ones, you start getting into really, like, you know, you start to really realize how deep and broad this game uh, to the point where like I actually have let me see here I have 19 ones on the list uh, that I'm going to try and chip away at today uh, we already did um, you know falling off a mountain uh, that was one um, I filmed yesterday one for a skiing accident now we're uh, doing oxygen deprivation in your suit like your suit running out of oxygen um, but then, you know, it's like, uh, uh, we're going to do falling off a cliff, we're going to do some geysers, space anomalies. You start to realize just how many different things there are in this game to interact with, whether it's to, you know, blow yourself up or, or um, uh, uh, you know, uh, actually play the, the, the game. But, um, I think that's what makes it interesting, is just that, you know, while they may say it's, you know, the, the, the whole slogan is like a mile wide and inch deep, um, it's not really a mile wide, it's more like a hundred billion miles wide, right? <laughs> it's an entire one-to-one -one galaxy wide. Um, and you know, you might decide, well, one day I want to just go around and look for crashed ships and like, 
you know, loot them for stuff. The other day I want to go check out a uh, prison being attacked by a Thargoid, or go see what Professor Balin's, Palin's old base looks like, or, you know, there's just so many different things that you can do uh, in this game. How to find and to know to do all those things, that is a different story. That's where I think the game, um, I wish they would have some improvement for just like, hey, did you know that there are generation ships, and here's how you can find them, and here's the first one, and you know, there's not a lot in terms of breadcrumbs. Like, if you don't read articles or, like, oh, I'm going to go browse on the Canon website one day, you'd probably miss 80% of the content in this game. I think it's just a, a you know, you're a space trucker with combat elements, right? Uh, what are you saying there? It's like, uh, Loot, you said, I know a way to die. Just press win plus L. I'm kind of, like, scared to do that because I don't know what that is going to do. If it is a legit way to die, I'd be happy to do it, but I don't want to do it when I'm... Let me try it after... Is it going to close the game, loot? I don't know. <laughs> I don't trust you now. <laughs> Reese, you're saying, Immersed Robot Vidge alleges update to improves the frame rate in station somewhat. Well, you know, I, 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 I definitely think um, it, it has improved from what they put out. Um, it is kind of like weird where, yeah, in the stations you will get these crazy, crazy drops. Um, but, you know, for me, and, and look, I, I now have a high-end system, which is weird to say because I've been running a potato for years. Um, you know, for the fact that you, um, oh, is there a way I can just, no. Um, anyway, the, the, the um, you know, I've, I've, I've lost my train of thought. I don't know where I'm going with that. Uh, all aboard. <laughs> What's the destination? Where are we going? Hello? Hello? I think I have dementia. <laughs> Space dementia. The madness has begun already. I'm not even into the, the second death and I'm already starting to get loosey-goosey. Um, anyway, I was just saying that, you know, um, the improvements already from what they put out from, like, patch one or whatever. No, don't. Haha. -ha. Okay, that was definitely an evil thing. Win plus L. What does that do? Is that, Does that, like, uh, would that, like, lock my screen or something and crash the game and I have to send a support ticket wait for Frontier support to get, to get back. Oh, you know, one thing I will say is, you know, I, I keep seeing in, in streams and even in the creators round table last week, um, which was like Yamex, Exegius, and um, and uh, Proxim. And, um, you know, a lot of people are talking about, oh, the game devs did this or this is why they did this. And, you know, here's the reality is we don't know what's going on with that company, who makes the decisions, who's to blame. None of that stuff is honestly productive, right? Um, I, you can look at Frontier and say, well, hey, like, I submit a support ticket, I get immediate response. Like, they're really good at that sort of stuff. Just don't know the reality of it. We have to kind of, I think, um, try to judge the game on its merits. Like, look at the game. Oh, it logs the user out. Oh, so it would log me out of, like, Windows. And then I would be, uh, the stream would just immediately grind to a halt. I get you loot. <laughs> it's actually scary that, that just two keys can do that, right? Um, but anyway, my, my, my point is just, you know, it's like judge the game on its merits. Judge your enjoyment of the game, your experience in the game. And, and you know, criticize it where it's due. Um, praise it where it deserves praise. But, you know, there's no, no sense in trying to figure out why or, or, or sort of who did something. Um, I'm, you know, not sure if feedback goes in and gets listened to uh, all the time. But, you know, that's the best thing you can do is, is uh, talk about what you like, talk about what you don't. And for the stuff that you don't, give um, nice constructive feedback and how you would like to be seeing it improved. All right, we're at 1% hull, so... Or hull, yeah, uh, uh, leg hull. Hull legs. Uh, so soon we will start experiencing oxygen deprivation and dying. <laughs> and I'll be um, pretty quiet for this one so you can experience the horror that is um, choking to death in this game. <laughs> in your suit. It's quite well done. Suit battery depleted. Activating emergency air supply. You can see the oxygen meter ticking down. Once that depletes, there's um, a grace period, which is kind of kind of cool. Like I do like. No, I'm not on Twitch, Shadow uh, Shadow Man fan. I am uh, YouTube only at this time. I do have a Twitch account. Uh, Spatula Dangus, but I only use that to like put on people's streams. I will eventually probably look at um, dual streaming because I think um, Twitch is supposed to be a good platform. 
YouTube has a weird delay with the comments that I don't like that's like They're defaulted. Uh, if you spawn a Thargoid at a Barnacle site, oh my god, get a get on foot and shoot it and it will kill you. I need to do that. That's going on the list. Windows key should be disabled, but don't test it now. Yeah, <laughs> this is not the time for... Because we're just at zero, zero, zero percent. Ideally, I want this to be, like, depleted. close to the thing. Now, I love how... Watch the effects of, of, of this, and specifically the sound design. I think it's brutal. But I love how things are getting blurry. Can't see straight. Like, this is just like a horrible, horrible, um, you know, first person experience, right? Hopefully I'll just time this to, to die within inches of my ship. See, it's almost like um, maybe the grace period is a little bit too um, gracious, shall we say? Because you can kind of see, I guess, is the health bar ticking down? Yeah, you can. Uh, yeah, you can see the health bar is ticking down, but at an incredibly slow rate. Oh, no! It, no it, apparently, it doesn't um, require you to get all the way there. So I said I would not talk during this so you can hear the, the horror but well the spatula does what a spatula does no regrets no rack rats <laughs> you have lost consciousness but you're 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 fine you'll wake up in your ship above the planet no harm no foul and no explanation to really what that's all about but that is death by oxygen deprivation people it can happen in the block it does happen all right so, um, there was one more, uh, and let me just see if, I, if this is still going to work as I wanted it to. I wanted to do some of this stuff while I was just in the bubble. Right, okay, so now we're going to do <laughs> Death Bite. Now, listen to the audio mixing on this one. Is this a lot louder? You're like listing side to side. What do you mean in my... Um, uh, my character uh, when you're when you're like running and dying of uh, oxygen deprivation uh, but yeah now we're doing um, uh, basically turning off your life support so you can see their oxygen is going to come down in, in two minutes and we're going to pretend to uh, pretend to try and make it somewhere but I don't think we'll be able to make it but oh my god it is exploding in my ears I don't know if you can hear um this thing as much. I'm gonna try to go out here. Yeah, we're definitely not gonna make that. A minute and 38 seconds. If we can make it, then fair enough. I won't count that as a death. But, but we've died, um, let's see, on, on the planet without uh, oxygen and now uh, turning off oxygen in our ship, which now will trigger a rebuy. Um, a, well, a proper rebuy that, that we will wake up in a station kind of thing. We'll see where we will make up because that will be a, that is a mystery to me. See, that's the thing, but I love the design of them, uh, uh, of the like running out of oxygen in your suit. It's flawless. It makes me feel horrible. And listen, listen, just listen to the raspiness of the breath in the ship. It's horrifying. I had asthma as a kid, so it's like, this is like triggering me, you know? Pilots Federation is synth slave gang. All of these. All of these, all of these. Or so the, so the legends say. Now they have, uh, you know, telepresence instead of multi -crew. And, oh god, I'm just like, I'm dying. Who was the guy who reported these choking sounds? Because that guy has definitely uh, choked before. He knows this shit. We are slaves. See, okay, now we come to the part where I go, why is it that when I run out of oxygen in my ship, that my ship explodes? <laughs> what does that mean, right? Because, like, what is the implication of that? 
So I'm like, okay, so you have like a little box that purifies the air and um, essentially renews the oxygen. It's got about, it can deploy about seven and a half minutes of oxygen in your ship. It's not like hours of oxygen, even on a D-type, but like, you know, you would think like, okay, the oxygen gets cut off. I'd probably have an hour of oxygen just in the cockpit alone, let alone the ship interiors, which don't exist. Um, but okay, you turn off your oxygen, you're running out of oxygen and your ship explodes? What's up with that? Um, yeah, so here we are. <laughs> We've just uh, responded to the local station. Oh, geez. Force me. Oh, yeah, of course I don't have any cartographics data. It's just force me to have it. Uh, I do want to just make sure all that is clicked. And I don't know how I... I well, I know how I feel about the, the new UI. I'm just not a huge fan of it. Um, you can see here I've got some secret missiles, torpedoes, just in case of reasons. Uh, and everything is mainly D-rated here. I've even got like a power distributor that's a little bit down to improve my jump range, which is quite lovely right now. And I've got two SRV bays just because you cannot um, rebuild your SRVs. Now I'm debating, uh, yeah, I might get rid of this cabin and replace it with, uh, what did I want here? Is, well, hold on, first of all, do I have a cargo bay? Yes, okay. So I want to replace this with research limpets, which they don't have at this station. Oh, nothing is simple and elite dangerous. You probably have to go to like some high-tech system, but well, that's fine. I don't care. Um, we will move on to uh, the next bit of our journey. I don't know what he's in there. Um, hey, what's up, Gold's up? Uh, when you turn it off, you vent the cabin, so what's in the suit is all you got. Fair enough, but then you have more than seven minutes in your, in your... But then what is, like, the difference between A-rated life support, which has 25 minutes, and, uh, E-rated, which has, like, two minutes? Because that doesn't... Are you saying that the life support modules on your ship fit in your suit? None of it makes any sense! Uh, anyway. <laughs> I'm not gonna rant too much. <clears throat> so the next place we're going to be visiting is actually just kind of, you know, hop, skip and a jump out of the bubble. It's not too far. So if you're, you know, it's about, looks to be about, you know, if you were doing runs in Quince or whatever, it's about the same kind of uh, distance into the coronavirus Austri Dark region KST. And what we're going to be looking for there, I believe, is um, one of them, um, what are they called? Um, Lagrange clouds or a space storm, if you will. Um, and, and I haven't, you know, to be honest, like, since these were implemented, I've only seen, like, a couple. I haven't really been, um, uh, finding too many of them or playing around too much with them. But we're gonna head out there and see how we can use that, that beautiful, um, space formation to murder ourselves. For science. Yes. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> the life support's still off. Hold on. Turn it back on. Don't be silly. Alright. <laughs> of course that would happen. Uh, what do you say? It doesn't. All the effort in the game design went into grind. Well, that's kind of what it feels like, isn't it? it, it it's just that, like, like, they think that we like that, or that's what they want us to do. It's kind of like the implication behind, like, how all the engineering all kind of coalesces towards this, um, you know, collect... 500 of these things and then you know then you can unlock the ability to talk to me and then then you need to collect 50 of these five of these three of these five of these and some of these things are rare and very hard to find and therefore like either a it's going to take you like six months of just in-game doing things to stumble across the required amounts or you're going to have to you know specifically target them and spend like two hours hunting them down and even then, because some of them are, um, oops, uh, some of them are, oops, why does it do that? Did I screw up my bindings? Uh, but because, oop, oop, get out, stop it, stop it. Um, sorry, one second, what have I done, what have I done, what have I done? Yeah, I don't want the composition scanner, or the data link scanner there. There, what the freaking, hold on, okay, that's why, detailed surface scanner on two. Um, shoot, lost that train of thought again. It's like, uh, I need to, like, uh, lay down some tracks, some thought tracks. Um, anyway, the, the point is, like, okay, so, like, either you, 
are naturally playing the game, which is what I try to do. I don't try to grind. I try to just, you know, do a mission and collect everything I see, and then, oh, wow, now I have enough to do this, right? As opposed to, like, okay, I want to get this gun to level three, therefore I'm going to do step X, Y, and Z. Like, that's, that's not playing. That's working to me. And I don't like that um, thing. So I don't mind stuff like, um, hey, like, go to a Guardian Beacon, get a key, that unlocks a weapon blueprint. But then when you have to do that 17 times... It's kind of like, what do you, what do you, what do you want me to be doing in this game? <laughs> like, should I be? Uh, should, is the game all about like upgrading your stuff to the max, or actually using the stuff that you've upgraded to do fun things? And I think that's where a lot of the like um, the game, I guess, direction or philosophy is sort of you know just not where I want it to be. I also like to look at some of these planets, funky stuff. No landables in this in this place. Um, like, pick a random direction, five, 5,000 light years, then you can talk to me, scrub. Yeah, uh, who's that, Palin? It is bizarre. Um, the, or the most recent one is like, fly in a taxi 100 light years. Like, it's just kind of pointless. Um, naturally, if you were just taxiing around, you would you would get that one. So, at least that one wasn't, that wasn't, wasn't excessive, but I know there's one other engineer. I don't know, what's his, um, get their names, get their MOs from this thing here. Where the heck is it? Yeah, engineers. Who is it here? Kit Fowler wants 40 opinion polls from bartenders. So let's take a look. Like, I've been playing Odyssey for a little bit now, visiting different facilities. Um, I think it's in... No, it's in this. Which 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 grind bucket is this in? Uh, duh. <laughs> like, it's like, dude, I've got so much stuff. And I don't think I have, like, one of these things that I'm supposed to sell to bartenders. And I guess it's like, sell it to the bartender, don't trade it to the bartender. I don't know. But here's my... This is my this is my observation about Elite from playing for, what is it, four or five years now. Crazy amount of time for, for one game, right? Which is a testament to how great this game is. Um, you know, at its core, right? Despite all the gripes. Um... Remember playing that long, the one thing that I found consistently is that if you just kind of jump in your cockpit and go, what am I going to do today? I don't know. Let's see what's going on. Oh, this system looks interesting. Let's go here. Let's see what's on the mission board. Ooh, that's an interesting mission. Let me do that. It's a great experience, right? Or like, let me get together with a friend and like, oh, let's go check out and see if we can find something out in the black on an exploration journey and you're talking and you're having fun. And it's, it's just, um, the more that you play, um emergently right to just sort of see what the game throws at you the more enjoyable it is it really is um a lot of fun to just sort of have things happen get yourself into a sticky situation as soon as you try to accomplish a specific objection and this happens to me a lot um, especially with filming oh i need an npc to do this or i need to uh, go to the system and get this shot but as an extension, like, you know, the, the gameplay might be like, I need to collect these materials, or I need to find a Thargoid probe to open this. Oftentimes, that's where the game's fun breaks down. And you're either running into a wall with this sort of RNG um, barrier, where, like, uh, you go to a system... I remember waiting for Thargoid probes around an ammonia atmosphere, and you had to just wait for the signal sources to appear. And sometimes it'd be like two and a half hours before you'd find them, right? Or try to instance with your friends. Um, the more specific that you're trying to do something, the more likely that one of the game's mechanisms will interfere. The less of an objective, the more, um, I guess, like, lackadaisical you are in terms of, like, what you want to do in the game, the more the game shines. Which is a weird thing, right? That's just my experience. So I try to go uh, and throw out the plan as much as possible. And holy shit, I was going to say, that it looks like a big-ass star. And, um... The scale is much more realized when you see the small ass star next to it. Are there any first footfalls in here? No. Interesting. Wait, what's going on? Why did it pop out of that? It's my heat. Um, I'm going to do a first footfall here, I think. Which one should I do? These both look kind of interesting and rotatey. Not much of a difference between this and this, other than this one's a little smaller. I think we'll pick number two, just because there is a very high chance that um, these planets could be far too close to this ginormous star uh, for me to get out and get first football on. It's certainly a possibility. 
Uh, what do you say there? Reese is... Uh, wait, hold on a second. Uh, and then Shadow Man. Uh, the guy who wants a bunch of escape pods or something. Guy with glasses. <laughs> um, live service games are fraud. Uh, Ross got me too. Later this year, Horizons will disappear forever. Yeah, I, I, I thought about that. About Horizons, you know, once Elite kind of rolls out... Or once Odyssey rolls out, Horizons will be gone. And um, I've had to pop back into Horizons for a couple of reasons, but not too much. I mean, look, I'm all for the progress. I'm like, you know, give me give me space legs, and if Horizons has to go at some point or another, that's, that I'm fine with that. But I wonder if they've considered the idea of keeping that alive. I think the problem is just, like, how do you deal with old code and nude code, and the old code has to have something to account for the fact that there's little people with legs running around, right? You think this one would be too hot, Reese? Uh, if you could only buy the materials, it would be fine. New players would have to go out and find stuff. That's how they learn the game. We've got billions and nothing to do with them. See, that's where I kind of think um, it's a bit of a dangerous argument. Because if you could just buy materials, then why would you ever ever need to go find materials, right? Let's see here. Ooh, yeah, this might be too hot. Um, we're going to try anyway. Or I'm like, yeah, because I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Because what is the, do we know, what is the limitation for, for suits? Because it doesn't actually, um, I don't think, give the information in game. Or if if it does, it's obscured. Um, we'll try landing on the night side. Maybe it'll be colder there. It is one of those things where, like, in, in the backside of Mercury, kind of kind of frigid. You could freeze to death on, on, on Mercury right next to the sun. Uh, Guardian and Thargoid stuff would still be farmed, but that makes sense. Uh, they're not produced in factories by humans, they're farmed by companies like most other mats. Well, this is where I agree that I think... Um, it, so, look, if I had to redesign engineering from scratch, I think materials is kind of ridiculous. Like, why is it that I have to personally go pick up five units of, you know, data that can be downloaded from the internet? Like, you know, just tell Bill Turner, just get download that data with BitTorrent. You can get cracked industrial firmware from the pirate bay what's what, what it's 3303 why are we like having to go collect sulfur from planets like we don't have like sulfur mills that we can fly to and purchase from and and maybe that if you were going to go with um materials and purchasing them and all that stuff uh, yeah maybe you still have to go to specific places to buy them fair enough um the way i would do it though is i would just make it mission based so you go to an engineer and you go listen i want uh this gun to make uh, the heat death of the universe look like child's play. I want it to like sap the heat from uh, any target I'm shooting or, or increase the heat of a target I'm shooting. Okay, cool. I've got the materials. I've got the commodities. Like I'm an engineer. I get bulk pricing on this stuff. It's no big deal. But for me to work for you, little peon pilots federation loser, you're going to have to do something for me. And so let's say, like, every engineer, like, you know, you go to and say, uh, yo, Felicity, I want better frameshift drives. Okay, well, tell you what. Go to this planet, scan, like, five different forms of life, and then come back, give me the data, and, and the module is yours. Right? Not even money. Just do the missions for, uh, in exchange for um, uh, uh, the pieces, right? And that actually promotes gameplay, not just, like, you know, go here, find six rocks, shoot rocks, collect materials, bring them back, which is the same loop no matter what you're um, engineering. But if there were missions that kind of related to the parts, like, okay, I want my um, fuel scoop to be engineered. Okay, well, oops, 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 okay, sorry. Land. All right, let's see if we can disembark. Oh, we can, wonderful. We're getting first football people. Um, but it would, it would definitely slow down the progression. Like, if you had a fully engineered ship, that would be like, hey, you did uh, 500 missions to get that, and each mission was related. Like, hey, you want um, you want heat sinks upgraded? Well, then you are going to have to uh, uh, scoop from 20 different stars, and you know bring me a sample of their gooey uh, star blood. Um, oh, you want your lasers uh, thing? Okay, well then equip those lasers, go out, and shoot 20 cops with them so I can calibrate them lasers, and then. Um, I will uh, make the modifications that you seek. Um, and that way it's still kind of like, um, you know, sort of taking time to uh, uh, make it so that you can't just like go and buy all the materials you need and get everything engineered in one go. Because otherwise, like a new player is going to come in, uh, they're going to immediately go, um, uh, you know, grind up to Cobra, 
uh, go to friggin' Boran, mine a bunch of void opalers or low temperature diamonds or whatever, and then just buy all the materials they need, and all of a sudden they've got a, you know, fully engineered vulture uh, two days into playing, right? So I do think that, like, you know, there should be some time and investment, but think about it like, okay, like, I needed Ramtaw to engineer my... I don't know where I'm from engineers. I haven't been doing it in a while. But, you know, it's like, I need X-Engineer to thing. And then, like, in order to do that, I had to go out and do this thing that then creates, like, a memorable story where it's like, yeah, I remember the time I had to engineer my Python. I had to do all these different things. And then this one went wrong and something happened. Um, as opposed to, like, yeah, like, uh, yeah, I upgraded my suit. What did you do to do that? Well, I went to this base and then found some materials and then relogged and found some more materials. And then I went to this base and found some other materials. And then I got those materials, and then I got those materials, and then I got the data materials. And then I went back, and then unlocked the engineer, and then they wanted more materials. So I went and got more materials. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, you know, and, and I would apply this philosophy to a lot of other areas in the game. I am working um, very slowly on a couple um, video ideas that I want to do that are literally just me throwing out, um, I guess, constructive suggestions on areas of the game that I don't like, um, or that I think could vastly benefit from a relook or a redesign. Um, two of them in mind are, are power play and obviously the, the, the crime and punishment system. Both of which I think are overly confusing and don't really... I just feel like that there's so much more that you could do with those um, kind of tools in the game. Here's some interesting planets with atmospheres. Dargolosam and Zilba's. Oh, this hasn't even been mapped. Well, those aren't landable, so... You know what? I don't care. I do have an addiction to getting, like, first footfall, though. I am excited that there is now another way to sort of tag uh, planets. I don't know what it is about space graffiti, but it really does feel like, oh, wow, I can smatter my, smear my name all over the cosmos, and uh, people will come to this system and go, oh, a spatula was here. And I don't know, I think that's a really cool aspect of this game. The fact that it is like this one-to-one -one Milky Way galaxy, our own Earth is there, and you can go out and smear a star. Who wouldn't want to do that? Unfortunately, yeah, within like two days of Odyssey, all the, the main tourism locations, like if you haven't smeared your name on something um, well-known, you know, those spots are drying up. I was lucky enough to get a, a, a graffiti smear in um, the Robin's Nest uh, Planetary Nebula and uh, in the same system with the uh, Thargoid um, attack in the prison ship. Um, just having any kind of narrative to hold out as a road to something would vastly improve the game. Yeah, I agree, Shadow Man. And then Reese and um, have all upgrades tied to different factions. You can join only one at a time. So, hmm. okay, so Reese kind of like, I guess, and I guess this is sort of spoilers because like, I'm working on an idea for like power play, how to fix power play. Probably will be the title of the video or something. Um, and I don't think that like, okay, like I like the idea behind power play of like when you join this faction, you've picked a side and maybe it's an imperial faction. And that means that, you know, people that are with federal factions will not like you. And it sort of creates like that um, potential tension in the gameplay. I don't, oh, that's a biggie. That is a big gas giant, almost as big as a star there. What are you, big boy? Oh, you've already been mapped. All right, well, not a virgin gas giant, I'm gonna move on. Um, but like, I don't like the idea that like, modules are tied into power play. Oh yeah, when you work for Eisen Duval for like four weeks and do 750 merits, then you can unlock the shield. <coughs> to me, okay, so these would be my principles of fixing power play. Um, they'd be like, power play missions, right? Where it's like, rather than just like, hey, sit here in the dock and every 30 minutes you can take 10 data uh, points and then deliver them someplace to aid expansion or you can buy more like, oh, who the hell did this design <laughs> um it's horrible um i think it should be like you know here's a power play mission we need you to like infiltrate this system and kill these pirates like they should just be different uh types of mission but when you're doing power play missions and when you're sort of when you like activate your power play when you're like i've signed up to this faction uh, and now I'm, you know, actively flying the flag that you have to fly a faction ship. Like, you're not flying your own ships, you're flying, like, stock ships. Like, okay, you want to be uh, a scout for this faction, you're flying an eagle, 
we built it for you. We've engineered it for you. That's what you're flying. You can't change your modules or outfits, right? So there's like stock power play ships that present different challenges in play style, right? So like here, you're in a minor ship. We have fitted it with like turreted lasers. You're going to have to deal with that. You can't change that. And we're going to provide an NPC wing for you, or you can bring along uh, friends in a wing as, as wing members. And, you know, we're going to ask you to mine in this specific location. And after a certain amount of time, people will attack you, right? And let's say you're on a power play mission, and there's, let's say, uh, you know, buddy from another faction. Hold on, let me just... Uh, here we go. Yeah, there's two noter... 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 Notable! Notable stellar phenomena! I'm going to check them both out. Uh, but let's say, like, you know, you're, you're flying on a power play mission. The mission is, like, take this keel back that's equipped for mining out here and just, like, you know, don't die and come back with, like, at least 10 tons of uh, utopium or whatever. Um, so let's say you go out there... Someone from a different faction can just sign up to like join as uh, like an antagonist, and so like you know like just like you can queue for CQC, you can queue for that, and if it's, it's selected, it'll just pull you from your ship, plop you into like an NPC designed ship, and you get to take over from an NPC to fight another faction. So it kind of encourages like uh, in power play PvP, like you know, I think that would be an awesome system. Probably too difficult to develop, so it'll never happen. But. Um, look forward, eventually I will do a video getting out my ideas and fully flushing out that um, idea. I don't know if I've made any sense while rambling about this. Uh, what are you guys saying here? Um, and the grind wouldn't be so bad if the default mechanic for everything. Money, shifts, rank, engineers, power play. Yeah, I mean, to me it's like, it, I, I don't want to grind, I just want to experience, right? And if I have to, anyway, hold on, I'm going to start recording because we are going to, uh, probably our mind's blown. Or maybe not, I don't know. Let's see how cool this place looks. I have not visited this system. I don't know what uh, we are in store for here. Whoa! Okay. Nice. Very nice. Yeah, so it looks like we got, a, we got ourselves a red one. With the spiky boys. Wow. I mean, how do you not see this in space, right? This looks like a nebula. Now, some of these uh, so-called space storms will actually have, um, what do you call it, uh, lightning. I don't think this one's a space storm, per se, but and what is all this cosmic, just cosmic dust kicking around, like a little bit of iron dust? So, okay, Rubiconium, we just got a codex discovery, and that's wonderful. We'll get a voucher, which is basically 50 grand, who gives a shit? But more importantly, we get, um, I guess, it, like, in the Codex, which is cool. Uh, and I wonder if I go... Like, if I die, I still get to keep my Codex data, right? Okay, what can I do here? I want to scan this boy. You can see also, like, these guys show up on my radar. It's a little bit odd. Perpium metallic crystals. Like, perp... Perpurium? Is this really what you chose to name them, just because they are purple? It is very pretty, though. I do like the, the purple and red. Um, okay, so... We could easily do Death by Running into Spiky Boys here. Um, my thought is I kind of want to check out the other uh, cloud first and just see what the visuals look like before determining which one we should blow ourselves up at. But what's kind of cool is as you get into these the dark areas of this cloud, like you can see here, it's getting pretty thick. Um, yeah, like this is getting a little scary, actually. Like, I can't even see anything. Oh, wait, hold on. That's different. That's Flavium. Oh, it's just, uh, it's getting dark because space is returning normal. Okay, Flavium is different from Purpleonium. I just want those sweet, sweet uh, codex discoveries, you know? I don't know why. I don't know what they do for it. Probably an engineer at some point will be required. You must have 500 codex entries before I will engineer your space boots to have um, uh, more uh, tread capability. Let's use more purple yellow. Purple okay, let's check out the other stellar phenomena. We'll see if it's um, much different, and then we will find a way for uh, this space cloud to um, help us meet our maker. 
And ooh, look at that. That's kind of cool. You're looking at the sun um, through the cloud. It's kind of all blurry and stuff. That's really cool, actually. See, I think these are like some of my favorite uh, things to look at in this game, but um, like, you know, it's like, how many people do you think have actually visited one of these? Like, I'm sure everyone is interested in exploring, sure. And they're not, this isn't that, this is like a few jumps from the bubble, like six or seven jumps, right? It's not that far. Anyone who wanted to jump in, um, oh, and by the way, I'm in open, so if you want, uh, come gank me, come join me. Uh, whoever wants, uh, just come in, send me wing invite, or, uh, Come stalk and kill me. I don't care. It's part of the part of the objective today here is to die. So if you can help me with getting some ganking kills uh, on the list, I haven't got gank yet. So uh, what are you saying there, Shadow Man? I haven't seriously played since the Pain Knight nerf. I keep it installed. Log in to squish things in my Corvette every once in a while. Uh, last time you flew into the sun, just to see how, how how high I could get the heat. Twenty eight hundred. Wow, that's impressive. Next death. Next, next death. Check footfall in Sagittarius. Eye. Check footfall in Sagittarius. Sagittarius A is what you're what you're saying. I, I don't think there's anything to land on in Sagittarius A. Ooh, we got pretty blue. It's a blue cloud. Dirty burr. You know, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I have all this um, root plotting done here, but when I blow myself up in this cloud, I'm probably gonna warp back to the bubble. Maybe the journey won't end up being um, uh, the 4,000 light years I had prognosticated. That could actually help. It'll help me find more uh, more deaths. Okay, so before I do blow myself up, I do want to get my codex points here. So this is a Carolium Lagrange cloud. Who the hell names these things? Like, Socrates is still alive to this day and still... We must name it Carolulium. It's like, why can't we just name it like Blue Nebula, Blue Lagrange Cloud, Red Lagrange Cloud. No, it has to be Carolulium. It's from the Latin genus of, um, of Lulium. I think this might be the same purplish, yeah, same purplium as before. Now, again, in some of these, um, so-called clouds you will find like thicker areas and you will find uh space anomalies the planet you landed on 16 minutes ago oh yeah 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 oh the 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 um it wasn't sagittarii it was um skagitubius i don't know all right well you know what i think um but do you want me to check it after death to see if it maintains? I'm pretty sure it does. I'm pretty sure footfall is like instantaneous. Um, okay, so we're gonna do a couple things just to prep for this death. First thing we're gonna do is get rid of these nasty, nasty shields. And second, we're gonna find a spiky boy here to rub ourselves off on. I mean, rub against. I mean, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. I'm gonna start recording now just because in case. Sometimes when you're trying to get to 1% hull, you can find yourself getting there quicker than you wanted. Okay, 89. That's a pretty good chunk. Just another little boop here. Purpurium. Oh, okay, down to 68. I think one or two more might do it. 40, okay. That was a drop of, what, 18%? We can do this. We can do it. Just don't overdo it. Okay, 10%. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Exactly where I want to be. Okay. Now, we're going to line ourselves up in a most beautiful shot. And I almost feel like I kind of want to come from the sun uh, into the cloud because it looks really cool. I'm just really hoping that right now there's not like a hidden spiky boy right there. <laughs> Uh, should be far because what I'm going to do is get kind of a shot um, while in front of the ship right, let's slow down turn around honestly this is um, very pretty and relaxing I wish there were more of these um, lovely sights okay I think you look like a nice candidate to be my receptacle 
Okay. Very carefully, go into camera mode, unlock the camera so we don't change our ship heading. Let's line up a nice little shot here. We want to get well in front, that way we don't get um, crazy blackout cam. Okay, I'm going to start rolling and put ship controls on, and here we are. Now all we need to do is stand back and let the magic happen. I'm telling you, it's, it, it, sometimes it, it can be very, uh, uh, even when, like I said, when you're trying to do something specific in Elite, no matter how, what it is, whether it's blowing yourself up on a spiky boy, it takes a certain level of skill. There's no area of the... Perfect. <laughs> okay, that worked lovely. Uh, I wonder if it gives you like a reason. Because sometimes, now the, the new incident reports will show sometimes like yeah, a reason that you're killed for piracy. No, Spiky Boy had no reason. And look at that, it's going to bring us right back into the bubble at Satisfikaya Vision. So, I just want to mark that off on my sheet. That was one of the um, Lagrange Cloud murders. The next place we'll be heading is... Oh, okay, that's Kun, which is in the bubble. Hey, what up, Tukoso? How you doing? Yeah, you just joined as I was getting hit by a spiky boy there? <laughs> Yeah, we are doing a combination of a bubble tour exploration um, stream with uh, the emphasis on um, rebuy and finding new ways, new and interesting ways to uh, destroy ourselves in Elite Dangerous. Uh, now, first of all, uh, we did want to just check and you know verify that even though we've blown ourselves up, did we still get? Uh, did we still get our lovely... Okay, I think it was a little bit further back. It was not Swonus. It was Sagittary something, right? Sagittarius. We are looking for... Yeah, 60A Sagittary I. We'll just look at the system and make sure that we got our lovely... Wait, what the hell? Um... Um, there was a planet there and I landed on it. You saw it in the stream. This is not, I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. There was a planet there and I landed on it and I have first footfall. Where did it go? I remember there was this planet and then there was another spinny boy right next to it. What happened to the planet? Okay, let me just try going back. I'm not crazy, I'm not crazy. This is <laughs> this is a little unsettling. Uh, I think it's gotta be you, yeah, you're a big boy. Oh, you're a big boy. Okay, so apparently by discovering this planet, it no longer exists because that's how much the game likes uh, dear old spatula here. Tom, I swear to you that there was a planet here right there. Looked just like that one. Spinny boy landed on the black system. No, this is not another system. This is the one, Sagittarius 6A. Remember the big boy and then, oh, you know how big it is because the little one's there? What is going on? The developers are watching and they're changing the universe as we speak. That is insanity. Um, but yeah, I did, I did do a test on this, um, and you still get your first footfall even if you die before you claim your expiration data. Now, of course, my um, Codex Discovery uh, money is gone, but if I look in my Codex, <clears throat> which also, this, oh wait, no, not that part. This needs to be uh, fixed. <laughs> I find it very, uh, this whole thing is like hard to, navigate but here you can see like yeah like the confirmed location that's where we were corona ostra dark so the codex um confirmations at least uh, stick around even if you die as well as um uh first footfall now of course if you mapped a planet or scanned a planet and discovered a planet that all goes away um when you uh when you do the thingy um right so what is the next location we're going to kuhn 
Kun Kun Kun. If my galaxy map will load. Uh oh. It's kind of frozen. Uh, what do you say, Shadow Man? In the face of mankind, there were seven factions. Player ran. Dev pseudo controlled a few to main stability. But how much would the game be improved by player led factions? Well, funny enough, I'm trying to get um, uh, Dengas Investigations as uh, a faction. And I actually emailed them because I couldn't uh, use their form to apply. And I got a response back the same day from the guy who's like, he's like, oh yeah, I take care of the faction system. Of course, the form broke when uh, we moved to Odyssey website or whatever. So thanks for letting us know. We'll get that fixed and I'll keep you posted. So actual confirmation that Dengus Investigations may eventually become a uh, player minor faction in Elite Dengus, which is very exciting to think about. Uh, of uh, 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 you know being able to go to a system and see your your uh, own detective agency uh, there that's cool all right so Kuhn is about four jumps away that's no big deal uh, did the planet talk to you weird that it is gone well it didn't talk to me uh, this one was a talking planet those are pretty rare I I do feel like I need to do another one of those in some one of my episodes soon because I love that recurring gag. Uh, the map is bugged as hell. Sometimes you have to re-log in to fix it. That could be, that could be a factor. Maybe it's just bugged. It did look like it was still trying to load something from that system. So I think it was just like not loading the planet that I discovered. And maybe there's some sort of conflict between. Oh, he has first football, but he don't have uh, a data because he blew himself up. So maybe that was what confused the galaxy map. I don't know. I ain't no programmer. Uh, oh, you mean major factions. See, okay, then I feel like it, the game would become like EVE Online. But I do kind of agree that, like, I think, like, power play itself is, like, for these, like, game design factions. But I think, like, the real power play should be about, like, player-led factions gaining ownership over systems and being able to then say, well, you know, we want to be a democracy or we want to be, uh, uh have slaves illegal or legal, um... And setting kind of the, the politics of different regions of space and then sort of fighting over it with other factions. I think that's really cool gameplay. And I don't know why people would want... Like, I, I guess some people are down to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to fight for Denton Petraeus, right? But I think people would be more emotionally invested if they were fighting for their own factions. And it's, like, I think a huge, um, huge, huge, huge um, thing that could be uh, a focused on the game if they were to, you know care about something that wasn't grind so never gonna happen uh <laughs> but major factions i don't know like i feel like you know federation empire alliance like yeah give them control over the narrative if they're gonna do something with it not just like tease a federation empire war for like seven years and not ever, ever have it break out or have any meaning um you know, hire Drew Wagar and have him write some storylines and help execute it with, like, the community manager team. Like, why you no do this, Frontier? Why you no do this? Then us content creators gotta make up our own stories. Which I'm fine with. That's 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 what I'd do. Uh, what are you saying there, Reese? What if ED were, like, Skyrim SE? What is SE? Special Edition? Or Fallout 4 with downloadable mods all platforms? Well, I don't think you're ever gonna get elite mods because, um... It is like an MMO or whatever, and mods obviously might skew the game. I would love to see like visual mods and stuff like that. Like if I could get turn my ship skins into like Nicolas Cage's face or put um, you know boobies on my ship or something, would love it. But then no one else would be able to see it unless they had the mod. So I don't think mods will ever happen. Really dangerous. But hey, maybe at some point or another they will say okay. Um, uh, after Odyssey 2 comes out, we're going to release an offline version of the game that is moddable, that's solo play only. And hey, I, I'd be down with that. Why not? I promised it at the beginning, apparently. Uh, Mint Horizons, not Odyssey. Um, oh, like an. Oh, so you mean like uh, Horizons becomes like a moddable single player? Yeah, sure. That, that's kind of what I mean. It's like, yeah, eventually it'd be nice if they put out um, sort of like a moddable solo version of the game that you could just download and not have to play on server and all that stuff. And could mod so it looked ridiculous and make the background of the sky like uh, memes, you know. That's my dream. Memes in my dreams. I passed. I, what? You passed. I laughed in the middle of the store. What are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? 
uh, to go so make uh, yeah make power play of actual lead effects so uh, it's so abstract at the moment it's a missed opportunity yeah that's what I'm saying it's just like it's like you know I guess if you're into background uh, background simulation stuff you might appreciate um, the core design power play but like it just there's nothing to get invested in there's nothing interesting I talked a bit earlier about what I would do to fix power play and I do intend to put like a whole video together on it um, I think it's a good point now where am I going 11 BA is where I want to go uh, so we have to count this manually. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. No, sorry, it's that one. BA, that's the one we want. Never mind, they're all labeled because it's not exploration that we're in the bubble. Okay, and what we are looking for on Kuhn, uh, we are going to map the, s the sucker here. And uh, what we're going to be looking for is geysers. And we're going to try and use geysers to blow ourselves up. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible. <clears throat> I'm just going to super cruise assist so I can read the comments without smashing into the planet, which we'll also be doing later. Um, but one thing at a time, one death at a time. Um, after just so many questionable things, yeah, it really it does. It, it it's like there's there's so much to like and so much to be confused about. Um, I'm always kind of in the middle, where I'm like, look, I, I'll, overall I like it, overall I like uh, directions it's going in, but like things like engineering and the grind and things like power play or multi-crew, I'm like, if you just spend a little bit more time or kind of change your approach just like by 10 or 15 degrees, it would be so much more appealing to so many more people. And instead you just kind of like, you've left it, right? Like there's nothing going on. Like I guess they kind of changed some multi-crew with Odyssey, but... Uh, they haven't, like, intrinsically changed too much about the system. Other than the fact that, like, oh, now you can... There's a difference between, like, physical multi-crew and telepresence multi-crew. Which is interesting. I mean, I'm glad that they didn't, like, ditch telepresence, because it would be super annoying if you always had to sort of find a meet-up spot and get over to the ship. I still like the aspect of multi-crew that, like, I could be in Colonia and bring a friend from the bubble into my ship to see some cool sight out there without him having to travel 26,000 light years across the galaxy, you know? Um, and Shadow Man, you're still mad about Salome. They scrapped the whole storyline because of some rando... You mean, what, Harry Potter? Or... Besieger? Um, I don't know if they... I don't know if... I wouldn't say that. I mean, I think Drew kind of, like, wanted it to be immersive. And from what I understand, like, Drew and Harry Potter, them both actually did a stream together. Um, and it wasn't... It wasn't scripted. Like, that wasn't, um... A, a scripted event, and... I don't know. I mean, uh, I think the instancing was the bigger criminal that day. Like, uh, it was a great idea, but the way that the game instances just doesn't allow for that idea to really truly realize. Because <laughs> I know, because during the Salome incident, I was, um, you know, you could friend up or request friends from all these different characters from the book. Salome never accepted my invite until after she died, weirdly enough. Um, but um, uh, Ran Corson was the character that I had... Um, got a friend request accepted from. So I figured, well, I'll follow Rand, try and protect him. Uh, but there was, like, a whole bunch... I remember there were, like, people organizing in discords and saying, like, uh, you can't bring weapons or you're going to be shot on sight. And it felt like that was kind of a trap. And anyway, long story short, um, I was not part of any of the organization. Uh, just kind of, like, did my own thing and tried to catch up to him. And managed to, you know, uh, without him, uh, you know, just by checking the map and seeing, like, where do I think he's heading? Oh, here's the next system. I was able to jump, keep up with him, um, and all that kind of stuff. And hold on, just let me uh, get into proby mode. Um, and got all the way to the end destination, which was, like, some tourist beacon in, I think, Tian Sala. Somewhere in the Lave uh, crust, plus, Cruster. The Lave Cruster. Uh, okay, geysers, 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 geysers. Okay, we got geysers here. Um, okay, uh, it looks like there's a nice, consistently solid patch right there in the middle of a nice, lit, well lit area. So we'll go there. And if Super Cruise Assist could just back right half. Um, but yeah, so, and then, yeah, got to the very end, and then he quote unquote combat log. Now, I don't think he actually, um, combat log. I think what happened was there was an instancing issue. Kind of did annoy me because I was literally about to blow his brains out. <laughs> I was in my ASP at the time with like, you know, six engineered multi-cannons and he was not suspecting anything. 
though I was surrounded by like 12 of his friends that could have probably killed me before I killed him, but say la vie, um, he did just sort of blip out of existence, and um, what I heard later was again like, you know, the guys running the event were running into the same instancing issues that everyone else was. Uh, so yeah, it looks like this whole flat has um, geysers, geysers, geysers. It's a little weird how splotchy it is. Bugfedsta still makes decent money from Creation Club. What is Creation Club? Is that like um, the, the mods? Uh, mods? User mods? Yeah, I don't know like how I feel about the idea of like the game. Like I'm kind of like split on it. Like if it was an indie game and someone was making a paid mod sure the game developer should get it, right? But if, like, it's a free mod uh, for a large game developer, I don't think there should be any uh, money exchanging hands on those things. Like, the whole point of mods is they're, you know, works of, works of passion. I've never bought a paid mod. Do you guys know, are paid mods even a thing? Do people sell mods? Because usually, what, you don't own the rights to the game, so how can you sell mods? Is that a geyser? No, that's just a we want geysers. We want geysers. Yeah, so it's kind of like one thing I was like, like, mm, you know what's going to be weird in the stream is I can't um, pre-check all of these uh, locations uh, and find, you know, okay, like, like you know, there's a couple of places where you know, okay, like, I know I can find this thing here, right? But from what I understand is with, with the new systems, uh, geysers are not um, strict POIs and they may be randomized. Like, if you re-instance, they may be in different locations or so, I've heard. Um, like, the, the biomes will be the same, but not the locations, the actual, you know, plants, right? It's paid mods. Low effort paid mods. Okay. I see. So, shitty paid mods. Fair enough. can understand why I would not like that. Uh, hey, Spatula, were you around an Elite when ships at that little tablet computer screen that was in between your pilot's legs? Like, you mean, like, uh, down here? Actually, I don't remember. I mean, like, I've been... I, I would say I came in before Horizons, when it was still, you know, just Elite Dangerous. I'm just wondering, like, if I slow down, will the geysers... Maybe they just haven't been popping in properly? I would expect to see some active geysers, like, busted a nut as I'm going along, but it doesn't... I don't know. I kind of watched a video of some guy finding geysers on this planet, and it was like, oh, okay, this looks like a choice spot, but... Wait, is that a geyser? Nope, that's not a geyser. Just another rock. Um, let me see, sorry, I'm like trying to like read the comments, but also not completely die at this at this moment. Even though the goal of the stream is to die. Um, the low effort compared to the Nexus, not uh, to dismiss modders. The Nexus, like Nexus Mod Manager, which I do use that for um, uh, my Fallout mods, Fallout 4 and Fallout New Vegas. And I believe it supports Fallout 3. I need to go back and play Fallout 3 again, because that was truly a great game, and uh, a lot of cool elements, although like, it's pretty like uh, difficult to run even on a... it doesn't matter what computer you have, it's just such an old game that... Okay, so maybe like geysers will be down here? Uh, no geysers? I am in the section uh, that said there would be geysers here. Hmm. Now I'm debating, like, should, oh, wait, hold on, whoa, 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 what was that? I mean, if that was a geyser, it wasn't blowing its load, and what I really want is an active geyser, right? What is that? That could be a, oh, it's a fumarole, isn't it? That is definitely a fumarole. I mean, we could do death by fumarole. So I'm like, I, I think fumaroles cannot actually kill you. You'd have to basically run into them, eh? Nav map shows geology sites, does it? Does it? I don't think it does. Like, I mean, um, you get that overlay from the discovery scanner. Um, maybe guys just like to be down in valleys, so maybe it's down here. It's possible. Like, there was a very, you know, solid blue area, which represents kind of a biome where, I guess, geysers can spawn, but when it comes to actually uh, 
finding them, it's not like there's specific PLIs, right? Like, that's how the game dealt with it before, where, oh, like, you go to this planet, the brain trees are at coordinates X, Y, and Z, and if you went to those coordinates, hey, there's your brain trees. But I think the way it works now is kind of like, you go to this biome, and within that biome, they'll randomly spawn, but I don't know if they have, like, fixed positions. So you could say, like, hey, there's a really cool geyser at this location, and I go to it two days later, and it's not there. Right? Well, if I don't find any in the next minute, I will go to a specific location on this planet uh, to test that theory, where um, I did see a video of some guy just, like, playing with geysers, and I wrote down the coordinates for uh, the purposes of this thing. The problem with that is, like, like you, you know, you have to fly so close to the ground because of the, the draw distances, right? Oops. Okay, I'm at 23% all. I need to just be a little more careful. So, yeah, you can see here, like, there are, you know, power sources, artificial structures, a crash site. That could be kind of cool. Um, but even though it says, like, notable signals, geological... What that means is like, oh, you have geysers on the planet and fumaroles. Like, there's two geological signals, but it's not like POIs anymore, right? Fallout 3 remake. Oh my god, I would love to see a Fallout 3 remake uh, with sort of modern uh, modern systems. And oh my god! So, that was a rapid unplanned accessory. Disassembly? Rapid unplanned disassembly. That was a fun uh, uh, thing from a Kerbal Space Program. Uh, okay, so at least I get to respawn in this system. That's nice. The nav panel? The nav panel? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, turn your shields back on. Well, that probably would have helped. It probably would have been a good idea, but. We got another death, though. I'm going to call that one a real death is, uh... Forgetting about the ground. <laughs> Find for destroying a mountain. Captain Kirk is climbing a mountain. Why is he climbing a mountain? To love the mountain. To envelop that mountain. Alright, we will head back there because we know there are geysers. Oh, it was already target. Never mind. And we got moved back here. Oh, and hell, there's an engineer in this system. I didn't even notice. Who, who is the engineer here? Long sight. Elvira Martuk. Oh. I haven't seen her in a while. I wonder what she even engineers. Elvira Martuk. Frame shift drives, shield generators. Oh, I've only got her to grade four. Yeah, she's the one who wants the uh, Soontil Relics, right? And Soontil Relics, this is an interesting... Oops. This is kind of an interesting thing where it's like, what are Soontil Relics? I mean, technically speaking, they are, what, artifacts of, like, an extinct alien race that we've found in, um, in this game, right? Like, there's not much lore about the Soontil Relics, but are they tied into the... Mars relic, because there's also um, Dark Wheel lore about when they were colonizing Mars, they found an alien uh, artifact or relic, apparently a small one. And this is like where a lot of the Raxla lore, um, I think, tends to, to try and explain that. But there's not there's not that much information about the Mars relic or Sutil relics, right? It's cool, though. That's the kind of stuff I want to see more in the game. It's more lore, more weird alien mysteries. What the hell is this little... You know, we found an alien Russian doll or something. Like, let's let's figure it out by taking it to various systems, and uh, maybe it emits a different uh, sound pulse or something. Or you know, I don't know. Um, I would love to see more like more of those um, puzzles get worked in, but not like so incomprehensive that you have to use third-party tools to solve. But also not so easy that um, or replicable that like one person can figure it out, write the forum guide, and everyone can do it like have some you know it's like i picked up this relic and you know it's going to assign that relic to a random system so people might figure out how you solve the mystery but you still have to go through the steps yourself i think man they should hire me just to tell them what to do i have no actual skills in terms of coding or development but i just be like uh do this and they go uh we don't know how and i'm like figure it out read an article thank you thank you 
Uh, pay me developer money. Thank you. Goodbye. Developer money. All 25 pence of it or whatever you... <laughs> I'm sure the developers are, are decently paid, but probably not. It's probably not the highest paying job in the world. You gotta, you gotta love what you do if you're in video game development. I would hope. I would hope. Yes, I should be a paid QA player, because I know how to break things. That's my skill. Uh, soon till artifacts are fake. And she knows it. Who's she? Oh, Elvira Martuk? She's just collecting them for, um, uh, to sell to, uh, Raxel Hunters. Uh, the three major factions are controlled by huge supercomputers. Raxel is the AM hub. That's why we can't find it. Ooh. Now that is, a that is a conspiracy theory and a half there. You should, um, uh, put on your tinfoil, sir. Yeah, the Elite Universe seems really unexcited by the Guardians and Thargoids. They never are amazed or interested. Yeah, I mean, these are huge implications. We've got two alien species um, that are currently, uh, I guess, newish. But then there's also the Suntil relics, the Mars relics. Like, there's a lot of alien stuff in the galaxy. And you don't really hear that much about it. It's just like, it's there are literally trillions and trillions and trillions of human beings around the galaxy in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of systems. And yet, it's not a peep. Rarely, rarely a peep about aliens. We just don't care. We're too busy expanding and grinding. The engineers have kept us busy, uh, you know, shooting rocks for sulfur, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. And it's just like, now there's like, that, that is my complaint here, is like when you look at just how many, um, like just the new materials, and just the new materials that I have, and there's just an endless list of them. And it makes me think, I'm like, half of these materials that I've picked up I don't even know what they're for yet, which implies that, like, I haven't even unlocked an engineer that will uh, require this um, thingy. Okay, so I already scanned this before. Am I just going to get the biomes again, or, or what? Or am I going to have to do the proby things? This, okay. I'm going to have to do the proby things again, I guess. Whatever, two probes. So I want biomes. Okay, switch to geysers. That doesn't look like there's much of a difference. Um, I'm going to try the coordinates that, that I saw in this video, which are negative 25 by negative 139. So I think this way. Negative 25 by negative 139. The aliens are secretly laughing at us behind their backs. Well, that's what I wonder. Do the aliens talk about human sightings and like yeah we Thargoid Jim is like yeah we found these creatures called humans we're, we're studying we want to study them for examinations right it's like what, 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 I wonder what the Thargoid news would look like now obviously the Guardians are uh, allegedly dead though I don't know if I trust the authorities in this matter uh, so hold on we want to get 20, negative 25 so we want that thing to start ticking up now but the other one to continue ticking down Okay, so this way. Negative 139 on the bottom. Also, it would be really nice if um, it actually said lat and long next to the thingies. Oh god, we have to go like all the way around the planet. It's gonna be on the night side, no. I was kinda of hoping to get daytime geysers. You know what? Well screw it then. I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. Mm. Mm, that looks like a nice straightaway chunk because obviously once you get down to the planet's surface these overlays do um, go away so you don't know if you've headed out of the biome or not I still think that, that there could be some work done on um, exploration tools I do really like the probes and, and how you can you know now find these biomes in this way We are looking for geysers, ladies and gentlemen. This is going, you know, the the fact that they're not even easy to find when you know the biome does it, does it make you feel frustrated, or does it give you a sense of accomplishment when you do find them? And also, the ground is coming up really fast. Okay. <laughs> uh, what do you say, Takoso? You unlocked two engineers, and the upgrades were for bigger jumps and need to get many more materials. Yeah, that, that, that was my disappointment. I finally get Domino Green unlocked and I'm like, oh, this is just the beginning. 
Um, there's so much missing primitive alien species. Oh yeah, I would love to see like, um, you know, sort of weird cavemen or giant spider creatures. Um, even on, you know, sort of low atmosphere planets, just like some forms of life. Now they have some of that in uh, space. Um, and we will be looking at some space anomalies. If we, can, if we can't find geezers in this, the next five minutes, I'm just gonna save that one for later. Um, but there are sort of like, you know, some alien life forms that you can see, but they're very few and far between. And they're cool, but um, I would definitely like to see more, and specifically more, more land-based stuff. That's where it's kind of like, I appreciate No Man's Sky for all of its, um, you know, uh, imagination and vision kind of thing. Uh, and, you know, just finding random, odd-looking creatures. Maybe it's not how Elite will, will end up going. Like, maybe that is too procedurally generated, and they look wacky, and Frontier wants to be more realistic or whatever. You know, my thought is maybe maybe there, I've been seeing a bunch of geysers. They're just not going off on the light side of the planet. Like, maybe they only go off in the dark. They're nocturnal geysers, maybe. Is that possible? The geysers are geology, not biome. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm kind of using biome a little bit loosely to describe, like, zones where you can find geysers, right? Like, it's all, like the, the map is divided into biomes and, you know, the boreal... The boreal geezers versus the temperate geezers, you know? Uh, let's just see, maybe... Cause I feel like you would most more than likely find geysers in a crater. But I do not see anything. And this is a quote-unquote icy body. I also noticed this, the faction here is cannon. So let me just, let me just see here. Um, yeah, apparently this is a cannon system. So much, uh, sci well, but didn't they say, like, uh, player minor factions can't be in, like, notable systems of lore, and this is an engineering system? How do they get themselves in there? Well, good, good job of them. That's a, if anyone can figure out how to get themselves into a system they shouldn't be, that would be canon, right? Because they are the experts in such matters. Uh, you would drive the Thargoids to extinction for a TARDIS and Elite. Uh, you and me both, man. Time travel and space travel, all in one tiny box. And I mean, if you watch that show, it's like, you know, the, the, it's definitely got uh, more than prismatic shields, you know? Okay, I feel like um, I've been duped and there are no geysers here. Gotta go for one more minute, and if we don't find geysers, um, I will turn to one of my other lists, list items in this system, and then we'll go to the next system, which will be HIP 15310. And why are we going there? Uh, oh, it's for a space anomaly. That'll be cool. Hmm. Yeah, like you would think if there was a geyser, you'd see maybe a sploosh of um, uh, splooshing happening on the horizon, but just not seeing anything so that, that's my question is you know maybe there are even a, it, it, there could even be a difference between active geysers and dormant ones now in real life I've actually been to see geysers and um, went to Iceland and did the golden uh, circle tour and you get to see some waterfalls and go through a national park uh, which is on the sort of continental um, divide so as you walk through this national park here, actually walk, walking from one continental plate to another. And we got to see some geysers. And the one geyser that we did see was called Geyser. And that's where the, the, the name uh, Geyser came from. It was the original. Fortunately, uh, the original geyser is not so active these days. So it was just like a little murky, bubbling pit. But uh, right next to that, there was a very active geyser that would go off about every five minutes. We got some cool footage and got... Um, splashed with some sulfuric tasting water but highly recommend go to Iceland and check out geysers it, it was a awesome experience feels like space legs in real life basically minus the grind okay if it's not in this crater what's that was it that time geyser no it is a rock maybe it was once a geyser but now it has retired 
So, I think we're gonna move on. We can do geysers some other times. Maybe we'll maybe we'll find one out there in the block. But first, I want to get a hull down. Exterminate. Exterminate. Okay. Four, two, 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 two. Okay. I'm like, if I was feeling lucky, I'd go for another one, but I'm not. Hopefully, two percent will be enough to do. Okay. So, let's see here. What do we got on the list? So, we're going to get a fuel. No, we'll do that later. I'm probably, I'm, I might not even do that one on the stream because it takes forever. Uh, turning off life support. Actually, we already did that. Let me mark that. I forgot to mark that one off. Uh, nope, that's a heat related one. Uh, new, no, not that one. Okay. Yeah, I think I know what we're doing. Okay. So, we want to head back into space. So again, if anyone is just joining uh, the stream now, what we are doing today is a combination of exploration and uh, blowing ourselves up. I am working on a video uh, that catalogs all the different possible ways that you can um, experience rebuy in Elite Dangerous. Um, and today is kind of an exploration edition, so trying to find exploration-themed ways that you can blow yourself up. Uh, we've already done turning off life support, falling off a mountain, um, smacking into a planet while not looking, while, while searching for geysers. And what I'm going to try to do here is actually kill myself um, through exclusion zone uh, booping at high velocities. So, <laughs> punching the ship, I believe that they took that out of the... Um, I'm pretty sure they um, got rid of that. Much to my chagrin. Okay, so... Uh, but we can try that. Although that won't really uh, cause me to rebuy per se. Um, okay. So let's just see what happens if I. Well, first I need to gain speed, speed, speed. I need to be too fast for orbital cruise and smack into a planet. And hopefully, uh, being at 2% hull, that will be enough. You can also, I guess, lose hull points from like being interdicted or from uh, doing emergency drops. So we're gonna try those. Have a mushroom poot on you? What the hell is a mushroom poot? A mushroom pit? Try to take out a mega ship. Uh, that is on my list. Uh, not for the exploration stream though. There's gonna be one on like you know attacking stations and facilities and all that sort of stuff. All right, let's see if we can accomplish this. A two percent hull. Too fast for orbital cruise. Huh. We didn't tick down to 1%. So maybe that doesn't um, work as a death. That's an interesting dual crater there. Hmm. Do I have a mushroom poot on me? What are you talking about, Shadow Man? What is a mushroom poot? A mushroom poot? It sounds like a that sounds like a Scottish Scottish dish the mushroom. Yeah. Yay! Lassie, get me the mushroom poot! I, I can't do accents, by the way. I'm sorry if all the uh, Scotsmen on the stream have just been deeply offended. Actually, I'm not sorry. <laughs> Deal with it. Um, hmm. So let me try emergency dropping, because I do know that like you lose 1% uh, hull on like, interdictions. But, you know, again, we're, we're kind of exploring death here, so we're trying to find different ways that we can die, and if uh, smashing into a planet is not one of them, well, so be it. So, really, you should take damage for that kind of stuff. Alright, so I'm going to take some time to get some speed up here. Let's make sure that we're not going uh, kilometers per second. Oh, boy, we got a stupid bounty hunter here. Ooh, maybe he could kill me by interdicting me. Like, I wish I was at 1% all. I wish I just get that, rid of that 1%. Like, should I fail this interdiction? Or, like, I feel like that's only going to do 1% and then he's going to shoot me. But, you know what? Let's give it a try. Buy some gold. Or bio waste. If you buy bio waste. So, let's see here. So, no. I guess it's 1% for the attacker. That must be it, eh? Uh, 
And because I failed the interdiction, I'm actually kind of screwed here. I should put pips to shields. What are you, in a cobra? What, are you serious? Are you serious about piracy? We need to talk. Dude, you can't... You, I mean, you can go pirating in a cobra. I've done that. He's also cannon faction. Since when did this fall under cannon philosophy of, like, let's intercept an innocent... Dime oh, okay, maybe I'm not so... Maybe I'm not so innocent, considering all of um, these thingies. Whatever, dude. Keep chipping away. Oh, wait, I am at 2% haul. I should be a little more worried, probably. It's fine. Those space mushrooms that fart Thargoid Corrosive stuff if you turn your headlights on. What? What are you talking about? I want to know what you're talking about. That sounds really cool, but I have no idea what uh, if that's a thing. Space mushrooms that you fart Thargoid Corrosive stuff if you turn your headlights on. Space mushrooms. A mushroom poot? <laughs> See, you get away, and then he's, like, right back on the cell. But what I'm going to try is an emergency drop, and let's see if that will reduce my hull. No! Wow, okay. Did they change something, or am I uh, completely um, off base? Or maybe that does module damage. Okay, well, I'll tell you what. I will go and research that off stream, but we'll um, figure out if we can do that stuff later. Uh, what we did want to do next was... Okay, yeah, we might as well head to the Space Anomaly. Have I seen Nacron's videos in a Cobra M4 taking out Corvettes? Yes! Uh, it's quite insane, uh, the level of strategy using, like, mines and stuff like that. Because um, I guess, like, explosives do sort of a set amount of damage no matter what um, sort of size they are. Yeah, we're gonna go check out a space anomaly. Look at this, it's right in the bubble. And who's who's close here? Who's who's in this system? How, how can I even tell anymore? Is that still a thing in Odyssey? Or... Wait, what the hell? Oh shit, he's back! The stupid bounty hunter. How did, I just dropped out of uh, Super Cruise randomly and he f picked up on my signal. Well, I'll give you this, Karthik, is you got tenacity. I'll give you that, man. You got tenacity, I like your attitude. We're gonna head through Chuntabon. Be careful saying that system name. Um, I did see, yeah, but Nikon's videos, very cool. I found them because you shared them, Tom, and I was like, oh, this is this is super cool. I'd never um, heard of that channel before, so thanks for sharing that out. Um, the peduncle pods. The peduncle pods that release corrosive gas. Mm. You know, I don't have pods on the list. I can put them on the list. I have space anomalies and then, like, Lagrange clouds. I'm kind of in that debate where it's kind of like I haven't first of all figured out everything that, that could uh, potentially be a death. And I don't know how cheesy I want to get with the list. I think like to get to 99 different ways that you can die in Elite, I'm probably going to have to get a little creative with some of them, right? Or, or maybe, you know, but like I don't want to do like, you know, like dying at a 45 degree angle, dying at a 46 degree angle. You know, that's that's too boring. Um, and I'll definitely throw some, like, fun ones in there that might be repetitive. But I really want to catalog, like, the different types of deaths. And I don't, like, okay, maybe, like, a collared pod versus uh, a spiky boy in a LaGrange cloud, like, running into one of those versus uh, pissing off a space anomaly are different categories. But, like, should I do, like, pissing off a P-type anomaly, anomaly, pissing off a K-type anomaly? I think that might get a little bit too deep. I want to avoid... Um, Sort of too much repetition, right? Um, but let's see here. Yeah, uh, three more jumps. Uh, you want to build a Packhound T10, but you haven't yet. Yeah, and I think uh, Packhounds, they are... Uh, are they not a power play weapon? Which, again, I don't want to get too much into the, the, the ranting of a power play, but I don't like how you have to get those weapons. I only The only power play weapon I have is somewhere around the bubble. I don't know where at this point. I have the the winters, um, the rail guns that also can disable uh, random systems, right? Um, and I love that idea for like piracy. If you just like shoot them with a rail gun, and their you know cargo hatch turns off or their frame shift drive turns off, um, but they do like really really bad damage. Like, and they're just really bad weapons. And it was a fun idea, but wasn't worth having to go through four weeks of power play to get them. And that was the only experience I had with power play. After that, I just left that faction. I'm like, yeah, 
I don't like how now I get attacked by a new set of people that if I defend myself and fight, you know, Torvald's minions, I get, what, 100 credit bounty? Like, what is going on with power play? It feels like an endgame punishment zone of, like, join this thing once you've done everything and it will cost you money, waste your time, <laughs> make you annoyed, and all you get is a weapon that is not very useful, with the exception of maybe pack hounds. I hear there's one good one, what are they called? Like, the hammer or something like that. <clears throat> and then maybe prismatic uh, could be considered a useful item, but I think everything else in power play is somewhat meh. And some of them have really cool ideas, they're just not that great in, in, in reality or in actuality, right? Which is sad. It makes that feel sad. Tears, tears of possi potential possibilities streaming down my virtual hollow me face. But yeah, I um, have actually played a lot of Odyssey the last couple of days. I've been mainly um, editing and working on a new Vangus episode, which should be done soon. I'm not going to give you a date because I don't know. Uh, we can take another look at the roadmap because actually I don't know if um, a lot of people uh, uh, probably weren't here at the start. We have a, a roadmap for this stream. I'll, I'll show you guys in a second once we do the space anomaly thing, uh, which is oh look, it's right there. And hold on, what's this Jotun permit locked? Interesting. Oh, there's actually two. It seems there's all ooh a planet uh, X X something. That's cool. Planet X. You rarely see planets that start with an X. And also, like, this is HIP. Why isn't that called, like, HIP 0502? These are called, like, X. Like, what's the... What's the deal? Why are you called X, but you're called HIP? What's so special about you? None of them are landable. Terrestrial Ammonia World? Hmm... Argoids. Ammonia World. Interesting. Interesting. And then I guess this notable, the notable stellar phenomena is also in this system, and there seems to be one that might be on the other side of these X planets. What's going on here? I smell a conspiracy. Uh, Shadow Man, you've been pledged to the dude for like five months, just haven't worked up the give a damn to actually load up on MacGuffins and run them to location X. Yeah, I, honestly, the whole, like, uh, power play deliver your mail system is the worst part about it. It's so boring. Uh, you went to, through power play to get Packhound's Valor. Uh, then you waited, then you did it again for Prismatics, and just got... See, that's the thing. It's just, like, people exploit the system, and that's not indicative of the fact that it's fun to play. When people just join up, wait four weeks, go do their 750 in one thing, wait for the tick, get your thing, leave the power. That's how most people do power play. <laughs> You have most of the power play weapons and modules, you don't use any of them. Yep. It's a sad reality, because they're like all great ideas, they're just not fully realized, because like, oh, we don't want to give people an edge, and they're also incredibly hard to uh, acquire. Like, what, what are you thinking, guys? What are you thinking? What are you doing? What are you trying? What, are you, what, are you, what, are you, what goes through these developer board meetings, right? I'd love to be a fly on the wall for one of these, like, okay, we're going to plan our next feature, and like, who's the guy in the room that's like, uh, we should have very strict limits on the number of people who can own this, this uh, item. Why? Because, uh... I hate people. <laughs> the evil, the evil developer theory. Uh, the planet it's in is an edgy username phase. <laughs> Ooh, this is a little bit of a dusty cloud. Not as uh, bright and colorful as the other one. And we have spiky boys. Now, are there space anomalies? I do see some weird glowy things in there. Could be what we're looking for. I actually do think this system has two different types of space anomalies, so we might need to blow ourselves up and then come back. 2% um, hull. I better be quick on the record. Uh, do, do Winter's weapon causes malfunctions? Can't any pulse lasers engineer that? You would think. You would think. But no. You have to sign up to a federal faction, even if it's against your character's roleplay, uh, for four months just to just to get that, right? And then do some meaningful mail delivery missions. Uh, I guess, I suppose you can also um, do some combat stuff, but the combat is so unrewarding in power play. You get like a 100 credit for killing an opponent or whatever. 
it's not even um, not even rewarding for your effort and um, let's see is this the same purplus uh, purple canium purple um, metallic crystals yeah we already scanned these guys now what I'm interested in is like what are these little shiny things I believe we are about to see Q04 type anomalies. So, oh, 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 See, it's just a little pinprick of light. It's almost like a little singularity, right? Alright, uh, I think that looks like a good shot there. Alright, here we go. Gonna go forward at a slow pace. I'm at 1% haul, so all it'll take is one little zappy do. Zappy do da. <laughs> yeah, jerk! Get out of here, Space Anomaly. This is Space Anomaly's like, this is my turf. And let's see here. Yeah, no, no reason for death, no penalties. Where is it going to put me then? Uh, oh, in the same system. I'm just watching my uh, bank account go down. Uh, Takosa, what are you saying there? Uh, you joined up and when it first came out, went to a system, met some cool guys, defended a system against no one for a week, and then lost it via solo. <laughs> yep. That's the other thing, is power play should 100% be open only. And that is a huge critical design flaw, where it's like, and I don't get the argument against it, of like, I want to be in power play, but I want to play it in solo. No. You should not be allowed. Like, it is a social uh, function, right? You're fighting with a group of people, a faction. There are plenty of things that you can do in the game in solo. So thank god this fleet carrier was here, because then I don't have to uh, respawn uh, too far away. Um, wait, did we visit this one? How do we know which one we visited? I guess we don't. Um, but yeah, like, like I don't understand. Like the, like, the whole concept of power play should be creating, like, that natural endgame tier of PvP, right? Of like, okay, I've done all the things that I want to see, I've been an explorer, now I want to fight for this faction, right? I'm going to help them expand. And to me, there are two elements of power play that would be interesting. One is the political aspect of uh, sort of shaping the galaxy and the politics, space politics. I, know, like, I don't like Earth politics, but I'll go for space politics. That's cool. Um, and then obviously the sort of natural PvP or, or, or combat, um, natural combat situations that you land in where, oh, okay, this... Um, Am I still mass locked? Man, this carrier is chunky. Um, you know, so it's so obviously like, yeah, you're in a system, you're fighting for the, the Empire, one of the Duval faction or something, and then some Federation guy comes in and sees you, and that creates that natural, um, oh, he's from the other side, right? And the other aspect is kind of like, okay, the expansion, and what does it mean when Isling Duval takes over a system from uh, Denton Petraeus, that slavery becomes illegal, that um, the, the cost of modules goes up, that it switches from, uh, you know, uh, imperial hegemony to uh, republic. You know, I don't feel like there's enough impact um, when it, you know, it just feels like, okay, like we're gonna support our superpower and try to expand them. And you're playing this like CC game, trying to, oh, okay, this system will have too much upkeep for what it's worth kind of thing. I don't know, I just don't think it's that compelling, except to maybe, like, the party leadership um, who are in charge of strategy. But then, how are they really coordinating with people? Because it's not a squadron. It's not even a player faction, right? It, it's, that's where I think power play is just misconceived on so many levels. And um, it's a great idea, I think, intrinsically, to have, like, politics and sort of division in the galaxy by having people sign up to sides. But as I was saying earlier, I have some ideas that I want to do and put into a video... 
um, unlike how power play could be redesigned to be more widely appealing, more useful, more of a, a positive thing in the game, which I don't don't think it is much uh, currently. But I'm not going to go too much into that. I went into it a little bit earlier. Don't want to give it all away because I still haven't like thought through everything with absolute detail, and um, it is on my list of, of videos to do uh, after I get done the next one. It is uh, fixing power play and fixing the crime and punishment system. I've got ideas for both of them. Woohoo! Okay, this is a different cloud because it is reddish. So, are there different types of space anomalies here that we can agitate? Yes, there are. We got green boys. And th that's the other thing, it's kind of like, okay, I love Stellar Phenomena. The Spiky Boys, the Mollusks, the Space Anomalies, all of this, brilliant freaking ideas. Um, and thank you for um, uh, doing this all for you, right? But, um, where I kind of like, feel, feel like it's a little bit cheese is like, oh, here's the red Space Anomaly versus the green one versus the blue one. And I get it, that's an easy way to provide procedural, whoa, what the hell was that? Why did a vulture just... Are you serious? Do I got a bounty hunter here? Uh, are you a pirate or a bounty hunter? Let's see. Okay, it's lawless, so I won't be able to tell. If you try and scan me, I swear to God, bro. Oh my God, he's just like, he's already was. Okay, hold on. Let me just, because I am going to probably die against the vulture. Jump out, I turn around, and come back in. Hopefully, this guy's gone. But that is the that is the that is what happens though when you're carrying around all these bounties on your head, right? Even when you're out exploring, um, random vultures. <laughs> I can't seem to yeah get away from them. Okay, there we go. Uh, PP in open mode will only kill ninety percent of the bot farmers. Well, that's the thing, right? This is what I just don't understand. It's something that affects an entire faction. Why, oh why, do you have it available in the solo mode? That just never, that, that was just like the biggest indicator that like they don't think these things through, right? They're not thinking like, how are people going to play it? Like they have these cool ideas and they're like, ah, let's, let's do this, let's do this. Ah. But then they're not like, they should sit down and go, okay, so how is that going to work? And what would this mean for like this type of player? They almost need to have like, a guy who only plays solo in the office, a guy who only plays open, a guy who does all three modes, you know, sitting in the room when they do these ideas, asking those questions of like, well, what would the, be the implications on X, Y, and Z, right? Because it doesn't seem like they do a lot of testing. <laughs> and they certainly don't, I think, um, fully flesh out things at the inception stage. So you end up with like these really cool ideas that just aren't fully realized. And if they just like, gone a little bit further maybe maybe just maybe um, these functions would get you know huge praise huge appeal as opposed to currently where it's uh you know pretty like they, I, and look there are people out there that like power play not disparaging on them hey if you like it that's great i'm happy if you like something that i don't uh because you know i don't want things to be universally unliked but uh it does make you wonder Okay, so let's find out if green boys may be killed differently from red boys. Now, before I do get killed, I do want to get a codex scan. Just, you know, log it in the bank, you know? Say that we've seen the green anomaly. And there's, I think these are very pretty. But um, these are what? The Q-type anomalies? There are also, like, P-type anomalies. Uh, we're going to be going to a few different systems, and I think there's, like... At least three or four varieties we'll have seen by the end of the screen end of the stream. Biological and geological discovery. Ow, 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 ow. I wonder what happens when you boop though. Can I boop? Oh it does boop. <laughs> it's actually quite fun. Uh, hold on. There's like a cluster here. Did they move too? Because I know that the mollusk uh, thingies will move. Let's go check out this cluster over here. It feels like a large 
large cluster. And have we do we know what happens if you go shoot shoot on these guys? Let's find out. Oh, I just shot two torpedoes. Huh. So they literally, like, are immune to weapons. There's no, uh... Okay, let's try to get some camera mode shots. These are quite, um... I like that they have these, like, little clouds, and I guess the clouds kind of, like, come up as a defensive mechanism. Like when you get too close, that's when the clouds reveal themselves. This is cool, though. Dangerous exploration. Like, the clouds are um, the space anomalies trigger warning. Alright, I do want it to ultimately kill me in cockpit mode because I need a shot of that. If we found them in real life, oh my god, we'd be going mental trying to figure out, like, is this life? Oops. <laughs> um, did you get yeeted by a spirit bomb? Yes, these are, um, this is what happens when you die. You become a Q-type anomaly and just, you can zap zap your friends in space. <laughs> I still think this, this is like uh, some of the coolest stuff and, and you know if you were to just stumble upon these like you know um, can you imagine before these were discovered in game you know the first person that ever discovered um, an anomaly what they would what it would have been going through their mind of like is this a bug <laughs> like what is going on here, right? No, to switch to this mode. Okay, here we go. It's happening. What is it? A little singularity creature, right? Like, what? How could a creature like that be uh, life, right? Like, are these anomalies like a geological space phenomena? Like, just a bunch of energy gets pooled into a Lagrange point kind of thing, or are these, you know, uh, some sort of creature that's like uh, using space photosynthesis or something? Nobody knows. All you can do is really scan them and then give the modules to Universal Cartographics, and then Universal Cartographics files it away. Don't tell anybody what, what happened. They don't even tell Galvin. You'll never know. Because the news the news is evil. Yeah, if Anomalies had been in from launch with no talk of them, that would have been amazing. But, um, you know, the only thing that's been in since launch that no one's found is... I don't even want to say the R word here because it will trigger people. But you know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so we've seen uh, two different types of anomalies, uh, you know, uh, green and red in one system. And the next place we're going to head is the lovely system of Alounas, um, which again is more space anomalies, uh, but of a different type, I believe. But all of these places are in the bubble, so if you haven't seen these and you're like, wow, these are crazy, I want to go check them out, uh, they're not that far away. This one itself is only about three jumps in my uh, lovely diamond bag. Though I'm really like curious about these planets X two four eighty seven. I might come back here off stream and come back here later and investigate what's going on. Something they're not telling us in the Tashiner sector. <laughs> Don't say it. <laughs> if you say it, your stream will be flagged and. Uh, Frontier will send their goons after you. They'll never get me in Space Canada. Uh, Shadow Man, you wonder if I'll ever get Spacewalk. Well, you, there are uh, some glitchy ways that you can achieve that, but not as you intended. <laughs> but yeah, I really do. Um, yeah, you know, let me put it this way. I think I'd agree with most people when they say, like, ship interiors and spacewalks. The practical usage in gameplay will probably be very low. 
probably something that you get it and then you go, oh, this was cool. Ten days later, you're not really enamored in it and there's like, what do you really need ship interiors to do? What do you really need space walks to do? But that said, um, having the, I still want them. I, they're still top of my priority list, right? And I do kind of feel bad that like, you know, um, you'll see some of these, like, you'll watch like Frontier streaming and it'll be a stream where it's just like, Community managers are going to play like Horizon CQC, which, guys, if, you, if you community managers are listening right now, that's sort of lame when, you know, you've got this big new shiny you should be playing, but, oh, no, we want to give Horizons people love. Well, <laughs> or is it frame rate issues? Uh, anyway, but the point being is, like, you're watching the stream, and in the comments, it's like, okay, listen, Space Legs has been out for, like, three weeks, and people are like, give us ship interiors! We want, we want to go inside of our ship and take a walk to the bathroom! How dare you not give us these ship interiors? And it's like, when Horizon launched, people were like, we can land on planets, but we don't have space legs. Give us space legs. And when Elite Dangerous launched, we can go in space, but we can't land on planets. So you know that, you know, as soon as they launch ship interiors, people will be like, we want an exo, exo spacewalks. And then as soon as they do the spacewalks, they'll be like, we want to walk on the surface of the sun. I want to walk on the sun. Frontier, why won't you let me walk on the sun? You son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know what's, what's going on there. Little Monty Python characters formed in that argument. <laughs> but no, I, I would appreciate spacewalks, even if it is limited use. I think it would be super, super cool to find a derelict and, you know, park next to it because you can't dock. Pop on over with a spacewalk. You're, yeah, like Tom's saying there is like you're cutting off bits of it. Um, I do have a game that's that's actually the game where you literally just break board chips and then throw their junk into the um, things that get paid for it. It's a, I can't remember the name of it, but it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I, I would love like space blocks or like you know you find a derelict station. One of my first experiences in Star Citizen was hitching a ride on some rando ship. He went to this like derelict space station. I got out and um, I, he left, and I got stranded on this space station. <laughs> And uh, was then, you know, getting these other randoms coming up and trying to hitchhike off them. <laughs> and it was, like, a great memory, right? Like, this is, like, the kind of stuff where it's, like, yeah, you, this is the uh, the kind of, like, experiences that you remember from a game, right? So, Alanis, yeah, a very boring-looking system. Nothing to the eye here that is uh, notable. And one thing that does kind of drive me crazy is that, you know, even in Aura Review, you don't see space anomalies, Right? Like, these are all just the different planets. You never see space and all this. The only way to see them is on this map. And so if you don't, like, if you landed in the system and didn't scroll down and go, oh, there's notable stellar phenomena, these things are very easy to miss if you're in the habit, which, which like me, is like you land in a system, open up the system map, look for interesting visuals in the map view, like, okay, are there any cool looking planets or ones with big atmospheres that I could land on? Like, this one you could get. Damn it. Eh, he's already got first footfall. Good on you. Howard Opato. Oh, and Segwa. See? Like, first footfall in the bubble. It's already gone. No more opportunity. Sorry, console players. You, you. <laughs> By the time console players get to play Odyssey, the entire galaxy, or anywhere notable in it, will be, like, footfalled. Footfalled. Uh... Shadow Man, you're saying you doubt it'll ever happen because Frontier's moving on. They're developing Warhammer and Jurassic Park. Well... Here's the thing. This is what I'm saying. We don't know that. We don't know how their company is structured. They could be working have different teams for different products, which is probably what the case is. So I don't. I don't think there's anything they've indicated they're abandoning Elite. In fact, the fact that they even released Odyssey um, shows that they're not. Right. I, I, I dispute that they are abandoning Elite because they just released a major update after um, you, you know years of working on it. Whether or not those years show in it. Right. But. Regardless, is like, what do you want to see in Odyssey, or what don't you like in Odyssey? I think that's a more productive discussion to say, like, uh, uh, yeah, I don't think ED is going to focus on Elite. It's like, you don't know um, if that is the case or not, right? Yeah, it's just a revenue stream at this point, but <clears throat> I'm, I'm sure that some people there still have great passion for the game. I think the problem is we don't have the information to assume how the, the company's is strategy is evolving, or how their revenue works, or why they made some terrible decisions, or whatever. Um, but I can look at Elite Odyssey and tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, what I would like to see improved. Whether or not that gets improved, I don't know. Um, there's a lot that I would like to see improved. <laughs> there's been a lot for a long time. And I do think they need like a change of direction, 
maybe new project leadership or management or whatever. Um, maybe a new approach. Bring in more people that are like space enthusiasts, um, but also force everyone to actually play the game. Right? <laughs> it does feel like sometimes they aren't uh, playing the things that they create, so they don't understand like the, the pain points. Right? But again, I don't know. I, I can just say what the pain points are. Um, well, that's the thing. That, exactly what Tom says. Like everyone is like, you know, basically pooping on uh, pooping on Odyssey and moving on to the next thing that they want. And the reviews are at thirty three percent. And I I look at this and go, yeah, people did put their heart and soul into developing a lot of this, right? And feel kind of bad that they're getting panned by launch because obviously it just launched too soon. And you know, maybe there were some poor. Um, design decisions, but that doesn't mean like the hundred people that worked on Elite, they're all shit. Like, it might be what, like one or two shitty ones, but <laughs> uh, you know, I think for the most part, like, they obviously care about their product. I, you know, ooh, okay, we got green boys. Um, what you like about ED is the streamers. Yeah, I think uh, that's always been my favorite part of Elite is the community itself, right? I think um, uh, Elite just has one of the best communities. Um, out there and I don't know if it's like a combination of it being 90% old British um, space nerds <laughs> but everyone is really uh, cool and accepting in this community um, I've made lots of friends and bonded with a lot of people over discussing this game um, which is you know like you get that maybe occasionally over other games but not to the degree that you see like the goodness of um, uh, elite players so definitely one of my favorite. Um, oh, more Propium. Why I'm bothering to get that codex. So hold on. Do I already have... Um, let me just see if I get a codex discovery on this. No. Apparently not. Hold on. Maybe I'll... Yes. Oh! Ooh! Ooh! Ow! 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 So that's a Q, uh, Q09. So, like, again, we're getting into the variants, right? We're like, a Q type anomaly is just like a little perky dot, and uh, 9 is green, and 2 is red, and 3 is blue. It's honestly a little boring when it's sort of the same thing over and over. I mean, like, I appreciate it. I appreciate that it's not just like one type of anomaly, you know? But, whatever. Uh, let's see here. Some of this. Oh, 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 well, this is the, thing, the freedom in the game. And then, what? Commander Bro Ken Wong, you're saying, right now, it's just the small connectivity bugs that are frustrating. Yeah, I agree. It's like, um, th that, that can really put a hamper on the experience when you get a MOVAT or whatever. Though, those have really calmed down. Like, I'm not getting those um, as bad as before. Okay, so should I, A, uh, blow myself up on Green Boy? But she's doing a hell of a job taking down my shields. Or, B, do I check out this other... I think I kind of want to check out the other space anomaly and then see if it's a little bit more different. It's not that far away. Because honestly, this one isn't super pretty. Let's do it. And let's do it in. Uh... Oh, I have to. Dip, 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 dip. What? Hardpoints are tracking. Yeah, okay. Why can't I jump? Hardpoints deployed. I just put them away. Oh, okay. Oh, because I was trying to do um, high wave. Oops. Oops. And yeah, they're trying to fix the instancing issues, which is no small thing. That's been, that's been a problem in the game since day one instancing. Um, and I don't know. I mean, like, I would say, look, at the very least, if they could fix it for wings. Right? If you could just at least, like, Say, hey, if you join a wing, you're, like, permanently connected through your computer devices. Great. Right? I think that would solve 90%. Like, because I think the big thing is, like, when you can't even instance when you're in a wing with someone, that's where it really drives you crazy, right? Um, they released they hyped up at Mediocre Expansion before they closed it down and ran off with the crowdfunded money. <laughs> well, I don't think they ran off. But, no, I do agree that, like, they... I don't, you know, did they overhype Honest Odyssey? I mean, they didn't really do that much hype. Um, they had like a Twitter countdown, but I, I do agree that it's like it's underbaked and it was rushed out the door, um, and they should have got more testing and feedback. Pure, pure and simple. Now they'll shore it up over over the next roadmap. Oh, by the way, actually, while we're while we're headed to this notable, uh, oh wait, we're almost there. Holy shit, that was quick. 
Like seriously, was that not 4,000? Am I going to the right one? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> or wait, maybe I am at the right one and I just... Did I just travel 4,000? I'm really confused. I could have just... I could have just been rambling and traveled vast distances in space. Okay, well, we'll drop it, and if it's just boring green boys, we'll go on the other one. Um, sorry, I'm, like, trying to read the comments, and I keep, like, getting distracted here. Um, it's the only game in town, so to speak, unfortunately. Well, no, you got No Man's Sky, you got Star Citizen. Um, or, sorry, you got No Man's Sky. <laughs> you got Tech Demo Star Citizen. And I think each of them kind of um, focus on different aspects. Like, Star Citizen is, is like, a smaller overall scale and bigger more uh, larger ambition and and more more polished but less functionality I, I, I guess yeah um whereas no man's sky is like you know um you know just like doing lsd and, and running through a field naked you know it's wonderful but um it's probably not how you want to spend your life <laughs> versus elite being that sort of sweet spot between you know euro truckers and and, and uh, combat simulators right uh wings was 1.2 yeah okay no this is the same damn we just turned around and went to the same damn place that we were already at well hold on yeah there's spiky boys too well, how did that happen what did i what did i do I knew it wasn't the case. But yeah, no, I, um, you have faith that Dab will fill you out. Now, I met Dab, you're talking about Dab Stotts, um, one of the programmers. I met him at, uh, LaveCon. Uh, him and Adam Bork Wait or something like that. Really nice, cool dudes to chat with. Didn't really, like, talk too much about the, the, the game itself, just more shooting the shit. Um, though I did directly call out Dav Stott on one question, where I said, hey, can I ask you? A you know, I did the Columbo thing. Can I ask you a question, sir? But there's one thing that's this one thing that's been bothering me. Why is Polaris permit locked? Okay, hold on a second. Are you seeing this? Am I getting four thousand light seconds in like literally ten seconds? Is that what's going on here? Maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe this is just like an insanely fast uh, four thousand light seconds. It feels like that should be at least like a minute. I don't think Super Cruise uh, is that good. Says Super Cruise deals with um, Loop Machine. Super Cruise Assist. What? Did he just ignore the uh, Loop Machine? Yeah, so it looks like these these just are the same. Interesting. Well, it's kind of boring, but whatever. It's, it's efficient. Alright, but actually, before we blow ourselves up, um, we all know that Frontier put their, their roadmap out there um, for the next um, uh, three days and 14 hours or whatever, however long it was. Um, I've also done a roadmap for this for this stream. Switch over there. And we'll take a look at our roadmap. Um, then let's just see where we are on our roadmap. So uh, phase one, some stuff. Um, check uh, mission accomplished. To be honest, I think uh, we can call phase one complete. Uh, phase two, more stuff plus other things, and uh, I'm gonna say that that's also been marked off. We've done, we did do some more stuff. There were other things. Uh, phase three, we might look into a thing plus some stuff, which currently I think I'd say that's right about where we are. Uh, we're looking into things. We're doing stuff. Uh, there will be more stuff. Some fixes, maybe some more bugs. Who knows? Uh, we'll figure it out. But then uh, phase four is really what we're looking forward to, which is um, who knows, right? And phase five, there will be arcs. So that's the roadmap, ladies and gentlemen. That's that's that is where we are at. That is where we are going. Um, <laughs> and if you you can't tell, there's a little bit of facetiousness behind that. Um, I do think it was kind of like so cheesy to see that dumb roadmap that they put out, and I'm like, you guys think this is like gonna help the situation? Uh, and I'm like, I want the best for you. I want. Uh, lovely reviews and share prices go up and all of the wonderful finance happens and, you know but uh you're not gonna that's not how you're gonna get it oops all right so i think for this one oh this guy seems a little more um aggressive maybe the the shocky thing is a little bit more uh damaging
Oh, wow, that did not last long. Okay, these green pustules are very, very uh, aggressive. I have to say, that was uh, I was not expecting that level of uh, destruction. Okay, uh, and we're going to redeploy... Oh, I guess there's a... See, this is the one thing I do like about fleet carriers, is that if they just happen to be parked in a system uh, nearby, like this one's, I guess, 100 light years away, um... You just don't uh, have, you know, like if you were at Sagittarius A previously and the last time you docked was Jameson, you're going back to Jameson. <laughs> right? Which could be good if you were trying to do one of those things where you get to Beagle Point and then just blow yourself back up so you save yourself the return journey. But when you have that much exploration data on your ship, uh, I don't know how people can live with themselves after uh, self immolating. Especially if they have, like, first discovered by tags. Oh my god. Um. Star Citizen and No Man's Sky are not useful to you, Reese, for various reasons. Yeah, I, I get that, right? Like, I think they're, they are three similar games, but they have very different appeals. Fortunately, I like them all. <laughs> um, and then, in short, by Arcs. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. <laughs> yes. Okay, so for the next one, uh, the next location we'll be visiting, uh, we are going to switch things up a little bit from Space Anomalies. And hold on. I minimized, and then sometimes when you come back, your cursor's locked. Uh, we're going to be headed to a rather uh, renowned system. The system of Pomeki, or Pomesh, depending on how you like to pronounce your things. And you can see here, again, Space Anomalies, we're still in the bubble. Pomesh is up here on the other side of the bubble. A lovely Diamondback with around a 51 uh, light year jump range can get anywhere. Uh, in just, just a handful of jumps. Got five jumps to Pomesh. Oh, this took me back to the, um, yeah, that was the last carrier I docked with. We went back to the, uh, uh, yeah, HIP 15310. Uh, Interesting. What do you guys think about fleet carriers? Does anyone here have a fleet carrier? If they got rid of upkeep, I'd be all for it. But I feel like upkeep was uh, probably one of the worst things. Uh, that they've ever implemented in anything, uh, any system, any part of the game. Smashing my uh, jump button there. But yeah, I mean, um, let me put it this way. I am enjoying Odyssey. I'm enjoying the direction that we're going, but I'm not oblivious to um, the fact that like not a lot of people in the community agree with with my perspective, right? I think there there probably is a lot more negativity out there than there is positivity. 33%, right? Um, it really hits home. Like, you know, it's like when I see, like, Obsidian Ant making videos and he's going harsh. Like, the last few videos I see from Ant, you know, he's dug in and clearly disappointed. And, and right on. He's an honest guy and he's given, um, speaking from the heart, right? And that's what everyone should do, right? Let's get get it out there. Let, let them know how you feel about it because they ain't going to fix it if they don't think it's broken, right? But uh, you do know that Ant is kind of like this barometer, right? Like, you know, when his cool demeanor is uh, put aside for, you know, what? I'm, like, I'm, 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 I would love to see uh, Obsidian Ant just go full Yamex on one video. What the fuck, Frontier? What the fuck? <laughs> you guys are fucking C-words. Uh, oh. <laughs> With that um, beautiful uh, dulcet tone of his... Uh, to hear um, the, the kind of language that comes out of Yamex's mouth, it would be like uh, heaven and hell at the same time. <laughs> uh, you say even with upkeep, you've made five or six billion off of your carrier. Wow, wow, that's that's crazy. So just like um, by charging for updates, like just random people are using it, or like people that you know. Um, have been using it and therefore like 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 this is my thing is like can you just park your carrier somewhere and lo and behold people are gonna make money for you because that's how I feel it should be it should be a money making tool not um, cost you money right well my point is like you know if they are also going to reduce the upkeep to the point where it is insignificant what's the point of having it at all like you know again if, if that is the big discouraging for thing for players like me that go, I don't want to get tied into an item that, uh, you know, I, I have to save up for, I have to plan when I'm not playing, what's it going to be doing? Like, to me, like, 
if you haven't played in a day, your carrier, sh or let's say a week or whatever the time period is, your carrier should automatically despawn and stop stop the bill, right? Like maybe maybe you, you, you log in, you set your carrier as active, it's active for a week. After a week, it's going to go out of the system, so it's not taking up a slot, so it's not like um, influencing the background if you're an inactive player, right? Because, you know, someone in theory could uh, go grind and get you know, $50 billion, buy a fleet carrier, put it in a popular spot, and then just never play again, and that thing is just going to sit there. Um, but to me, like, they should be money makers. Like, the fleet carriers, you know, you should be able to park it somewhere um, in, like, let's say an unexplored system and get, like, passive exploration income. Like, uh, you know, that, that it's, as opposed to upkeep. Like, not even to, like, balance out upkeep. Get rid of upkeep and make it so that, like, when you get your carrier... You'll start earning passive incomes, either exploration income if you're parking in unknown systems. If you park it into a um, human economy system, you're going to get like trade income. And if you park it in a you know a system that has a combat zone or whatever, maybe you earn some combat bond income or something. But uh, I don't like the I don't like the uh, upkeep thing. Uh, stock price took a hit, but then that's temporary. What are you talking about, like Frontier stock price? Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. They pushed it out probably knowing that we're going to get negative reviews, we're going to get negative perception, but we had to do it for whatever reason. Maybe there were financial reasons. Maybe it <coughs> was purely ambition and like, okay, well, if we release this now, we can recognize all this revenue and then we can go to lenders and get more money so we can actually produce more games and more, the more games we produce, the more developers we can hire back to Elite to make it even better. You don't know, right? Like, um, you don't know how that, that company is working. I don't... Um, uh, look at the decisions they made and go like, oh, these guys are like rocket scientists, quite literally. But um, all I can do is look at the game and go like, what do I, what would I, what would I want to see? All right, we're here in Pomaki, and of course we are going to the infamous Pomaki to see. Uh, that'd be one to see. So we, yeah, probably the one with all the fleet carriers. That is the the unintended benefit of fleet carriers is you really know uh, what the uh, popular destinations are because there's usually a line of carriers around them. Uh, just line that up. Uh, what are you saying? Parking takes time and investment. You have to get stock unless it's running mining. Upkeep is really a non-issue. Fair enough, fair enough. It's far less than the cost of tri ship transfers. Yeah, I can see that because those can be expensive, especially when they're wanted ships. Single ship transfer to the bubble of the Pleiades can cost upwards of 30 million. Yeah, I've still got a um, federal assault ship out there. Uh, outfitted with AX weaponry, and I did kind of notice how expensive it would be to haul that. And that's just a medium ship. Uh, they make you money by reduced operational costs, but as far as direct money, it takes a little planning and timing. And yeah, you know what? Uh, that's fair enough. I just I don't like the idea that, like, if, for example, I stop playing for six months, it's just draining my bank account, right? Uh, do do you made a few hundred million parked in a CG system. Oh, that's cool. Just with repair. See, okay, that's what I like, is the idea that you can create a station in a place where there wasn't a station, which might th make things a lot more convenient for a large group of people. Like, that's a part of carriers that I think is really positive. Uh, or if outfitted for mining, you should be able to slowly troll through a wing with the turret mining lasers and hundreds of limpets. Oh, how cool would that be? <laughs> you just have, like, like a, like a you know, in, in the combat zones when the carriers warp in, if you have, like, a mining fleet carrier, just, like... Like, you should just be able to get a dredger attachment for the front of your fleet carrier and just go through scooping up those rocks and chomping them into bits. That would be sweet. Turn up the music. Is it too low? Low. Okay, tell me if it's too loud now, because it, it is a weird, sensitive thing where it's, like, at 7, it's, like, too low. At 12, it's too high, and... Um, it's really, really hard to find that, that sweet spot. Well, this is the instrumental version of uh, Living in the 80s, incidentally. Okay, so, uh, why is Pramesh 2C famous? Well, it is famous uh, for having lots and lots of canyons. And I'm not sure how different it's going to look um, in Odyssey. It might have been, you know... Uh, well, it most definitely would have been changed. 
This is true. This 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 music does need to be loud. Uh, but what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be exploring falling off of a cliff. What better place to find cliffs? Actually, it was Dark Heavy Eight who suggested uh, this lovely location uh, for its cliffs, cliffs slash canyons or whatever. But um, we're going to see if we can find ourselves a nice, well lit cliff. And I don't know. It kind of looks a little. A little rigidy. Hmm. I think there might be a good one right there. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go slow, go slow. Epic Mountain Rage. Hold on. There's a tourist beacon. Oh, that's probably the dark side of the planet, though. I want lit cliffs. I want to get lit. There's a, it looks like some real high ones up over there. Okay, so as you get down to the surface, you really see how crazy this place is looking. Uh, want to buy dredger with mining fighters, and then want to... Uh, also want SLF to my carrier in a concourse. Dude, I don't understand why they don't have, like, the concourse on fleet carriers. That seems like it should have been... Um, part of the plan, or like it just makes logical sense, but who knows? Maybe eventually we'll get it. Uh, then the question is, how vulnerable? Ten torps, 50, 50 torps, for what? Like a, a fleet carrier to get taken down? Yeah. See, I, I totally think there should be a way that you can attack fleet carriers and they retreat, uh, just like the capital ships do, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Dark Heavy 8, um, his face was formed in the fires of the Mash Sea, falling off the cliffs several times. I do love the delivery on that one, too. Yeah, I don't know if these look quite the same as the canyons that uh, preceded them, but they will do for our purposes. Yeah, I mean... Um, Frontier guys also did acknowledge that there were some things they weren't happy with about planetary attack. Or I guess they acknowledged that they were aware of the complaints and would look into it. Kind of very political answer. But I do hope that they do look at it because I'm not sure I'm, I'm super hot on everything. I mean, uh, again, I think it's always like some good, some bad. But I do think this is an area of the game that they could continue to refine, make it a little better. I gotta say, though, maybe this planet isn't um, uh, making canyon runners too happy at the changes, but it does look quite cool. Definitely looks like an otherworldly planet, and I want to see more of this kind of stuff in Elite, right? Like, there's only... Realism is good to a certain point, but sometimes you just want to see cool-looking things. And you never could disembark on Flash. Or Pomeki, or how do you guys say this? Pomeki or Pomash? Pomesh? Pomeki? Vote. Alright, um. It's just like the earlier mountain range. Some of these cliffs are a little bit steeper, and we want to make sure that we're falling off um, in a way that we're not going to, like, survive, right? Um, so let me see. How would you reasonably expect to take down a Farragut? You can't because FDev has, got, has not got that far. Well, I like the warp out mechanic. I mean, I would love to see them blow up in combat zones. That would be epic. Like, you know, Death Star explosion. But for, like, fleet carriers, if they just went and put that same mechanic in where, like, once you fuck with a fleet carrier and get rid of all its modules and whatever, um, it just sort of warps out or whatever, I think that would be a, a fine solution. However many torps you'd need, you'd have fleets of players doing nothing else. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They'd be chasing out um, fleet carriers, right? But... You know, then you can buy defenses for your fleet carriers and, you know, uh, create that mechanic. I guess, you know, it would definitely have to be balanced and thought out. There's a lot I don't know about fleet carriers in particular, so I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Plus, no one's paying me, so pay me money. I'll balance fleet carriers. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, I think uh, it's just going to have to be a run and jump in this case. But uh, the way we're going to die here is by falling off a cliff. I would really like to have like a very um, steep ledge to fall off of. That would be my ideal. It would be sort of a, a precipice or a, sort of a 
this. Problem is all these slopes, like you're never gonna find like a vertical face, or if you do, it's gonna be bugged terrain. It's like all this stuff looks vertical and then you get closer and it's like, oh no, it's actually just sloped. All of that looks like a vertical section right there. Oh well. I'm gonna record, and here we go. Uh, hold on, let me just do, see here. Uh, this music sounds like it's from old Final Fantasy Tactics games. Yeah, maybe a little bit. I have not played uh, old Final Fantasy games. Yeah, see, that is... I need to get down further, because it does seem like there is a little bit of a cutoff here. Yeah, okay. If I get down there, it should work. Stop recording. But, um, you know, there's still, like, even though I've played this game for a long time... Oh, 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 oh. Oh no 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 So this is actually what I call uh skiing and it's unique to Elite Dangerous Odyssey. It's a new feature. Where you can literally fall down a cliff. And it's like you're 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 skiing. Oh no 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 Oh no 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 I get a nice like face shot. What is his face looking like? Oh no 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 Oh don't you black out on me. Don't you black out on me, camera. He bounced! And I'm not even dead. If I don't die after all this, I'm going to be severely disappointed. This is bizarre. I know, they can't even make the, uh, the limbs move, right? I'm walking on sunshine, literally. My arms and knees. Oh. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we died. <laughs> Mission accomplished. I think that's my first death in Pomach. Pomaki. Pomakale. Pomakala. You have lost consciousness. And after a few weeks of healing those broken legs, you'll be back. What's up, Canadian Ale? Haven't seen you around, but I like the name. Good old uh, Canadian craft beer. It's one of my favorite things. All right. Speech to text. I am basically a living speech to text. Reading the comments. Commander Ulan just joining the stream as I died at the bottom of a cliff. Yeah, I died. <laughs> you weirdo. <laughs> that was uh, actually a rather interesting um, uh, cliff death. I've done uh, skiing down a mountain uh, uh, in uh, Nervi. We did uh, falling off a mountain, but the skiing was a little bit more similar to that, where you're just kind of... Uh, oh. We are going next to Na, Naza, Naza. Uh, so thank you, Pameki, for giving us lovely cliff deaths. We appreciate it very much. And the next stop on our great bubble, great bubble journey and tour will be um, Naza. And uh, apparently there are lava spouts in this system. Although I'm gonna have to figure out which damn system it is. Um, when we get there, though, um, I will take a quick bio break, uh, like a five minute sort of break on the stream, and then we will do Death by Lava Spout and see if we can uh, turn ourselves into Anakin Skywalker uh, without even having the high ground. Um, 
And then from there, we'll actually be heading pretty far to the bubble. Um, and before we do, we might want to just see if there's a couple different ways that we can blow ourselves up in that system. Because uh, Naza, I believe, is populated. Uh, but after that, then we will be heading out to a system called Urt. You heard me. Urt. Just like uh, you may recall the Urt cloud. Um, O-O-R-T. And that system is actually very close to the Horsehead Nebula, which is right at... Bernard's loop, which is probably out there somewhere. Uh, maybe we're facing the wrong way. Um, but yeah, that, that one's going to take a little bit to get out there. And then the final place that we will experience uh, death today uh, is going to be eaten. We're going to eat. Our, we're going to get eaten by a space dredger at the end. <laughs> Spoilers. Hey, what's up, Death Star Omega? How you doing? But yeah, it is. Uh, uh, um, there are many new exciting ways to die uh, since the addition of Odyssey. You know, if I were making, you know, all, all the different ways that you could die in a ship or an SRV, it would be a much shorter list, but I believe space lags will allow me to find 99 different ways to die. That's a Dutch name, and it isn't Urt. Urt? Urt? The Urt Cloud? Is, it, is Tim Allen Dutch? Is, is that what, um... Is that how you speak Dutch? Can, can I just do that for the rest of the stream? Just try to make Tim Allen grunts? Actually, that hurts my throat. I don't have that the level of required testosterone or um, uh, level of cocaine needed to... <laughs> it's when Tim Allen like a big coke fiend. Uh, but yeah, in, in, uh, in the system of worked, and I'm sorry, Lude, if I'm just like butchering that and um, uh, you're really upset but I, I can't I can't help myself uh, in that system I believe there's another Lagrange cloud uh, of a different type that we can check out and then um, uh, heading into Perseus dark region the only known dredger right now that you can find is is where the uh, Hesperus is the, uh, what are you saying there? The double O is more like the English O in boy. Oort boy. Try it. Oort boy. Bort? Bort? Boy oort. Bort? Oort? 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 Did I get it? <laughs> I, feel, <coughs> I feel like along the way I probably um, uh, created a new dialect, but um, Oort? Ort, ort, ort. <laughs> that sounds like a seal now. Uh, okay, so I didn't... Um, like, smart, smart me. I did not write down what the system name was, but that's fine. There's not that much here, and we can rule out anything that isn't landable, but maybe this will be interesting to check out. Um, oh, I don't know. It's pretty hot. But let's, let's check it out. Because this is actually, yeah, it looks like... The fact that I'm right next to the sun and I can still see it. That's a big boy. What's the gravity on this guy? Uh, 1.37 Gs. So he is a hefty boy. A little bit bigger than Earth. Okay. Probes away, probes away, probes away, Corp. I know I'm too fast. I hit the stop button, but he doesn't want to stop. Here you go. Uh, this one has efficiency of seven, so we're just gonna probe spam it because no one cares about efficiency. Not for a bubble planet that's been discovered, but the reason we're doing this is so we can get the overlays and just make sure we are landing in an area that could potentially house some uh, lava spouts. Like port without the, the P? Hey, Reese, yeah, no worries, man. Um, have a good uh, rescue day in 07, sir. Here we go. So, let's see, we got lava spouts from World's Vents. So pretty much this is not helpful because as you can see the entire planet apparently is covered in lava spouts, but it'll probably be a different story when we get down to the surface. Now I wonder, um, you know, how does this change in exploration? Should I be going, um, what is that? Oh, it's a space facility. 
No, that's just a space station place. Like, uh, if you're trying to find lava spots, should I go on the night side, where it might be easier to spot some little magma flows in the night? Or do I go on the day side, where it's just easier to see everything? Or do we maybe want to go uh, closer to the horizon, even though is this an atmospheric world? No. No atmosphere. So we won't get a glorious uh, sunset. But maybe let's try um, near the day-night terminator. I kind of have a feeling that like it'll be easier to find lava um, on the night side, but in terms of like getting a shot, I don't know if it'll be. Uh, it might be prettier to go on the day side. So I think we'll lean towards day, but maybe not like fully commit. That is the struggle of like you know when you're playing this game and you're also like a filmmaker, right? And you're like, uh, I want to get this shot, but I don't have the game level skill to get it. Or I really like how this looks, but like the location is like dark and hard to shoot in, right? Yeah, I really want to do a geyser. Um, unfortunately, they're apparently harder to find than it looks now. Um, I do, I think, have... Uh, no, I was going to say it was like in one of Scorp streams, I think, where... Uh, I have uh, an on-camera recorded death. Although, I don't think... Yeah, I was on Scorb stream, and it was just one of those things where, like, because of the stream delay, he, I, he just missed me getting blasted off into the stratosphere. Uh, and then I managed to actually survive that one, so I didn't die. I just landed on my feet and felt perfectly fine. Which is so weird. Okay, so we are in... Uh, my radar is telling me we are in bat country. Should be plenty of lava from rolls around, but as we saw with geysers, it may not be uh, as easy as just finding the uh, uh, highlighted area. But hopefully, we can find a lava, lava thing. Then uh, I'll, I'll um, uh, do a quick break after murking myself. Feel like. Lava spouts might be easier to find. Actually, geysers should be easier to find just because they're um, uh, shooting off so high into the sky. But lava geysers might have uh, smoky trails. Where there is smoke, there is lava. Oh, also, hi G, 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 hi this is okay. This is okay. We're alive. Everything is fine. What's that? Okay. Let's get our shields back. Oh, look! And look at that! Hi G has brought us to lava. Thank you and praise the lava gods. Alright, uh, if I could just land here without blowing myself up. There we go. Lovely. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, let's see if we can die in an SRV. See, what I did there was uh, at the very last second I put all my pips into shields, and sometimes that is the clincher, right? Uh, four pips to shields, you can survive a... Uh, no, no big deal, land on any planet. No matter what the G's. Okay, where's this lava going? This is a pretty planet, though. Oh, look, there's a... Um, there's a fumarole. Nice smoky boy. But what we're looking for is the sweet, hot lava. So, I am at 48% in my SRV, and I'm wondering... Why? <laughs> what have I done? What did I do? To already get myself down there. Okay, so apparently uh, that is a lava thing. And that is also a lava thing. Maybe it doesn't hurt you in your SRV? Like, maybe you have to be like out on um, space feet? Come on, hurt me. Please hurt. No! 
I think you can only get hurt by these things maybe on um, on feet, right? Because that is certainly not um, like I mean, technically I'm not in a lava, and like were there not um, little uh, you know campfire style lava spouts that would um, sort of pump lava up in the air, and maybe these are a different thing. I'm trying to see if there's anything close by. I'm not seeing anything other than more of these, like, things. Which, by the way, if I scan this, like, with, uh, I'm just scanning the Pisces Cobble. Like, there's no, like, I guess, how do you get these guys on your codex, right? Like, I'm not, there's nothing to select. Um, other than this Pisces Cobble, right? So that leads me to believe that, like, are these even, like, things? That's all we got there. Well, I'll tell you what, I think this is a good time for a quick break. I'm gonna queue up a nice, beautiful sunset. Um, I'm gonna put you on the peepee -pee screen. I'm gonna put you all on the peepee -pee screen. And then we'll come back and see this glorious uh, view that we left with. Which I think, you know, this is a good this is a good screenshot right there. Yeah, sure, why not? Alright, so um you guys just chill for a few minutes and I will be back and we will continue blowing ourselves up. We've got a couple more locations to go, a few more ways to blow ourselves up before we are done for the day. I will be with you in a moment. Stay tuned.
that's nice. And yes, remember to hydrate, folks, if you've been watching for a long time. Give yourself a stretch. Drink some water. Do do all the things. Uh, but we are back. And what a, what a glorious view. It is a beautiful, beautiful sunset on this planet. <clears throat> well, that feels good. It is a hot, moist... Uh, we've, we've had, like, high winds and high temperatures here in Spain, Canada today. So, yeah, I don't know if, uh, then... So, I guess, can I... Uh, hmm. Just getting back into this. I do want to dive out of Lava Geyser. Maybe, uh, there's a landable planet in this system that will have lots of Lava Geysers or these little, uh, lava patches that I can actually get out on because I figured this one was going to be a little bit too hot. And, um, do you guys know, if you go on the night side of the planet, does that reduce the temperature and therefore maybe, uh, make it acceptable? Like, if I went to the night side, do you think of this planet, would I, um, be able to get out? I don't think so. Like, I think the planet has, like, a range that's unacceptable. And I do hope that that is, like, you know, uh, oh, here we go, living in the 80s again. I hope that, um, at one point or another we can engineer our suits to withstand, um, more temperatures. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a flyover. Oh wait, I can't get out of this planet. It's pointless. Uh, so, let's see here. Maybe this boy over here... Oh no, not that, not that guy can get out of here. This one has a lovely city. Some blue facilities and orange facilities, which I actually don't know what's the difference between... You know what? Let's go find out. Maybe there'll be some uh, lava geysers there. <coughs> and uh, Shadow Man, to answer your earlier question about um, why not lock onto a geosite uh, in the nap panels, so yeah, those are gone in Odyssey. There, there aren't, like, POIs anymore. You're not going to find, like, a little signal source that says, hey, there are brain trees here in this small patch. You're going to find a large swath where brain trees could be, and I'm pretty sure, and, and, and this is the, the not factual, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, believe what I say with a grain of salt, but I'm pretty sure that the um, locations of the actual geysers within that biome may be procedurally generated and may be different each time that you come back and visit the planet. So you might find a lava geyser there and log out and log in in the morning and maybe the lava geyser isn't there. I, I'm not sure about that. It's not a, a, a fact that you can quote me, but um, but you can quote me on it and tell everyone I'm wrong. I don't care. But uh, I don't believe that uh, POIs are a thing anymore. At the very least. I haven't found any so far. So I've not done, you know, a superb amount of exploration. A lot of what I've been doing in Odyssey is just honestly going to facilities in taxis running around, looting and looting and looting. And, no, not you loot, but, you know, other loots. Loot, loot with an umlaut. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's important to keep yourself hydrated because H2O is, um, 90% of the human body is made of H2O. Apparently. That's what they keep saying. I'm like, 90%? Is it 90%? I think maybe the, maybe the, the, um, is geological not different from biological? Um, yes, and before you could get, um, I think there were POIs before for like geysers and stuff, but I haven't seen any, like on any planet that has geysers, I've not seen POIs, but you can find geysers by going into the biome and then just, you know, doing the whole sort of fly around. Um, and honestly, like, I've been luckier in just random encounters, and when I've been trying to find them on streams or whatnot, it's actually, um, been somewhat disappointing. And again, this goes back to my thing of, this is my main philosophy for Lead Dangerous, is that the more specific you are trying to do a thing, the more the game works against you. But if you kind of just go out there without an agenda, it works, like, beautifully most of the time. Like, this is a game that, like, is, does best when you don't have a plan. When you are not blazing a trail when you're just burning a field <laughs> and a trail emerges, right? But if you try to blaze a specific trail, you're going to light the whole field on fire. And that's just, that's just the facts, right? It's kind of like, yeah, oh, okay, I want to do this thing. Well, what are the elements that you have to do? You have to go get um, outfitted for this thing. You have to get the right ship. You have to get the right engineering. 
the right equipment, find the location, go to the location, find the thing. And, you know, there's so many points where it could go wrong, um, either through, you know, the wrong information, the wrong outfitting, or something as simple as, you know, you get to a planet, you expect a geyser to be there, and you just you can't find one, right? I wonder if that's... Um, I don't think... What I do see is I did visit, um, in the bubble tour, a mega barnacle location. Though, my, in my bubble tour, that was in Horizons. Um, and so I don't know if mega barnacles still have... Uh, POI locations, but that might be that might be the case. I'm not sure. There's still a lot new, right? The game's not been out um, that long in its new state, and of course, each update they are going to be tweaking things. And we know from their roadmap there'll be at least for for the love of Pete. All right, you know what? I'm gonna just let him interdict me, and then. I'm just gonna jump away. Because I'm gonna dive back. It is very fast. What is he at? Oh, he's in a crate phantom. Oh, that's not good. Oh, he's also a pirate, and he will soon be disappointed. Another empty cargo hold. My children will go hungry tonight. Why are you making me feel bad? <laughs> well, you know what? Maybe if you were to take up like data run missions for like fifty thousand dollars you can buy your kids some food cartridges you numbskull piracy is the least paying activity in this game the, like your children are not starving because i oscar thomas charlie wood because i did not decide to carry a carton of bio waste on me they're starving because of your career choices let that be said uh, <laughs> commander pine piper how you doing man did i say barnacles oops yes i did i did and, um, yeah, Death by Barnacle. I don't know if that's a... I mean, technically that... I could f try to figure out a way to kill myself on a barnacle. That could be something we could do. <laughs> of course, the purpose of today's stream is to combine exploration with uh, self-immolation, so to speak. Um, I'm doing a video uh, on all the different ways that you can die in Elite Dangerous. Uh, documenting all the various creative ways that the game lets you um, uh, self-destruct. Uh, and uh, today with an exploration theme because I did a poll and it was pretty split between like just looking at Odyssey's features, trying to blow yourself up, and um, you know, Space Madness. I mean exploration. Well, there's a little bit of Space Madness and everything in this game. Uh, but yeah, I, I am truly, I would say like, if I had to pick a, a path of gameplay, I'm definitely an explorer at heart. It's my favorite um, aspect of this game. Combat being a, a you know very close number two, but I'm not that good at it. And whoa, hold on, what's going on with this planet? It's got quite the little uh, thing at the top there. Oh, I think it's just like a birthmark, a planetary birthmark. Yeah, you can see, you know, these are all your facilities on the planet. This is a chew manufacturing complex. Interesting. Uh, we're going to launch some probes. I shouldn't take that many. It's a two probe planet. Let's see. Do we get lava geysers and fruit rolls? Oh yes, we do get lava spots, fruit rolls, vents. Okay. So, as you can see here, um, you can find lava spots pretty much anywhere. <laughs> Kind of a wide way, wide range, uh, but uh, you'll see here you get like a regular markers, you get your minor wreckage, but no like POI saying like, hey, here there be lava geysers, right? So I guess what we could do is just maybe, yeah, it looks like that location is within the biome or the area. Uh, with some practice, dying can be harder when you think. Yes, no, that's what I'm finding is uh, it's not so easy to blow yourself up sometimes. Especially if you're trying to do it in a very specific way. Um, although death by NS beam, dropout, and being unable to escape vector is quite a dramatic end. Wait, what? NS beam? What's NS beam? NS beam. NS north-south beam? Neutron star beam? Oh, I think that is neutron star beam. There you go, I figured it out. Holy crap, on the second try. I'm a genius. But, um, yeah, the, oh, actually I do have um, some on the list for neutron star shenanigans and whatnot. Uh, 
i.e. like getting caught in their um... ew this part is gross I don't like this like uh, pea soup look to it but say la vie might add some interesting contrast if we can find some lava spots I do want to know what Vinge Beacon is all about. all about. Is this just like one of those old Horizon facilities that just has, you know, it's orange on the map as opposed to blue because it's, you know, more of a Horizons feature than it is necessarily a um, Odyssey one? Because I wonder, can I request docking? Well, it's not showing up as a location, so no, you can't. And ooh, what's going on there? Uh, system defense is being attacked. Even the system defense isn't welcome here. What, what, what's going on? What did he do to piss off this location? Must be like a trespass zone. No, I'm not getting uh, any trespass warnings. I just did get a fine for trespassing. Okay, so apparently it is a trespass zone. Let's just watch this NPC get his... He's doing pretty okay. Wait, now he's shooting at me! Um, okay, uh, running, 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 running. Okay, I think the base is actually shooting at me as well. Okay, um, no, wait, what's that? Oh, that's a trespass beacon. Okay. Is that a fumarole? Okay. We're just gonna run further. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here, this is what we need! Start of a gun. Okay. I'm gonna capture that because I do think trespassing on a land facility was part of uh, one of the later points. Not for exploration, but reason for assault, trespass. Trespassing, okay. And oh no. Prison facility. <laughs> See, of course, when you're going out and trying to blow yourself up in different specific ways, and then you get blown up in ways that you're not trying to do, that's always fun. Uh, now, of course, I could disembark and show you what a prison system looks like on the inside, but eh, that's not really that all that interesting. All right, well, that's fine. It shouldn't be too hard to get back out there. And literally, that, uh, at least we know, and, and we'll be able to kind of test, I think. Um, you get this glitch still? Where it's like, okay. <laughs> Makes the system map all freaked up, right? Once you zoom in on it, it kind of lets you, um, Rotate the camera, but then sometimes it undoes itself. It's really bizarre. It's a really bizarre little glitch. But yeah, three jumps back. Okay, that's fine. No big deal. Uh, scratch one from... And there it happened. <laughs> Too slow typing. Recreat in pace? Is that Latin? In nomine patris e fili e spiritus sancti? I don't know... Uh, what uh, you're saying there. I'm going to try and uh, translate that. Requiat in pace. I'm going to say that that is um, rebuy in peace. In nomine patris e fili e spiritus sancti. Um, in the name of the Father and the McFish fillet, may your spirit be um, uh, uh, saved. Am I, am I close? A Philly? I don't know what Philly would be. Oh, maybe like Philadelphia? <laughs> invisible planet, system mapped, gooped. Well, the invisible planet was earlier when I was, uh, I went and got first football on a planet. When I went to look back at it, it was gone. The game did not want me to gawk um, and appreciate my own uh, space graffiti. Because it's mean. This game is mean. There is a little bit of a, a mean spirit to Elite. And I actually, that's one thing I like about it. Um, that it's a little bit on, on the unforgiving side, right? Like, I, I wouldn't want this game to be easy or um, 
uh, you know, kid gloves, you know what I mean? Like, I kind of like that, it, you know, space is unforgiving. Space travel is one of the most dangerous things. Nailed it! Sweet! Yeah. I don't know why, but, like, I guess, um, I learned a little bit of French when I was growing up. I can't speak a, a lick of it other than, like, Le bonhomme de neige est dans la bibliothèque. The snowman is in the library, in case you were wondering. Um, switched over and did a little bit of Italian um, when I got to secondary school because he finally had the option and I'm like, well, I was struggling with French. Uh, it was just like the, the there's so many like isms in French and accent aigu and accent du and accent pu um, but I switched over to Italian and obviously both of those languages are from Latin roots and so every once in a while, you know, it's like you see something in Latin and you're kind of like I don't speak this language and English, of course, draws from different languages. Um, but some, yeah, it's like you, you, the word like patri, okay, that's like uh, Patreon or like Papa Papatron. <laughs> Papatron. <laughs> that should that should be a new uh, like yeah like don't join me on on Patreon. Go subscribe to my Papatron. That's what I'm gonna call it from now on. It's like because I, I call it Patreon. I'm just trying to merge Patreon and. Spadula, but I like Papa Tron. Sounds like Dad Robot. But that would be like a good um, site. It's like Kickstarters for dads. It's like, hey, uh, um, I have a kid. Uh, need some money. Come to my Papa Tron. Subscribe to my kid. <coughs> School's in. Uh, Shadow Man, you said you want the ED universe, but the kind of damage repair model from Sea of Thieves or that airship game, you can't remember the name of it. Is it that Warframe game? Warframe I hear a lot about, but I've never played it. Um, I, don't, I, I know about Sea of Thieves, I don't know the repair model, but definitely, I, I, you know, I would love to have, like, bits of your ship getting damaged, and um, you could go repair them with a hammer in your space legs. Muppetron! Oh my god. That's the next level. Muppetron? That'd be good. The Muppetron. That'd be a good um, plot for a Muppet movie, too. It's like they're coming out with new robotic mu Muppets. Now, the notion that Latin is a dead language is something of a non sequitur. I see what you did there, Vex. <laughs> Clever. It is funny that, yeah, it's like Latin is a dead language, but like... We've kind of um, taken pieces of the corpse and um, uh, used them for decorative necklaces in, in if English was a, a fashion statement, I guess. <laughs> it's a weird, weird metaphor I'm going down that. A weird analogy I'm trying to make there. Uh, where you and your friends are running all over the ship patch holes and repairing systems. Oh, yeah. Well, th that's what I would love is like, yeah, in multi-crew, like let's say you get... Um, oh, my laser's malfunctioning. Then you can get out of your seat, run to the laser, hit it a few times with your space hammer, and uh, all of a sudden it's back in action. I would love that. It'd be great. Okay, so what was that place that blew us up? I think it was this one, Vinge. Because there were lovely lava spots down there. And we want one of them to kill me. And then we've got two more locations to check out. Both of them are pretty far out of the bubble. And to be honest, I, I didn't really think this through well. Because I'm like, I'm going to get out to the first one, and then we're going to die. And I don't know where I'm going to respawn. So, that'll be an adventure. It might be two long journeys. But I do want to end with getting eaten by a dredger. And hello, Rodrigo Pinchiari. Pinchiari? 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 Uh, if it's Italian, I would say, Rodrigo Pinch Pinchiari. Pinchiari. How you doing, sir? Welcome, 07. Welcome to the stream. If you are just joining, again, the uh, uh, goal of today's stream is actually just to blow ourselves up uh, in a bunch of different ways. I know that sounds weird, but um, it, uh, it is. But, no, you're weird. Yeah, yeah, you're weird. <laughs> For not enjoying self-immolation. Um, what about performance with this new update? Well, um, right now I am getting 100 frames a second and I'm going to bump into a planet. Hold on, just let me... 
I thought that you would lose health percentages when you bump into these planets. I guess you get some module damage. So maybe if I could get my power plant down to 1% and then smack into a planet. Hmm. Italian. Okay, there you go. So I know that the CH in Italian is key. I know things about the, these things. I'm not a language man, but um, I can barely speak English. But, but you're from Brazil. Well, there you go. But the root is Italian. And uh, Brazil, you speak uh, Portuguese in Brazil. See, I'm getting 144 frames per second. It's not bad. Um, in, sorry, and that, that's when you're in like Horizons areas. As soon as you go inside of a, a facility or station, it might drop to like 30 or 60. But keep in mind, like I've got a better than average system now, and um, you know, I think the performance issues are there. I'm certainly like it's not done, but it's not. It's not that bad, right? Like, like I think people are overreacting on both sides, right? It's not that good. It's not that bad. Um, it's disappointing uh, that there are more features and more variety and more optimization, but it's also not like we need to like lynch mob against Frontier and blah 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 blah. Like it's disappointing, but uh, they'll get there. I hope, maybe. But yeah, in Brazil they speak Portuguese. What I was going to say is that Portuguese is also a language that's very similar to Italian and French, and that it also is derived from ripping off Latin took Latin and they're like we're gonna do our version right it'd be like if someone um, uh, like uh, if No Man's Sky had an update called Beyond <laughs> which it did <laughs> very shortly after <laughs> Elite Dangerous did their Beyond and I thought that was fun and cheeky uh, okay we're gonna glide into Vinge Beacon we're not going to trespass this time and have the station relentlessly blow us into all hell. We are apparently wanted. So even though we went to a penal colony, we didn't that didn't clear our bounty. Uh, and as you can see, I've got many bounties. What's kind of cool is that, yeah, out of these bounties, you can see, oh, this must be the one that is um, active because it's got a logo against it, right? Weird way of communicating that, but sure, it does the job. Let's me know what I did wrong and who hates me and why. Hopefully we won't get uh, scanned, so we'll just try to come down maybe a little bit um, further from the base. What we're trying to do here is look for a lovely lava um, spout. Look at that. This base is getting tons of action. It's just killing... I love that it's shooting system defense, right? Like The, 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 the poor local cops can't even go uh, check out on this facility. They're like, we're just here to, uh, you know, log a report about this crime. All right, and this is what we're looking for. Yeah, active lava uh, uh, fumy rolls or whatever. Oh yeah, this is gonna be nice. I wanted, I, I didn't want just like a boring smattering of um, lava rocks. All right, disembark, local bounty. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Now, oh, you know what? I'm probably going to get screwed on this, because I guarantee you what's going to happen is I'm going to blow myself up, but because I have a crime here, it's going to report me back to the detention facility. But, because my Diamondback is on this planet, um, it's going to stay here, and then I'm going to go to the prison facility, have to take a taxi to a station, and then order my Diamondback. Doesn't this look cool, though? So, yeah, this is going to screw me, but whatever. It is what it is. So you would think, like, hey, I can scan this for something, but no, apparently not. Warning. Dangerously hot temperature detected. Warning. Can do anything with this? Is this gonna kill me? Mm. No. Don't look like it. But this is quite a pretty sight. I do like this. Good, good, um, filmography here. Man! I'm loving the, the sort of watching this little slideshow or um, uh, fight from over here. I kind of want to just watch this and, and see. Uh, Death by lack of oxygen in his spacesuit is quite cool too. Yeah, I did that. Uh, I did that earlier. I already cataloged there and bye bye. <laughs> bye bye, system security. Uh, I did that one a little bit earlier, the Death by spacesuit, and it is quite harrowing. Um, you know, again, ew, this fucking green pea soupy thing is just kind of gross. Um, yeah, really cool. I love the, the look of this field and 
this roll this is. Okay. Lock that in, start recording, and let us die by lava. Uh, I believe I'm moving forward. There we go. Let's just actually maybe... Let's do it from here. Oh, ho. happen that quickly <laughs> but I also uh, am glad that it happened that quickly because it would have been kind of dumb if you're like standing around in lava and it's totally fine <laughs> you've lost consciousness but don't worry you'll be okay you just uh, got eaten by uh, magma smoldering hot magma oh and apparently my legal status is clean even though it's not Okay, but it's going to put me back in my ship at the location. Um, Alright, unexpected, but not unwanted. I will take that. Uh, let me see here. So, must be a feature of Odyssey was one type per site in Horizons. Um, really, eh? Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot that they've changed. I just don't know. Um, yeah, no worries. Hey, Dean Calloway, uh, no worries. If you got to walk the doggo, make sure you walk him, because otherwise he will poop on the floor. And um, you don't want that. Uh, oh, thanks for leaving this on for viewership. Awesome. Yeah, that does help my watch time. I'm trying to get, like, remonetized and all that stuff in um, uh, YouTube. And um, watch hours is all I need to do. So the streaming has certainly helped. Because, like, you know, ten people stick around for three hours. And that's um, uh, 30 hours, right? I think I've got, like, 2,000 hours that I need to uh, do to get there. So it's a slog, but, you know. No, just because um, that didn't uh, immediately murder me, I kind of want to go back down and see if maybe there are other uh, ways for these uh, geysers, geysers to... Where'd that place go? And just like right over it? There, oh there it is. Here you are, Binji Beacon. Um, or just get, you know, another shot. Um, again, so, like, like I'm doing this stuff on stream because I thought it'd be fun to... You know, it's always fun to watch other people fail and get blown up. Uh, but, uh, uh, at the end I'll be putting together probably, like, I'll release them in, like, smaller chunks. So I'll do, like, a video of, like, here are the, the ways to die in the black, and here are the ways to die in a station. Um, or on foot. Uh, just exploring all the different ways that you can murder yourself. Um... So, you know, getting a couple shots per uh, type of death has been ideal, just to, you know, in case I like one version better, or want to make it more of a montage or whatever. What is that? Looks big. That's oh, just a finger roll. Okay. Nice. Okay. I like this one. Like, is there another uh, type? Because I remember the lava things didn't look like this, so I wonder, are these, like, new things on top of the old ones, or are they, um, you know, completely unique and, and, and whatnot in their self? And actually, now, now I think about it, why did I land back on my ship? Um, it says I'm wanted here. And I'm wondering, like, is it because, like, outside of my ship, it was like, oh, no, sorry, the ship committed the crime earlier. So if you die outside of your ship... Oh, what was that? It's weird popping. If you die out of your ship, does that uh, make a difference, right? Again with the blowing up of the people, uh, is it also system security? Yeah, system defense force. Can't catch a break with this local faction, they're just sending their people here, dying over and over. But let's see, now that we're out on feet, you can see like, you know, and interacting with um, exploration stuff, getting a FPS of between 70 and 80, which is phenomenal. It's great. Um, in stations, it will go down to, like, um, whatever. Um, Warning. Dangerously high temperature detected. They, this thing doesn't kill you here. <laughs> I just think it's so funny to see a base. What's up there? 
but that's just a different type of fool. It does look like there are, um, like, I, I don't know, I think this is a pretty cool uh, looking lava thing. But I do feel like it's different, because I remember there were ones in, like, the, um, the California Nebula that I remember that uh, looked like little, you know, they almost looked like a fumarole with a little bit of lava coming out of the top. We would have little campfires by them, right? Okay, I think a good angle will be, like, right there. Yeah, okay, lock that. Start work. Oh, wait, hold on. The unfortunate thing is I keep forgetting, like, I need to point myself at the direction I want to go, then go into camera mode, and then do all this razzmatazz and screw it up because you press the wrong button. So you have to do it all over again. Now you get to experience the pain of what um, elite filmmaking can be. And oh no, then the camera blacked out, and then you accidentally get to see a little bit of the weirdness that goes on under these planets before they you know, block you off. You can't see this. Let's get a foam roll in the background just for some niceness. Okay, lock it in, start rolling, and here we go. Oops. I have the high ground! <laughs> what the hell just flew off to the- Oh, those are just like like little uh, lava flames. Okay. See if you can run through it with your shield up. See, I, I should have tried that. But uh, too late, I'm dead now. <laughs> and uh, what's up? Uh, Pajtor, uh, or Andy Pipkin. Commander Andy Pipkin. How you doing tonight? Okay, so yeah, death in lava uh, happens surprisingly quickly. They don't really let you sit there and tank it. But thankfully enough, uh, the lava geezers are nice enough not to riddle me with fines. So, you know, if I wanted to go down there and get killed over and over and over and over and over again, I really could. But I think it's time to move on. I think uh, I do want to not stream for too, too long. Otherwise, um, we'll have uh, not much of the day left. And the next destination we're going to be going to, it's pretty far away. Uh, the destination is called Urt. And you can see it's in a rather interesting region of space. There's also um, this place here, which... Actually, why does it have a star on it? Because it's a planetary nebula or something? What the hell is this place called Star Titu... Titutu... Titutu Orionis C. I kind of want to check that out while we're here. But it is right here. Um in the Running Man Nebula slash Orion Nebula. It's all kind of jumbled together in this region of space, which is right by Bernard's Loop and the Horsehead Nebula, um, which is way out past uh, the Witchhead Nebula. So this is quite a jaunt. This is even a further journey than the California Nebula. So we've got quite a, a, a destination. 27 jumps. But that's no... No, uh, nothing for our little diamond back. We've gone further. We've been to Sagittarius A and back uh, twice. And lived to tell a tale. <coughs> what are you saying there, Pan Pipers? Uh, main problem you get is the card is fine, but the ram on it is bad, so you get long load times for organics appearing. Interesting. So you get kind of like a pop in of uh, like organics and stuff. I've not experienced that myself, um, but I do notice that the pop in. It's not really great in, in overall in this in this game. Like I find, uh, as you're walking along, the hills are morphing and uh, things are just coming into existence, and it does kind of uh, you know jiggle your immersion a little bit, right? But I guess it has to be done. Um, yeah, I go on a quick bio. You're you're what uh, bio? You're going on a quick. Oh, I thought you were bio break. Like I'm going on a quick bio. Oh, bio search. On your way back from the bubble. Missing mega ship of Guardian things not found yet. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, the, the the carrier did they just like disappear, or did they just jump all their loot and run away? Uh, I haven't really been paying attention to it because honestly, Gal Galanet. If they trade me in one thing, it's like Galanet has told me that none of this will be relevant. <laughs> they keep saying that all the stuff that's going to be in Galanet will be relevant, but. Mm. What about the NMLA fertilizer bombs? Like, where's that going? I don't know. I mean, I'm being a little cynical there. I'm more basing it on the past. Like, Galnet kind of got a little f fluffy. And then they shut it off, and now I'm just glad that there is something. Oh, there was something I wanted to try. Hold on. As we jump into hyperspace, uh, let me just line it up. 
I've heard that Galnet will do some funky things in hyperspace if you try to load it up. Oh my! Oh yes, it does. So you can actually see the kind of star in the background actually increasing in size and the lighting kind of changes. Like Galnet puts some, I guess, some weird uh, filter over uh, which space, which is kind of cool. But yeah, honestly, um, you know, I'm kind of torn where I really want to go out into the black and just go to a different region of space and start looking for life forms and discovering things and do an exploration trip, you know, scan a whole bunch of genetic samples and all that stuff and then come back and get that one big payout and uh, increase your codex and your, um, what's the rank called for peak people? Oh, exobiologist. But I also kind of don't want to leave the bubble because, you know, if something happens, there's a Thargoid development or some new feature, hey, this new station has been implemented, or hey, stations are actually falling. That's actually a thing, not just a bug that we tried to sensationalize in the news. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of scared to leave the bubble. So I've been doing some short jaunts, you know, uh, let's check out nearby planetary nebulas or nearby nebulas for that matter. Um, but I'm, I'm sort of afraid of that, you know, like, hey, let's go to Beagle Point and, you know, dedicate the path that my gameplay will be on for, like, the next two or three months, right? And then also probably want to take a two, three month break after I get back because, well, th those kind of trips can be painful, to psychologically painful. And see, we're already not even far out of the bub bubble and we are finding uh, planets that aren't even uh, mapped. I could get my name on... Yeah, you know what? Let's get our name on this planet right here. Uh, it's only 1,000 kilometers... Kilometer late... Kilometer late seconds? <laughs> what is KLS? Is that kilo... Kilo light seconds? I don't know. Um, out in Snake Area. Okay. Dark Nebula. Uh, the carrier vanished early, the Galnet uh, came later to explain her cover of the tracks. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, I don't know if Galnet is, like, reactionary or purposeful, right? It's just, you know, just look at the Gnosis. This is this is what happens when you try to make story happen in, in Frontier. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I agree with that. It, it sounds like Galnet and in, in all, that, all that sort of story stuff is really on a long track for console release. Like, I don't think... They're, like, there's probably going to be new SRVs in Odyssey, probably new ships, but will they come before console? Or are they kind of waiting until it's launched on all platform before unrolling some of the other new stuff that we highly suspect through some leaks um, uh, to be in there? It's a little bit, again, disappointing, but, you know, and this is where I, I kind of get their perspective where, okay, we don't want to necessarily give away um, story points, right? We want people to be surprised, and if we do it now it kind of leaves the console players in the dust, right? So I sympathize for that. But also, it's your fault for having a console. And you should be ashamed of yourself and buy a PC. <laughs> Shots fired! <laughs> it does feel, though, that like once the game started supporting consoles, it did affect um, overall development uh, speed, right? It's the reality of it is. But at the same time, it opens up to a new market, and there's tons, tons more players from those um, console guys. And yeah, hey, the more people that play Elite, the more likely that they are to want to be motivated to add more stuff so that we can, uh, so people buy arcs. <laughs> Death by notable stellar phenomena, lightning clouds, lightning clouds. See, yeah, that, that's what I'm hoping to find in Urt, as I'm really hoping that, because we've checked out a couple of the um, Lagrange clouds, but what I'm really hoping for is... Uh, um, uh, space lightning. So maybe, maybe we will find that in Urt, because Urt is a location where we will find uh, more Lagrange clouds. And then after that, we will go get ourselves eaten by a dredger. And then uh, after that, we can call it a night. I don't care about efficiency at this point. I like the idea of, of um, efficiency targets, and really I use that as a metric to know how many probes uh, ballpark I'm going to need to just launch at the planet anyway, but it's not a significant bonus. And there we go, we've mapped a planet. Now, uh, oh wait, I just realized the flaw in my plan. 
we're not going to be able to cash that in because we're going to be blowing ourselves up. Okay, well, change of plans. I'm going to just go land there and get football. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll get my name out here. Oh, yeah, mapping requires you to go back and actually hand it in. Uh, we will not be coming back from this journey, so... Where does that work? Uh, if Alexandria, full of guardian artifacts, gets lost in witch space, that means the Thargoids will have a ship with very hot cargo in their territory. But uh, what do you think the Thargoids would do with guardian tech? Because I, I suspect they would just blow it the hell up because they d don't like guardians. At least from what we can surmise based on their reaction um, when you put guardian tech in their facilities, right? They just go haywire. So I don't feel like the Thargoids would like hoard and then use guardian tech, but eh, maybe I'm wrong. Um... Galnet is planned progress. Community manager stressed that the story is real. Planned until 2022. See, so yeah, that's where I'm like, as a story maker myself, um, the one advice I can give is don't plan that far ahead. Because uh, if you lock yourself into a two-year story arc and then something happens, it becomes harder to pivot. That's why I found myself, I, I'm just finishing off my last story arc with my next episode. And um, there were many times where I was like, oh, I wish I could do an episode on this. I'll have to save it for after because uh, I have to do the next episode in this uh, vein, right? Or in this, like, storyline. And it became harder and harder to pivot. So even though it's nice for them to say that they have a two-year story arc, like, what if there's a major player event and that doesn't fit with their narrative? They can't, like, come up with it. I think what they need is, like, a good on-staff writer or, like, even, like, a dungeon master, you know? They need, like, a dungeon master or, like, a game master to, like figure out like you know let's create a narrative but also be able to respond to things or incorporate player stories into that narrative um, but anyway i'm just saying what i want not, not what the reality is um let's see Ort has anomaly light forms no light lighting though oh the nearest one of those are on 12 12k light years oh for for like space lightning oof oof yeah, so Ort then maybe has different anomaly types. Like, maybe we were looking at Q-type anomalies, and these are, like, P-types. Or something like that. I did a little bit of research for this stream, but probably could have done a lot more. Um, Shadow Man, you're saying, what would you guys think of an XCOM scenario? One where the major powers joins the Thargoids officially, like... Oh, you, so you mean more like XCOM 2. Um, well, first of all, I love the XCOM series. And I would love uh, if there were actually, like, an XCOM anti-alien outfit group in this. Um, I think, like, the Alliance is probably going to be partnered with the Thargoids, but I like the idea that there might be two factions of Thargoids, the Claxians and the Eurasians, and maybe, like, the Alliance are working with the friendly ones, and there's not friendly Thargoids, but maybe the Thargoids were some biological species that was created as a weapon, and, um, you know, half of them evolved and became sentient and whatever, versus the other half are just, you know, going out there eradicating life because they were meant to get rid of the Guardians, blah, 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 I don't know, right? But I like the idea of maybe, like, one of the factions, probably Alliance, um, being, uh, Xenosympathetic. I don't think that would make them evil, though. I don't think I would like that. That they would just be like, oh, those bastards. Like, I like the fact that it could be debatable, right? And complex. I think that's what Elite does well with its lore, is complex interconnecting, um, reasons. Like, nothing's ever just black or white in this game. Uh, except when it is. Um, the agreement eventually snowballs and the Thargs having de facto control. But I don't think the Thargoids care about control. I think they just want tasty meta allies to, to eat and occupy the skate pots for some reason. Um, I'm like, always see, you see the shiny things and you're like, what is that? It's, uh, it's, it's just a shiny. It literally is just a shiny. Uh, if Thargoids destroyed it, that is, or the humans claimed it to vanish and hide it, not to discount it. Ooh, that could be interesting. Not to discount it could be awoken, uh, the Guardians. Whoa. Whoa, Pan Piper, you've gotten into real tinfoil territory. I love it. If the Guardians woke up and were like, yeah, you took all of our artifacts. Give us back our urns. <laughs> if they came back from the dead. Yeah, I, I still think that there's so much they need to do with the Guardians. Right? So much more that um, should be in the game. Uh, talking about the Guardians. Because we've seen some cool Thargoid stuff. Definitely want to see stuff like motherships, but would love to see uh, Guardian ships. Even if they, at this point, it's not like the Guardians themselves are dead, but they're 
AI is still kicking around, right? Because they also hinted that, you know, there might be an AI antagonist in the game uh, early in the development. And that would um, suit pretty well what the Guardians are doing. Or what the Guardians did, because I believe they did have some sort of computer uh, technology. Like, their, their Guardian facilities are like, um, I guess, like a communications array in a sense, right? A galactic communication array. Or supercomputer or whatever. Stored in these weird pillars that you have to scan. Uh, with hot cargo, I mean, the Thargoids might not be able to destroy Guardian artifacts just to isolate it. Hmm. Which means you find a way uh, to hook up. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool if there was like a, a sort of like a Gnosis style event. I hate to bring the Gnosis up because uh, it is definitely a sore part, but the intention of that event was cool. No, all we're doing here is just getting this landing, getting out, getting a little first footfall, and moving on. Uh, but that'd be cool if like, yeah, let's say like the humans tried to hide it or something, or, or maybe, maybe, uh, and the captain of the ship uh, got an offer from some dodgy faction. Uh, you know, bring all these urns to this location and we'll pay you top dollar for them. Or, but maybe that even went wrong and, you know, now they're under siege by Thargoids or something. Commanders have to go there, fight it off, pull open the escape hatches, and get Guardian artifacts and stuff like that. Um, you know, an event like that uh, would be super awesome. And again, it's sort of like, that's where I'm like, you know... Uh, for all that I love about this game, there's so much, so much potential um, in terms of just, like, they could be doing so much more. So much more. And it all starts with the story, right? Oh, you're talking Trojan Horse style. Ooh. That's, uh, strategy and tactics. It's the old, uh, wooden... Well, we could build a wooden badger. I'm just thinking of that scene in Monty Python where it's like they go build the giant wooden rabbit or something and then they roll it there and then they all run away it's like okay what happens next well then we jump out of the rabbit and kill them all so we jump out of the well we could build a wooden badger <laughs> uh, that's one of my favorite movies of all time all right so we'll continue jumping out to work here only 24 jumps to go no big deal and yeah so you get a system like this where there's so many um yeah, planets like there could be notable stellar phenomena in here and they're very easy to miss because they don't show up on you know system maps right like my preferred way is like i go in here and look at like look for interesting features right do you remember when uh they first implemented like the new exploration tech and you would go to the system map and if the planet wasn't like seen it would be like just a black circle how annoying that was and i'm so glad they rolled that back like super quick with uh Essentially, community outrage. But, um, yeah, I was not, not a fan of that. Uh, what do you say, to close so? Uh, it feels like it's just really hard for them to add the bespoke stuff into the procedural galaxy. Maybe it should make some pocket universes that are not procedural. But I guess they kind of do, because, like, um, they have, like, handcrafted systems like, 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 uh, Soul. The Soul system is handcrafted, and they've manually inserted it so there are like a mix between handcrafted and uh procedural um though obviously i don't have the developmental expertise to know oh it's so tempting i want first before on everything but you know what no we... otherwise i'm gonna be streaming too late and i'll get hungry and then when i get hungry you're gonna hear it you're gonna hear my tummy rumbling you don't want to hear that it's not a good sound um but yeah, I mean, I would like to see more, uh, like, handcrafted story. Like, you know, once a month, have some handcrafted story inserted that the community can rally around, right? Like, even the community goals, which are essentially, you know, manually run, like, they, they you know, write them up each time, they're starting to feel very same, right? It's just, oh, okay, slightly different text flavor, but it's essentially the same thing over and over. And I get it. There are limitations to what tools they have to work with, which is probably the likely reason why you why you see that, but I don't know. To me, it's like uh, um, even a little creativity and it doesn't work. I'd be excited to see them trying new stuff. It seems like after the Gnosis, they were just like, never again. We will, or no, technically not. After the Gnosis, they're like, we'll try it again, but we'll do it better and we'll call it Interstellar Initiatives and we'll do two of them and then completely forget that we ever did that. And it'll go nowhere. 
<laughs> is the music too high now? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I turned it up because uh, we had uh, a request on living in the 80s, but I'll nudge it back down. Again, it's sort of hard to find the sweet spot. And um, a lot of the, the music you are hearing is from Tokosa himself, Mr. Tom Cook. And um, was crafted over, uh, you know, various different eras, right? Like, um, I've got uh, just... Th this, this guy can pump out a tune like no one's business, right? That was also a very chunky solar flare. Um, just amazing, amazing music and, and tons of it. Um, he's done a whole Elite album, and then aside from that album... Uh, he's got a whole ton of Elite Dangerous uh, themed songs or inspired songs. Uh, might have heard the big, uh, big one. I think most people have heard is like "Let's Jump Together." Uh, but you know, I could literally just go through a list of my favorite Tom Cook songs, and that would take up like an entire two-hour stream, right? Um, but obviously, the, the the music that we're listening to is just literally a playlist of uh, me throwing together all the music that he's kindly given to me for um, episodes. Um, and so obviously some of them might have different mix levels and so you know so when I'm editing them sometimes I have to put them a little bit lower depending on what era right so obviously when you're streaming uh, the volume might go up and down a little bit but it's uh, usually okay um, you know if you guys let me know if it's uh, too loud too soft just right and I will uh, adjust as needed but sometimes uh, music being too loud it's not necessarily a bad thing don't mind blasting it every once in a while. You can see, you know, we're not far to the bubble. And, you know, if you wanted to get your name on some planets, there's a few in this system that, you know, some of these other commanders didn't bother to map, right? There still is space graffiti opportunities out there. Uh, would have been so great to see a station crash site. Why was that a bug? Uh, like, and by the way, hey, JP Strider, how are you doing? Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm kind of like... See, here's the thing where it's like, it's dangerous, right? Where it's like, they, the, the station was falling. My first assumption was, oh, this is a bug. It's probably because you're <coughs> sort of instancing in the gravity well of the rescue ship instead of the station. That's why the station looks like it's visually falling away from you, but it's not changing in its orbit, right? Cool, that's an explanation. Would have been cool, still neat, but, um, you know, not what it was. But then they go and put it in Gala and say, yeah, the station was falling. It's totally, yeah, that was totally falling. And now you think, well, okay, was this then a feature? Is this like a new thing? Are we going to be able to have stations crash into planets and then visit them on foot? Because that would be dope. Oh my God, if an Arbus station fell out of ground and you've got like this giant two scale station that you can walk around, how cool would that be, right? And by them making that Gala article, it kind of implied, it sort of implied that that might be the case, or at least it did to me. And that's where I was kind of like, you know, they're, they're, it's kind of cool that they went and took that thing that happened and people were talking about in the community and put it in the game somehow. But it also sort of implies that it was part of their plan. And I don't think it really is, right? Or at least when it comes to Frontier, my stock reaction is, okay, what are my expectations? Lower them. Lo lower them again. And one more time. And that way I'm never truly disappointed because um, I just think they're going to fuck up everything. <laughs> And then they don't fuck up everything, and I go, oh, okay, yay. But that is the that is um, that is key for enjoying the longevity of this game is just you know, don't have expectations, go with the flow. And that uh, Bernard's loop is starting to get closer and closer. These solar flares are looking much chunkier. I don't know if I like them. I think they looked better before. They kind of look like McArches. I feel like I want to order a, a quarter pounder from that star. Um. And sorry, I'm missing the comments here. So, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba, JP Strider saying, Oh, you're happy on console? I'll be sad to see Mount Neverest go. We were there at the beginning of the stream, and yeah, it doesn't. I don't know if that was actually Mount Neverest, but um, it definitely wasn't as high or impressive as it was in, in Horizons. And I do hope that they're still revisiting that. Um, and then Tukoso, you're saying they put all those ground bases on the way to Polonia. We could have done them as CGs for ages. Yeah, I mean, like, like that's what I'm saying. Like, a CG of, like, you know, bring stuff to this place and we'll create a station here. That's cool, because then you're like, yeah. Like, when, whenever you land at that station, you're like, yeah, I participated in the building of this station. And that's what I mean. More like, rather than like, oh, we got to bring... Uh, two factions are fighting over grain, and they need uh, beer for democracy. And, 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 you know, like, six months later, you don't, you don't remember that stuff, right? But 
if it's a new station or like we built this mega ship and then we send it out and then oh yeah this mega ship that you built a month ago if you participate in that cg it's broken it needs help it's stranded or it's under attack by thargoids or something other than the sort of oh the empire and federation might be going to war again or this could just be one community goal battle that will never be spoken of ever again um, and J.P. Strider adores rare brew trading. I also do that. And, and you know what? Um, uh, Ascorbius, Commander Ascorbius has a wonderful music video for uh, rare brew trading, as well as another one called Fly for the Empire, which you get a chance if you don't know Ascorbius. How did you find me? Where have you been all your life? Uh, he put out a new video recently as well. It's awesome. Go check that out uh, after the stream. Well, or during the stream. Or whatever, I don't care. Just go check it out. Um, but also check out his Tokoso music videos. I've done a couple Tokoso music videos, obviously like Live in the 80s and um, Don't You Fall Like the Berlin Wall. Uh, what was the other one? Um, the Rusky, Rusky Boy. Um, uh, but then uh, also did one for My Asp X and for John Jameson, which is, I freaking love that song. Um, Ghost Giraffe has done uh, Tokoso music videos. Who else? Uh, Tom, who else has done music videos for you because I, I keep finding them floating around like different content creators do uh, to go some music videos and it's awesome uh, there's a lot out there to find and enjoy and um, you know I think this game was like built for epic music videos and um, all of them are awesome in their own ways oh look at that cute little thing ooh I kind of want to but you know it's so close it's not like that's going to be too hot I'm not even going to bother let me just see there oh hold on. fine 70 yeah no it's not that's gonna be too hot that's too close to the star uh it wasn't a bug it was a feature that was released early yeah and that's what i'm saying like that little thing is like you're basically saying that stations will crash at some point in odyssey so you might as well say that oh um we put the blackout camera so the the, the mamba cockpit having a little uh, area in the back that only VR players can see. Yeah, that's part of a feature that was released early called ship interiors, but like, we'll get to it, okay? Like, you're so tight with the roadmap and then you let stuff like that slip and it's like, that. don't give me hope. Stop giving me hope. Because then I have to manually lower my expectations. Her. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, you were getting visions of the Crash Death Star in episode nine. Yes, JP Strider, although um, not that. Episode nine, no. Under no circumstances will I ever enjoy anything, anything about that. <laughs> oh, hold on. Hello, little black hole. What are you doing here? Oh, that's too far. I'm not going to visit you. Screw that. Okay, let me just... Uh, heat sink so I don't die. I do need some fuel. What do we got? 14 more jumps. We're making excellent time. Uh, and let me see here, like, you know, these comments, uh, GP Strider saying, I'm trying to curb my enthusiasm with Elite, but after playing for four years, I feel really gosh darn invested. Oh, same here, bro. It's, um, that's, that's you know, I'm, I've never played a game this long. Uh, I mean, sure I have, but a lot of it's like, go and come back, go and come back. But to play a single universe consistently like this, you know, I, I feel uh, that, you know, the real shareholders are us, the long-term fans, right? And, yeah, expectations are... Um, literally probably the most dangerous thing in the galaxy right but you don't have a rank for uh what's your rank and expectations mine is it, certainly uh mostly harmless <laughs> uh and then Tukoso saying uh, we have the awesome thargoid structures in the planets and they've just sat there for four years and no i agree it's like okay you put them in there they're super cool to explore Love the, the little sort of map puzzle. That was a clever idea, but then what now? What next? What are they doing? What can you do with them? What can you do at them? Nothing. Other than the one thing, right? Uh, and JP Strider, for me, the best storylines in ED have always been the player made stuff. Distant Worlds 2, Dove Enigma, Operation Ida, and then, yes, Salome. Absolutely. And, uh, and Elite Dangus, hello. Greatest series of all. It's way better. Uh, is it like, uh, a couple well okay okay maybe if like if like elite dangerous on crack it would be maybe more, more appropriate to say of like elite dangerous but no it's just like like most of the uh, the, the uh, yule tube 
We got Obsidian Amp, we got Yamex, we got Ghost Draft, we got Oxy, Turgeon, Ascorbius, um, Shabuka. Like, we, we, we had all the content creators that you can think of collaborating on this giant Christmas special. Frontier put it in one email newsletter, and that's about it, right? But it was like a 12 episode um, Christmas special, and more story in that 12 episode run. Um, well, I mean, there, there's a lot of Galen articles, but. Um, more cool story. Better story. I, I'm not biased. Because I'm in it. <laughs> and then Vex, you need to have your daily fix of Let's Jump Together. I think it is a great um, uh, exploration. Uh, if, you're, if you're doing a mass jump, like a Distant Worlds 2, like, you know, there's a bunch of people mass jumping. Ooh. This system's quite populous. It's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of big... Hot, steamy gas for one place uh, but oh shoot okay. I will have to use a heat sink or I will burn to death um, love your background music you use in your story uh, videos well uh, that is also Toko so uh, pretty much like yeah like I used to use the YouTube audio library and then when Tom sent me a bunch of his tracks it's I pretty much exclusively switched over, although uh, the Deep Space Dengus series, I made a conscious effort to use Miguel Johnson's tunes for that particular series. He had done an album called The Explorers, and that was more of an exploration um, kind of focused miniseries. So I thought it'd be cool to switch things up and work with Miguel's tunes, um, and also a fantastic series and kind of gave it a different vibe. Although still some Stokoso snuck into that one. Uh, can't steal it. Um, but yeah, most of my stuff is mostly, 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 mostly Tokoso. Oh, you've got a playlist of that. Yeah, no, it's, that's, um, yeah, there's got to be a lot of different creators. I wonder if there's music videos out there you don't know of, of just people that liked, the, liked and found the tunes and did it. Uh, episode 9, bad, but concept of washing, crash, Death Star, Hulk, Hulk, great. Yes, no, I agree on that. I definitely agree on that. Uh, yeah, man, that nebula's looking closer. Look at that other... Hopefully little star over there. How's this system? Oh, just a little trinary. No big deal. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, did I go backwards? No, it is just another star. I do love binaries. They are quite... Um, well, sometimes they're very scary, depending on what angle you come into the system. Uh, where was I? Uh, the only expectations, JP Strider, that you have for Odyssey is that you can walk around and put a bunch of people in the back of your T9 and dismiss it. Jump and do a geyser and hit people going up with a fire. I know, and that's what I'm saying. I, there's a whole new dimension to the game. It may not look like, okay, like, like, I don't know what would be required to take Horizons to Odyssey. And if that's like three years of development, 100 people, I, I don't know any of that crap. All I do is for me, a whole new dimension of the game has opened up. New ways to get yourself in trouble, new ways to do um, different things, and I'm, I'm very happy with where we're going. And Dancer, yes, the Xmas collaboration, it was amazing. Um, really, Tur I would say Turgeon Starstone um, was the impetus behind that, or sort of the driving heart of that story. Um, I was very uh, pleased and delighted that the uh, uh, spatula attended, actually, would probably be considered. Um, one of the, you know, between Turgeon and, and Spatula, I would say, would be the, like, the main characters of that story. I, of course, uh, had to find, uh, was put on the case by Gwydion and Starstone by a Turgeon to go out and, and save Christmas by um, resurrecting uh, Santa Claus as a chocolate monster, uh, voiced by Obsidian Ant himself. Um, and uh, I did, I actually was the, he was, I think, the first episode, I was the second episode, and the eighth episode, like I had two uh, parts uh, to my story, and then uh, was also in the, in the finale as well, right? So like I was all over that series. I was like, mm, this is the, uh, pretty, pretty um, spatularific, pretty dangus. But I loved the plot and how it all came together, and uh, working with the other creators on it. And I, I, we wanted to do another one, but it's just the, those things are very hard to organize, right? Very, uh, a lot of moving parts. Um, even the finale, we had planned for that to launch on uh, essentially Christmas Eve. Um, so, you know, it was kind of like the 12 days of Christmas while the last one launched uh, right before. And it wasn't even finished editing until 
the nth hour. Like, and Turgeon was uh, the one cutting the last piece together. We got him all the assets in the last minute, and he was sick. And, like, struggling to even stay awake. Yeah, Turgeon from the broadcast. He was struggling to, like, like you know, stay awake and manage to just kind of get it all done in the nth hour. Um, but it was a real, um, you know, it was a hard experience. Like, we started, uh, I think, with the filming of that, like, in the planning of it, like, in September. So that was, like, three, um, three, three or so months um, to get that all uh, done. Um, let's see, where was I? Uh, oh yeah, the Elite Extended Universe featuring influential commanders. Yeah, exa exactly. We were doing like the, the ECU, the Elite uh, Cinematic Universe. Um, and, you know, as much as possible, I try, like, you know, obviously in my last uh, series arc, um, Spatula, while he's in disguise as Duke Remington Dukakis, gets to meet El Scorbius uh, for the first time. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, there was the Lost in Colony episode where, uh, that features Turgeon, Machine, and, uh, Scorbius in the same episode. Um, oh, God, I double mapping. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were all heading off on the Enigma expedition all together. But, you know, when we are working together, we're trying to respect each other's continuities and stuff and sort of play into it like it is a cinematic universe. Um, which I love that kind of stuff, right? That's, that's super cool. It is a turban, yeah. Um, and then the rivalry with with Bill Turner, yeah, and and, and uh, uh, Ship, who plays Bill Turner, amazing uh, voice actor. He's just a hilarious dude in general, but just um, has a great voice, but then also a great voice actor. Uh, and plays both Bill Turner and um, the other Bill Turner, and um, of course, um, uh, Bill Turner will in the next episode um, of Elite Dangus and probably a, you know, a recurring character at, at, at times when he's um, going to be appropriate to be featured we set more jumps uh, da, 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 da. Uh, the chocolate melting Santa oh yeah and then Santa Sandy the, uh, the Sandy Angel part I thought that was great too yeah, that was me doing the voice for Sandy I did actually uh, Twitter at uh, Sandy like a DM uh, to try and get him to voice his own character, but pretty long shot. This is, of course, when Sandy was the head developer for the game. You know, I can imagine why he would uh, maybe be allowed to or, or be able to do that, but it would have been awesome if he would would have done it. Uh, so I had to just give him one of my own stupid voices. Um, the original broadcast guys in my first regular YouTube streams. Yeah, honestly, um, back in the day... Um, it was kind of like when I found the broadcast, I was like, oh, this is like the thing, right? And it kind of, you know, like Scorb has done, I think, a good job at, um, you know, he did a lot of guest streams back in the day. Um, I wish the old broadcast was back with Turgeon, Shibuka, Grey Test, and, and, and Josh. I thought that was a great mix, and those days were legendary, right? But, um, you know, there's still some great streamers that you can check out, like yours truly, or um, Commander Scorbis. He still streams at the same time. Or broadcast. That looks weird. It's almost like a planet's enveloped in a little atmosphere there. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, yeah, Sunday afternoons. Yep, yeah, it's Sunday at Sunday at three. Check out the broadcast. Uh, I was a guest on the broadcast once in the entirety of it, and that was a cool special special treat for me. I felt like I was, it, you know, it's like the broadcast to me was like the place, right? So it's like, oh wow, I'm actually gonna be on the broadcast. Oh my god. Uh, and then Commander Evolution. Hey, how you doing, man? Uh, so you've been quiet. You've been listening in the background while working on a spreadsheet. Ooh, sounds like a fun Saturday afternoon. Uh, with you mentioning about the broadcast. Whatever happened to Josh Hawkins? Um, well, uh, from what I understand is he had a little space baby. Uh, he had, he had, um, he had a child. And so that, uh, obviously that kind of took priority over Elite Dangerous Podcast. Um, which I can understand. I mean, to be honest, I, I think he's got his priorities way out of whack. Elite should always be number one, then children. Um, or wait, no. Elite, and then acquiring ice cream sandwiches, and then children. Ice cream sandwiches, very important. But hey, you know, different people get to set their own priorities however they would. That's how I would do it, but um, this is also why I don't have children. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure one day Josh will probably come back. I'm, I'm seeing more activity from Shibuka. I will say if you watch Scorbius' latest video, you might have a little nostalgia by one of the voice actors in there that's all i'm going to say about it but uh 
other than that uh, there's a fantastic performance by by a, a former uh, broadcaster um, and you know I think with Odyssey here it, it might attract some of the old players back there's a lot of like old elite creators that I would like to see come back Isonona is one a uh, guy would do these like crazy flight assist off videos um, I haven't seen him in a long time but uh, you know um, does anyone know what happened with him? Did he just stop playing? Well, I think, you know, again, when you have a kid, your life kind of changes a little bit, right? Like, you, you, video games kind of go down on the list. <laughs> so, I mean, I haven't, I haven't, um, you know, spoke to him about it. I don't really know Josh, even though he's, he's another, uh, Space Canadian, uh, although I think he's in, like, the French area. Um, but, you know, Josh is a great guy, very entertaining, great voice, uh, did love watching the old broadcast. And hey, maybe he'll be back. I mean, um, Shibuka also, I think, also had a kid and kind of drifted towards racing games, but he might be looking at Elite a little bit more, right? So maybe one day we'll, we'll see a Brocast Revival uh, reunion, because definitely I would love to see uh, the old gang get back together. Uh, I also, too, like that was like my Sunday ritual. is like, okay, what am I doing at Sunday 3 p.m.? Well, I'll throw on the Brocast and figure out something else, you know? But yeah, I can understand if you've got a kid, and um, you know, especially if it's a, a new one that's coming to the world, uh, that's got to be that's got to be part of your your strategy, right? As much as as much as I love space and, and this universe, you know, it's not. I was about to say it's not real, but no, I don't want to. I don't want to break your immersion. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Congrats to him for having having a. He was having health problems. I never heard that, other than, you know, uh, unless you consider a child a health problem. It can probably be a problem for your mental health, if because uh, they can be a lot of um, uh, problems, you know? Kids kids run around and pick up scissors, and you're constantly worried, I guess, as a parent. But no, I think it's, you know, I think it's uh, real life sometimes takes precedent over, over video games. We always have to appreciate the, era, appreciate the eras and the people we have content creators that are creating on youtube right now they you know maybe one day obsidian ant will get bored and start uh, saying well screw elite i'm going to just do microsoft flight simulator and we'll all uh you know remember the days of obsidian ant but i uh, appreciate it while, while they're there you know life at the end of the day takes priority and here we are in the running man sector i don't know if anyone has seen that schwarzenegger movie or read the uh quote unquote richard bachman book Barry Benson. Look at this view. Like we've gotten, we've come uh, uh, quite a far away, and this is quite a lovely nebula to look at, or nebulas really, because kind of it's a sort of a package. It's a bundle. Um. No, get out of this mode. Uh. So I'm like struggling to like read the chat because you know I'm illiterate, right? Um. Love Shibuka, the space where you made years ago. Yes, that was a great um, short. Shibuka is a very talented filmmaker. He just didn't produce as much content as I would have liked to see. I want him to just do more, do more. Come back, Shibuka. I want to see more of Shibuka's this. Um, Galactic Canuck, yeah. Uh, made brutal analysis of stats. He was pissed at Frontier. I asked if he'd ever come back, and he said he was saying he wouldn't, which is a shame. Yeah. I mean, that's where I'm like, it's a company, why would you like them or hate them, right? Like, by default, any company I hate, right? Um, every company is an evil, blood-sucking entity that only has one thing in mind, which is making money. And, you know, then there are people that work at companies that are that are wonderful people and might have cool ideas and whatever, right? And it's like, um, you know, you gotta kind of separate the two. But I've never, like, for or against a company. A company is just an entity. It's a hollow, lifeless shell that, you know, uses people to produce what it needs to make money it's the people in the product that um i tend to like and here we are just one jump away from Urt. we've made it um uh you remember him and obsidian did a stream where horizon launched looking for high grade emissions and they were both disgusted at the new grind yeah every time we get a new update there's always new grind and it's never great uh, special, have you seen videos by a guy named Joel Haver who uses editing software? Okay, so I, first of all, I only discovered Joel Haver recently when the algorithm just suddenly uptrended him. 
freaking love him. He, I, I, I'm in love with this man. Uh, I want to uh, watch all of his video babies. Uh, his comedy is golden. His animation stuff, super cool. But overall, I think like like his sense of humor is just hilarious. Um, yeah, Joel Haver is so hot right now. Oh, what's up, that 90s kid? How you doing, man? Let's see you around for a bit. Oh, here we go. Notable stellar phenomena. Phenomena. Do, 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 do. Let's see here. Yeah, uh, so this is not a huge system. Well, let me just slow down for a sec. Lots of little planetary bodies. Ooh, we got a we got a fleet carrier. So maybe, maybe, just maybe, I won't um, be exiled back to the bubble. Maybe I should just actually dock with this little boy here, and then come back and check out the stellar phenomena because it's not that far away. And if it will save me uh, a 24 jump trip back here if I make a mistake, then hey, hey. But yeah, Joel Haver can't uh, scream about how great I love him. I uh, love specifically the sci-fi ones. There's one like where, where the guy's just like, hold, hold. And that kind of gets continued. The Galactic Emperor or whatever. Oh my god. Um, if you haven't seen Joel Haver, go check him out. You will binge. You will binge! Cornelius Brittilis. I remember that name. I, mean, I feel like it's a... I feel like, I feel like there's like a quote here where it's like, I have not heard that name in a long time. Alright, so we're just going to dock with uh, this kind fleet carrier. Hopefully it's not like friends only docking. And this one, this guy has gone to Lennox. He's bought um, a ship kit for his fleet carrier to make it look like... Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, it looks like a hot mess to be honest. A hot mess of different parts. A Frankenstein ship. Uh, let me see here. What about Ben and Jerry's? Are they evil? What? Are they ice cream barons? I mean, naturally. I mean, I don't know Ben and Jerry personally, but, um, and I'll eat their ice cream, but. Oh, God damn it! okay. This is the trick, uh, this is the quickest way to, to... nope, okay. Try not to explain things to people because you don't know what you're doing. Okay, just, just, just settle down. There. Perfect landing, oh, my landing gear, oh my God. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. <laughs> what if there was Ben and Jerry's weed? So first of all, let's just see what this guy has on his carrier. He's out here in the middle of nowhere. But yeah, oh my god, does he have a shipyard? Could I purchase a ship? No. But I could um, request him my ship. And see, I, I have way too many ships. I need to go through and do a calling on my fleet. Um, holy shit, you know what? Thank you, Fleet Carrier, because now I'm going to get that map credit because you have Universal Cartographic, so I'll help you out by selling to you. And, wait, where's my first discovered? Oh, for crying out loud. And then Tritium Depot. Donate Tritium. I don't have Tritium. This is cool. Not... Suck. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, weed, smoking weed, uh, smoking edibles, whatever you want to do. Smoke a brownie. Um, just you know, peace and love. Man. Just don't, just don't smoke. Um, just don't s smoke my ass. But, okay. All right. Uh, notable stellar phenomena one. Let's see what you got to offer. This is a great backdrop out here with, um, you know, Bernard's Loop just looming. And it'll be interesting if we maybe get, like, a different colored, um, you know, LaGrange cloud. Maybe there's, like, a green, and we'll have, like, a nice combination with green and red. It'll be very Christmassy. Ingest weed every day. <laughs> Eat weed every day. <laughs> Eat weed every day. I would like weed-flavored ice cream, though. I think I would enjoy that. Um, I've had the weed lollipops, which are all right. Um, the weed gummy gummies or whatever, which are fine. Uh, cookies and brownies. And then there was one time, this was when uh, I worked at, a, at like a theater as an usher, which is a dope job. Doesn't pay well, but it's fun. 
Um, slacker job. Um, and between like uh, the matinee and the evening, we went to a park uh, and ate this weed cake. And uh, we asked the guy who made it, like, how much you put in here? And he's like, my whole stash. I was <laughs> like, what? <laughs> And we didn't realize until half an hour later we tried to stand up and we were like, oh no, <laughs> we have to go back to work. And uh, yeah, like there were like six or seven of us that went back to work um, absolutely stoned out of our gourds. And this was even before legalization and all that stuff. So extra paranoia. Uh, but uh, yeah, with the edibles, uh, the dosage really, really uh, determines whether A, you have a uh, fun experience, be um, out of your mind, or see, just like go to sleep. <laughs> I find more often than not with the edibles, I just like curl up and go for a nap. Whoa, it is bright! Whoa, okay, we got a very orange uh, Lagrange cloud on top of the very bright Bernard's Lou. This looks like space is on fire. This actually looks super dope. I love this. Oh my god. Inhale weed every day. <laughs> See that one word? Either ingest, inhale. So eat weed every day. You can infuse oil and butter with THC and make anything with it. That is true. I thought about making, like, you know, a salmon mousse with weed. <laughs> that would be fun, though. Oh, hold on, hold on. I was gonna say, let's go scan those spiky boys, but what is that? We have um, uh, space poops. They look like little. Um, it looks almost like um, if you ever had like a hamster or something like that, and you let it out of the cage, and you'd find that stuff just like. Look. Oh man, this looks so cool though. This I feel like I'm in No Man's Sky right now, like the color scheme, right? Now, I did see one video which freaked me out. I just want to see. Are these? Um, is this gonna trigger Codex Discovery? Rubium metallic now. Boring old rubium spiky boys. Get out of here. But I want to see this space poop up close. So like, what would form these um, strange structures? How would these come to be? You know, is it gravity? And like, why wouldn't gravity pull everything in this cloud into one big clump? Like, shouldn't everything just be all together? Solid mineral spheres. what I say. It's like, yeah, I was just in the washroom dropping off some solid mineral spears. Spears. <laughs> I mean, they're bigger than they look. I wish I could land on them and get out with my space legs. But they do look like little poop nuggets. I wonder, can I land on you? Will somehow some glitch allow me to do this? No, absolutely not. But it is cool to see just, like, some variety in um, your space f flora and fauna. You know, you've got your spiky boys of all different colors, and then your space poops and your space anomalies. I wonder if there are any actual anomalies in this location. But they're just basically baby asteroids, you know? Now, they are kind of... It does look like they are pooping a little bit. They've got some, like, dust around them. It looks like, um... What's his name from Charlie Brown? Pigpen? But, um, you know, again, it's, I, I think it's super cool to just run across these things and speculate to their existence. Very cool. Now, I'm wondering, should I blow myself up on these guys, or should I get, because I, oh, because I really love the, um, the background of this, like, just that beautiful, crisp orange. It's so pleasant to look at. And are these guys, like, the same each time, like, the same model, or do they have, like, different numbers of modules? They kind of look the same-y. Uh, are there any? Because, yeah, I, I do know that space anomalies will hang out in Lagrange clouds, but sometimes, they, like, they, they don't... Sometimes they can be hidden in the fog, let's just say. <clears throat> I saw a really cool video where there was, like, a black Lagrange crowd, and this guy, like, just looks like he's, like, going into the abyss, and then just suddenly these anomalies are there. Super cool. Um, aren't those the, th the nibbler poops from Futurama? Uh, you thought Lagrange clouds were a gravitational focal point. Well, yeah, like a Lagrange cloud would be like, so like, uh, there are Lagrange points around Earth orbit where, like, you could park a satellite 
and it's just going to have like a stable orbit because there's kind of like a gravity well or whatever or like a I guess like a sort of a sweet spot right so I'm assuming like these Lagrange clouds are where like between two different gravitational objects there's sort of um you know a calm bit where they're not going to roll into the planet but you would still think that within the Lagrange cloud itself objects might come and chunk together I do love when you're in the Lagrange cloud looking back at the um star and getting that kind of like cool you know sort of fog effect right um we have a few space telescopes at lagrange points on the earth and the sun yeah that's right because the, the earth and the sun both have different lagrange points well nasa do yeah like we don't it's in like you're, you're like yeah my family my family has a couple telescopes up at lagrange point no big deal we go there every couple summers you know, it's nice when the weather's good. Head out to the Space Telescope, take a look at the stars, go to Mars, say hi to Elon. Then we head back. No big deal. Yeah, but you will find uh, sometimes there are space anomalies, you know, hidden in these clouds. And sometimes you go deep in these clouds. And I wonder if that um, video I saw of the black Lagrange cloud was... Um, like a glitch? Like it could have been a lighting system glitch, or if that was legit, but... I hope that that exists out there somewhere, and and try to look up the video. I would just keyword like black Lagrange space anomaly thing. I don't know, but um, it looks super freaky, super freaky. Okay, I want to check out the other site just in case because I don't know for sure that I'm going to. If I blow myself up, am I going to uh, remain in this system on that flu carrier or not? Um, the bio things of a couple different variants. Yeah, I guess like 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 maybe there's one variant here, and maybe the other one you'll see like the same circles but with a different pattern. That's possible. And yeah, this is Horizons content. This is not new to Odyssey. It's been here for a while, but you'd be surprised. A lot of people never visit these things. Uh, never get out of the, the bubble. Uh, this Lagrange point appears to be a gravitational fecal point. <laughs> well, it is. It, well, if you think about it, the Lagrange points are essentially the pool filters of, of gravitational wells, right? <laughs> it's it's where all the crap sort of gets scooped up and then just, you know, gets stuck, right? Somebody's got to clean up every once in a while. Uh, need to aim for the radar contacts. They only appear uh, less than 500 meters. Oh, really? Okay. And yes, the Black Lagrange crowd was a bug. Oh, no, that sucks. I mean, what, scientifically speaking, could there be a black cloud? I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't discount it, but... Definitely that, that one is probably one of the coolest Lagrange clouds that I've seen. I love the, uh, the coloring on that one. But, uh, let's see if this one's any different. Maybe this one's blue, maybe it's red, maybe it's purple, maybe taupe? Like a taupe adder? No, 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 not a taupe adder. We don't want those. Or like a blue cobra? Alright, almost in here. Anticipation, though. I love that, like, just like, you can't see anything. Um, like, you'd expect to see, like, a little faint cloud or a color, right? But you don't see anything until you jump in. Ooh, we got sexy red. Interesting. This one's pretty dark, actually. Where is, um... I think behind us is where the, uh, cloud is. So, okay, maybe the black one was a glitch, but this one looks pretty dark. Yeah, I'm kind of spookified. You can see the... Along with the space lines going past, you can see, like, little fog, right? Which, this is super cool. Uh, let me just scan one of you guys. So what are you saying there? Use the, the radar points. So maybe those radar points are the space anomalies? Um, like these boys? Or are they all like combinations? Of, yeah, this is super dark! Okay, yeah, if that black one was a glitch, then it was probably something similar to this one, because I'm like, I am... I am a little bit scared that I might find an accidental death here. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting bright. We're getting bright. Okay, there's like dark spots in them, where I guess the, the clouds get really thick. What's that? It looks like there's something out there. Uh, maybe that's just a glitch. Whoa, it's going purple! What's going on? 
We got a color change in Lagrange. Color change Lagrange. Color change the Dange. What is going on? This is really super cool, actually. Black Cloud exists. You've been to one. Ooh, ooh. Intriguing. So we got two different uh, philosophies here. I'm sure they probably exist. Like, is this just a graphical glitch that I'm seeing here? What is it? Because I feel like I'm leaving the cloud at this point. Yeah, I gotta turn around. Uh, Colsack Nemo. Oh, well, that's not too far. Oh, wow. Is that just the star that I'm seeing through this uh, nebula? Because that looks super cool. Just like flying into the oblivion, right? The little uh, jumping jacks scattered around. But we are looking for a P-type anomaly, I believe, is at this location. Uh, and these anomalies, I believe, do hide in the very hearts of the clouds. They're a little bit shy, so you have to kind of search around. But man! Hold on, I gotta get a screenshot. Like, as much as this is about blowing myself up, I also want to get pretty screenshots. Think right about there. Just take another angle. You're a tiger, you're a tiger, you're a, you're a leopard. That's so cool. So I love this game. It's like, when was the last time a first person shooter you stopped and just like looked at a location like this, right? Where you were just wowed by being at a place. Uh, so every cloud is one of seven colors, but has multiple layers, so each is a unique blend of three colors and bright dark variants. Cool, I did not know that. All right, you can kind of see like it's getting dark over here. So let's go into the dark, and oh my god, okay. Get vision on, just so we don't run into a spiky boy. Like see, you wouldn't even see that one over there. What is this? <laughs> I'm so nervous right now. Am I going out of the cloud or am I going into a darker part of the cloud? Like, I don't even know. Like, oh my god. There's no stars! Where do the stars go? Oh my god. Um, help me! Now imagine having a space battle here. Why don't they do a PvP tournament here? Because this would be like Rathacon territory, right? Because I, I still can't see the stars. Okay, wait, hold on, I see stars, I see stars. Okay, we're coming out the other side. Oh my god. How cool is this? Oh my god, look at that view. See, like, you know, uh, uh, played the game for so long and done so much in it, and there's still um, little fun things that you can do that will surprise you, right? Though I'm kind of easily amused to a certain degree, right? Just like, show me pretty colors and uh, cool sounds, and I'm happy. But yeah, we are on the hunt for space anomalies. Now we've entered the pink zone. We're in the pink zone. Lagrange CQC. See, yeah, just put a CQC level in a in a in a cloud like this, please. Why you no do this? How cool would that be? And that can't be that hard. Like, put you know a bunch of spiky boys. Maybe put some asteroids in there to give, um, I guess, like some cover. So I don't know. Um, for the boom boom here, I do want to find a space anomaly. It's the, the point of coming out here is, I think, to find the P-type anomaly. But I'm not really sure. Hmm. Like, I kind of don't want to just blow myself up uh, without finding those P-type anomalies because it came all this way. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! The fuck is that? We got a mollusk here. Okay, so maybe this isn't a P-type anomaly. It's a mollusk. An 
album 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 gourd mollusk interesting scan him oh wait yeah scan him not boop. Uh, no 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 careful 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 so can this kill me um Uh, hello. Hello. Mr. Mollusk. You're one ugly mother. This kind of look like, um, it's like the Ood from Doctor Who, the Ood. What happens if I just push you? Push you. Give you a little push. Push, 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 push. <laughs> I don't know if he's necessarily dead. I think he's, yeah, he's gotten, yeah, he's running away. He does seem to have a health bar. Um, okay, I'm going to try something for science. Please don't tell any uh, nature conservationists about what I'm about to do. What I would like to see for science... How do you do with missiles? He's an elusive little gourd. Yeah, he doesn't take damage. Not even torpedoes, eh? Also not defending himself. Okay, let's try other science. Uh, okay, we already did the... Wait, what the hell? What was that? Was it like a rogue missile that didn't explode the first time? Why is he down there all of a sudden? Is he fighting back? Oh. Oops, sorry sir. Did not mean to boop you. Okay, well, I don't think I can blow myself up on that guy, so I'm thinking maybe going back to the other, uh, oh, Praesnium. I don't think I have a Praesnium one. Hold on. Give me Codex. Give me Codex. No. That's cool, though. Gord Mollusk. So I guess these guys have little, um, kind of little fart um, holes that they can uh, move around with. And they just propel themselves with gas. But what do they eat? Like, what do you eat in space? Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, yeah, no worries if you gotta go. If it's late where you are, no worries. And, and sorry for going too long. I normally try to wrap these things up sooner. I think um, very shortly we're gonna blow ourselves up. But uh, I'll do a bio break and then... Um, so I'm kind of curious, like, it, it, if there's these Gord Mollusk guys here, will, the, will there be um, anomalies, or would I have to go back to the other nebula? Like, is there only a limit on, on only a couple things can be here? I love how he's moving around, though. That's super cool. But yeah, I don't think he's dangerous. Unfortunately, he cannot hurt me. Um, well, let me just see here. I kind of feel like, yeah, the other one, um, the other nebula is a little more visually cool with the orangeness. Uh, and if we can't find any anomalies, I'll just kill myself in a spiky boy. And then probably take another little bio break and then um, head to our final system and wrap the sheet up. Getting a signal out there. Oh, it's another mollusk. Oops. Oh, sorry, sir. I didn't realize I was going so fast. But yeah, I highly recommend. Like, hey, this is this is really cool. I uh, love the visuals, and I love the mystery that you can wander through this cloud and probably like I probably missed a, an anomaly or something that's like hiding in a small corner of that cloud. You'll never know. Right? 
Like, I could spend, uh, I could see myself spending a lot of time just, like, combing every inch of this cloud. But not, uh, not on stream, because, you know, I value your time. And your personal narratives. And your Armstrong movements. <laughs> cool! I just love the colors! Look at this coolness! It does feel like, you know, you've transitioned into the No Man's Sky universe. Oh my god, this is just kind of freaky, actually. So now I'm in, like, the dark part of the cloud. But you can see the uh, local star there. It's so cool how that looks. Alright, I'm gonna go back to the other cloud. I'm gonna blow myself up. We're gonna take a bio break. And then we'll get into the, sort of, uh, I guess the finale. Don't tell me what's not impossible. Operation Impossible. Oh. Yeah, I gotta stretch the old back. I'm starting to get... Oh, oh. Certain rigor mortis is starting to set in. Uh, so they can get pushed on by explosions or bumping. Okay. And uh, you can have a bunch of different ones in the SE cloud. They could be there. Okay. And anomalies usually hang around at the center of the cloud or hard to see with the naked eye. Usually fly straight through the middle while watching the contact list. Okay. Yeah, to be honest, I kind of put together, um, you know, like, uh, I wanted to have, like, you know, one of the reasons that you can die in Elite is pissing off the wrong space anomaly. And actually, funny enough, I don't have this system on that. I have just Lagrange Cloud um, uh, is what I have for Urt. So, like, different ways you can die in a Lagrange Cloud. So I don't know if there are actually are space anomalies at this location. Uh, or at least that wasn't uh, the intention of coming here. It was just to see different um, funky looking Lagrange clouds. Specifically, this orange one looks dope. Um, but, um, you know, again, could, could, could be. They could be in here. I just, I, I did sort of partial research and then sort of threw everything onto a big list. And um, God knows it's a little bit uh, jumbled up and disorganized because... I've got like the list of the things that I want to film, and then there's the locations that I want to visit, which I threw into a waypoint planner uh, to try and get the, the optimal route so that, you know, I wouldn't be jumping around and going back, oh, wait, I was just there, or oh, I was in that area. That's a very useful tool, by the way, the multi waypoint planner. Very useful when you're um, doing some space tourism. All right, so let's just try flying into this, this uh, Kabbalah's mess. And I guess, like, what, am I safe to assume that the center of the uh, Lagrange cloud would be where the signal is? And yes, yeah, some anomalies can fuck you up, and, and absolutely that's uh, what we experienced earlier. And um, I definitely want to have, like, a couple different anomalies in the video um, killing me. Like, for, for I might keep that as one category, but have, like, a couple of different... Like, I'm not going to do, like, getting killed by a Q-type anomaly, getting killed by a P-type anomaly, but, like, I'd like to have a Q and a P... Jesus Christ, that sounded weird. <laughs> I'd like to have a Q and a P, a P and a Q. Um, I'd like to have them in the, uh... In there. Alright, so, uh, how can we fuck ourselves up real quick here? We're going to turn off our shields. To go into camera mode. We're just gonna start rolling because this is just gorgeous. Oh my god. Okay, we're going to now. Boost, 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 boost. Boost, 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 boost. Oh, come on, black camera thing. Why you do this? Oh! Well, that was quick. <laughs> that did not take long at all. Well, so be it. So say we all. Now let's see where we respawn. Well, it doesn't give a reason for that. It's like reason, stupidity. Oh, lovely. And then you just redeploy at the local carrier. Well, there you go. That's perfect. Signal is as close to the center you got it. Okay, cool. I figured as much, because, like, if it's good, the signal's probably going to uh, 
be at the center of the object. That makes logical sense. All right, now uh, I will take a little bio break here before we get into the last round. The next destination should be around 963 light years ahead. If you want to head there, I am all in open, so go there and blow me up. Oh, actually, you know what? I did want to check this out because I'm like, why does this have star in it, right? That makes it special and different, and I need to know. This is kind of a cool um, little area of space with lots of stars. Nebulas, of course, are the, the birthing grounds for new um, star factories. So let's just go check out... Yeah, those spheres are solid. We've, we've determined that. We've verified this. Um, so let's just head over to this system, just see what the heck it is, if there's anything special there. Crazy mysteries abound. Probably not, because, you know... It, like, if there's a star... If, it, if the system has such an unusual name, I guarantee you people have seen it before. Oh, see what? Wait, what? Hold on a second. Oh, I picked the wrong system. Oops. It's that damn hold to click thing. It sometimes just uh, redirects your cursor. Yeah, Tito to Orionis Sea. Like, I guarantee you people have been here before. They've explored everything. There's going to be nothing uh, noteworthy there. Otherwise, it would have already been out in Galvan and Canon and all that stuff. But, I have personal curiosity. I want to know... What's this all about? What's going on in the star T2 duo? T2, 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 T2 Orion C. Why has it been marked as such? Let's do the weird Galnet thing. Let's pull up Galnet and everything goes haywire! First of all, okay, it's a small system of literally two stars. And you get. So, what's the deal? What is the deal? Like, sometimes, um, some systems that were like handcrafted would have like descriptions and stuff. What's so special about this? Mm, I guess we'll never know. But hell. Look at that. How about a death on the planet of death? Are you talking about that planet that goes... Um, like into the, the, the sort of uh, gravity well of, a, of that neutron star? So I did consider that, although that is quite... Um, you know, it's kind of far out. It's not an easy one to get to. Hi! It's waving at me. Um, yeah, I mean, technically, yeah, I think um, if there was a way to die that wouldn't be covered in the other ways to die, then certainly that would qualify. But, like, you know, like like some of the ones I have is, like, falling off a cliff, um, not breaking for a tourist beacon, death by geyser, death by lava... Uh, getting run over by your own SRV, which I have to figure out how you can do that. I'm thinking about, like, can I park it on a cliff and then just disembark as it's kind of... Just, to, like, put the handbrake on and disconnect. Is this one a roll for yet? No, I don't think so. Like, you would see a planetary nebula, probably, if it was, but... Um, that's a Class B. No. Uh, like, roll for are so rare. Um... Yeah, I don't know why it has a star. It could just be, like, again, like, with astronomy and naming of stars in particular, they really screwed it up because, like, you can see some, some of these have, like, two mass, and then, like, other ones will be, in this region in particular, V360 Orionis, and then over here you have, like, maybe one with, like, where's the other, like... Like, there's, there's like, several different naming conventions in astronomy... There's no, like, one system they have, and because they were all used at different times, like, yeah, yeah, so here's one called Ammo. And astronomy is kind of a confusing mess in that sense, where, like, there's no one system where all stars are named in the same nomenclature that, like, an elite, I think, like, imports a lot of the nomenclature from the different systems in there, so you can see a region where it's like, okay, V98 Orionis is, you know, near the two-mass J050, you know, sort of code, 
which is close to Tito, Tito 2, Tito 2. I should like to say that name. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to take a quick bio break, but uh, let me punch in the next destination. Let's just make sure that we are uh, going to be able to make it here in a reasonable amount of time. The first use Derek region, KCB, C2-2. Son of a bitch, that's what I suspected would happen. Is they say, oh, we can't figure out how to plot a route. Why? Because we're probably uh, trying to pass through a permanent locked zone. Because when you get to this region of space, there's this large swath, um, this is close to the California Nebula, the large swath of space that's just like impervious to Commander's COL-70 sector. Permit is required for this location. So, in order to get there properly, you either have to go like kind of up or down. Um, let me see here where. So maybe we can go like up, 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 up. up. Yeah, yeah. Want to plot route? Nope. Okay, let's try going up further. Yeah, I just prefer to use the damn root button as opposed to the... I really don't like the hold the plot root. It feels sort of... Um, sloppy. Uh, the COL 69 sector. It's not permit locked, it's cock blocked. Um... This means you'll plummet to your death on a planet while being in a war dwarf plume. I mean, that is kind of, like, different than most other ways to die, so I guess I could look into that. But, like, I might have to do an expedition that's, like, deep exploration. <laughs> All right, so this is going to take, yeah, eight jumps just to get up there, and then we'll have to replot once we get there. I don't need to be field scooping. Um, so I'm going to... Actually, rather than go to the bio break, I'm just going to let you look at this pretty beautiful Barnard's loop. Uh, if anyone comes and says, hey, just joining the stream, why is no one talking? Tell them I'm pooping. Well, I'm not pooping, I'm just... Whatever. You don't need to know. But uh, I'll be right back. And we will cap off the stream shortly.
back. Back in action. Back to the space. Back in the universe. Back in the elite dankus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Water went down the wrong tube. And what's what's wrong with my face? This one thing I do notice is um you'll see that like there's like a cutoff point for facial generation. And if you're too far away, it like reverses your face to a default, and then you can see like the hair change. It's actually not really well lit there. Hold on. Yeah, let's put it back at the star and show you. But it is kind of weird. Um, it, it's not a very long draw distance. Hold on, let me get some light here. Uh, there is star. Okay. Is that main star? Sure. Let's see if we can capture the weirdness. Oops, I'm still recording. How long have I been recording? Oh no, all my hard drive footage. So you can see there, okay. Let's just slow it down. Like, what's up with that? It's like it can't render my hair. <laughs> it turns into this like shiny chrome wig. And you can see like, even my collar changes, it's bizarre. When you're on foot, your face will change slightly too, which, which bothers me. It makes me feel like I'm still a hollow me. Which is, you know, naturally, we all know that's true. Anyway, man, what a beautiful region of space, though. Everyone should come out to the Horsehead region. Horsehead uh, region every once in a while. Or I guess you would call it the Bernard's Loop region. This Horsehead is just like a tiny little nebula but tucked in behind it. Ah, anyway, we are heading to the end of the stream. So I'm, I'm starting to get hungry. I need to eat food. I need to eat my din din. Um, but, you know, first of all, I'd say I um, appreciate you guys for, for sticking around so long. So maybe this has been a particularly long stream. Although I'm very proud that I'm getting through the list of all the locations. Uh, no exclusions. Didn't skip over any. Um, but, you know, uh, longer stream, all good. And, I'm, you know, appreciate you guys sticking around. Makes it a lot more fun when it's uh, uh, people talking in the comments. And we can chat about Elite or chat about other stuff. Um... <laughs> I'm just reading the comments here. It's like, uh, Spatula is dropping off the kids at the pool, everybody. <laughs> I hope he caps off the stream before he comes back from the toilet. Uh, like, what you mean? The, like, turns off the mic or whatever? Uh, I haven't thought of Commander Spatula as much as long distance, as much of a long distance trekker. Well, you know, I, I like exploration. I do like the long distance exploration. Um, it's just like, it, it, there's not much to do in terms of video making. Although, you know what, um, I'll be totally wrong there. Who was it? Uh, Commander Schumer did a really good exploration series. And um, Josh Hawkins himself did um, a great exploration series as well. Um, but I mean, like, I don't know. In terms of, like, humor and trying to come up with different situations to make episodes around... I think it's more of a challenge when you're out there in the black and there's nothing to really bounce off of. Except, oh, here's another planet. You know, that's where it's where uh, Turgeon Starstone also does a great series that involves uh, relies very heavily on animation, but uh, he has lots of characters and pulls it off very well. I know he's he's been working on a new episode. I can't wait for that one. It's been too long. Come on, Turgeon. Um, and yeah, I put these random playlists on uh, of music, but sometimes the music just lines up so nice. Um. Yeah, getting back from Colonia, like, it's always like, getting out there is great, but the return trip is the one that drags, because you just want to get back, and then you just find yourself, like, not exploring for the sake of fun, you're just trying to get to the destination. Again, that goes back to the th in thesis of, like, when you're trying to do something specific in Elite, the game gets in your way, it gets frustrating, but when you just kind of go with the flow, and you're just like, hey, let's just go to this region of space, start scanning stars, start looking for stuff, I love it. Right? It, it, that's when the game really shines. Um, yeah, you know what? And, and let me put this out there. Like, if anyone has any footage of them dying in interesting ways, um, or unique ways, um, feel free to send it to me, and uh, maybe I'll include it in the video. I don't need to necessarily be the one uh, blowing up for these videos, so if, if people had footage, I could easily incorporate it. Or, yeah, if you're near an interest, like, if someone's, hey, like, hey, I'm near the Death Planet, come multi-crew, Sure. I mean, technically, that's not really a rebuy because multi crew, you're a holobie, but, um, you know, I believe that we are all holobies in a hollow universe. <laughs> uh, a mega ship to the Guardian Ruins. Yes, there was like a ferry, wasn't there? Uh, 
Uh, is that still active? Is there still a fairy that you, you can just dock with and it pops off every day or something like that? Or every hour it, it, it swap or something? And player carrier fleet services. Yeah, and, and you know what? Uh, there are player carrier fleet services. I just wish there were better in-game tools to find said um, uh, player carriers. Like, they could advertise their fairy uh, somewhere in-game, right? Get really close and you'll see my true form! Isn't that Space Ranger near the California Nebula? Did you fly things in the mouth yet? I did, but I didn't record it. Uh, and didn't do it on a stream. So that's where we're going to end the stream is... It caps the stream of urine. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, but no, we're going to end the stream uh, getting eaten by Space Ranger. I figure that's a nice, big, dramatic finish uh, for exploration depth. Though there's still tons of different deaths. And I actually it was like... Yeah, I wanted to do one death where it was like smacking into a planet at 1% hull, but that doesn't apparently hurt you, which is bizarre. I'm going to do more experiments with that, see if I can nuzzle my way into planetary smack into... Uh, whatever. Smacking into a planet to die. Uh, but yeah, we'll be close to the California Nebula um, when we finish it off. Which will make it a little more reasonable, because obviously at some point after the stream I'll have to head back to the bubble Colonia seems like it'd be a, a trip since we had destination on the hop with a six site guardian system that Commander Namix discovered was what I went to before continuing on. Oh wait, there's six guardian sites in one system? That's kind of cool. Uh, what GPU do I have? Oh, I'm getting 144 frames per second in the loading screens. And then yeah, you can get like 130 here when I'm on the thing. What GPU? I guess the GPU is like the processor. I believe it's like a AMD Ryzen seven i think i'm not sure i bought like a like the computer store i bought from had like a bundle uh that had like the, the important thing was getting the rtx uh 3070 i believe it was what is that it looks like a is that an earth like it's an earth like so close to the sun okay i gotta see if it's an earth like is, is it even um yeah, it's discovered and mapped, but still, there's a pretty little Earth-like to look at here. Uh, let's just take a gander, check it out, you know? Let's let's take a, a look-see, take a peek, see what uh, beautiful sights it has to offer. Oh, it's going to turn out to be... Oh, it is the Earth-like. Okay, I was right. You can usually tell, because, like, um, that little icon down there will look uh, the same for heavy metal world, except it won't have that little dot. I can't quite point to it, but like you see, there's a little dot in the middle of the upper right of it. Looks like a little island. That's usually how you know it's an Earth-like, if you're not using the scanner. But yeah, uh, Rodrigo, man, like uh, I had a potato computer for the longest time, and so like this has been a big, big deal for me, uh, upgrading all my tech. Um, and I got a new monitor as well with it, a 27-inch. Uh, so it's like 144 frames per second uh, graphical capabilities. Like I, I'm just like, yeah, it's it's crazy good. And uh, you know, it's, uh, I've always had potatoes in my life, so um, having a real system to gawk at has been just a game changer. I can play all the games that I want now, and they don't crop out. What a nice pearl! What a nice little interesting planet. I always love when you look at Earth likes just looking at the continents and trying to imagine what the countries might be like. I can't wait till we can land on these puppies. Can you imagine like landing on that planet and finding like forests and native indigenous life forms, alien deer? That's a cool shot right there. That's what I'm waiting for. That's the that's when this game is going to take off. I'll oh, see you, Tokoso. You have a good night, man. Thanks for joining. All right. Uh, ooh, okay, we're not moving on because we're going the wrong way. Um, it, those thar Thargoid Scavengers, yes, they can hurt you on foot, uh, and that is on the list, uh, as well as exploding heat death inside of a burning station. Yes, those are on the list. 
Uh, I will get to them eventually. It's gonna. It's quite a long list. So far, I've got 75 on the list, and that's actually I think they added a couple since then. Um, and I've been already like cutting it up on the timeline and sort of like um, dividing them. So they'll be like it'll be like a video series where it'll be like. Here are the ways that you can die in or around a station. Here are the ways you can die on a planet. Here are the ways you can die um, while exploring in the black, right? And this stream here is focusing more on, like, the ways that you can die while exploring. And, of course, like, you know, while I'm out here, it's like, why not get a gander at some of these nice sights, right? Combine the love for rebuy with the love for um, visuals, right? Uh, Rodrigo, you have a Ryzen 5 3600X with an RTX 5700 XT. I mean, that it, 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 that sounds good. <laughs> I, I, I'm not a spec guy, so it's like I'm really bad when it comes to that stuff. I have to, I have to call my friend who's more of a, more of a tech, um, technically inclined person and be like, Hey, I found this online. It looks like a good price. What do you think? And he goes, um, well, considering how pricing is right now, uh, that's the best you're going to find. You should probably go for it. Okay. <laughs> I saved it for a long time to upgrade this system, and um, it's paying off. I feel it's worth it. Um, not just for like, playing games. The editing goes faster, too. I don't have to like render every scene. I can do my chunky animations a lot um, smoother and easier. It's amazing, like, you know, like, these systems have been long discovered, right? Like, even though we've only mapped, or I think the, the developers often say it's, like, less than 1% of the galaxy has been visited by commanders, and yet, you know, in areas like the bubble, you'll find that just, you know, every system has been discovered in some capacity, right? Maybe not all mapped, maybe, obviously, now first football is the thing you can get, but um, people have been prolific. There's a lot of prolific explorers in this game that go out and just gobble up that space graffiti. But, you know, if you go far enough in any direction, you're going to find completely unknown systems that you can claim all for yourself. All for your lonesome. You always hear uh, Slarty Bartfast when you see Fjords. Uh, okay, this is the uh, transition system. Um, say that looks like a thick atmosphere there. I kind of want to look at it, but I also am conscious of time, and I'm super hungry. Okay, so let's see if we can plot a route from here. No, of course not. All right, that's fun. We'll find another happy medium. Here, Ukchost. Uk Ukhost. There you go, that's just 10 jumps there, and then we should be able to go at that point down. We're trudging our way through the COL 69 sector. Well, that's the, that's the key, right? As long as you're having fun, that's what matters, honestly. That, 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 that's all that matters at the end of the day, is enjoy it, right? If you're if you're playing a game and you are not enjoying it, then why are you playing it, right? And um, I was always worried that when Odyssey came out, my system would not be able to cope with it. It turned out that it could, um, just not very well. But um, I had always sort of planned in my mind that when space legs drop, that is the time for me to finally upgrade and go with something that is top of the line that's way more expensive than I would normally, um, you know, feel comfortable going with, but that will last 10 to 15 years. Like, I won't need to even think about upgrading for a long time. But, oh no, is that a water world? I really want to scan it. That could be one too. No, 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 no. I'm just going to keep moving. Oh, wait, hold on. I just want to see one thing. Yeah, it's already back. It does make it now where, like, um, with the whole FSS scanner, you can, because there's, like, the frequency ranges, it's a lot easier to know from a glance. Uh, you jump in a system, jump into FSS. Is there a signal in, like, the Earth-like or water world range? Yeah. But because, you know, I'm an older player, um, I'm still used to the whole, like, you know, like, I, I remember when I first started Elite and just had a basic discovery scanner, I couldn't even afford an advanced one. 
you would find planets, like, it only had a 500 uh, light second range or whatever it was. You would find planets by looking at, uh, spying them through, like, parallax um, observation or whatever. So, you would sort of line up with the galactic plane, you would start moving down with it, and then just sort of look for anything that looked like a star that was moving against the background and go, okay, I think that's a planet, point yourself towards it, and then when you got close enough, um, bing the scanner, right? when you were literally manually identifying stars, right? Like, those were the real days. Um, and then for the longest time, you know, the way that you would scan a planet is just point at it, get close enough, and then eventually you, you got the spinny thing and, and it would finish the scan, right? And that's kind of how I've uh, developed, I guess, the muscle memory for exploration. So the FSS scanner, I almost, like, always forget about it. And obviously, like, the benefit of that is that you could sit by the main star and just scan the whole system without having to, um, you know, travel everywhere. But um, sometimes the instinct just takes over, and it's like, well, I'll just point towards it and then wait. <laughs> it is kind of a thing where there are some elements of Odyssey where I'm like, I'm not sure if I don't like it, or if I just need to, like, retrain myself to get used to it because I'm just not... It's not the way I used to do things, right? It's a thick corner. So many unmapped planets that I just want to... I just want to open them. Uh, what's JP Strider saying? A best tip for building a PC? Ask a friend who has insider knowledge. Yeah, honestly. Uh, everyone has like a friend who's like really into stacks, really into computer uh, tech, and up with current trends, and leads on it. And if you don't keep up with that stuff honestly like even when you look at like okay you think the naming conventions of stars are bad or confusing um it's like i don't know what the difference is between the, the 50650 and the rgx like you know it's like i told my friend i'm like yo um is this monitor good and he's like well you're gonna be looking for like frame rate and all this stuff and this one is a poor frame rate i'm like oh i didn't even know that was a monitor's thing that's how you know um behind on the tech i am He's like, oh, just send me the model number. And I'm like, uh... <laughs> like, how do I find the model number? You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, if you don't know... Like, I mean, I'm good with computers, but not with the hardware and the trends and what's good and what to look for in a graphics card and all that stuff. He's like, oh, yeah, this card that you're getting has G-Sync, and you need a monitor with G-Sync, but then even better than G-Sync is, like, the V-Sync. I'm like, what does that do? And he's like, have you ever been in a game where, like, the top half and the bottom half have been out of sync? And I'm like, if so, I, I probably haven't noticed it because of poor frame rates. He's like, well, you won't have to worry about that ever again. Or ever. Cool. I like not worrying about things. I'll buy it. <laughs> the Parallax Explorers. That's the real Elite. Yeah. And definitely my first Elite ranking was uh, in Exploration. And then uh, getting the next elite uh, was in trade, and that was honestly super easy because of void opals and low temperature diamonds. And I have yet to hit my combat elite. I'm still dangerous. Uh, professional in CQC, and uh, these new ranks. Already, I'm only like a couple levels in, and I feel like they're very slow to progress. Though, yeah, that's why I'm kind of like I don't know. Next stream. For lead, I, I'm either leaning towards like doing CQC, or more likely, I'd like to kind of do some like on foot combat zones and the FPS stuff. Which actually, like, I did a little, I did a few combat zones the other day, um, just offline, and um, yeah, I kind of like it. It's fun. It's more fun to do the combat when you have like an NPC team as opposed to when um, you're just out there trying to sneak into a facility and then they all try to start killing you. <laughs> Having uh, other bullet sponges around you definitely eases the experience or the level of skill required. <laughs> well, yeah, with this pandemic, everything's so expensive. But then on top of that, you also have like the crypto miners that have driven the, the pricing on the graphics cards up. And then I hear SSDs in the next one. See, look at this. This area is just littered with um, you know, permit locked systems. <laughs> so yeah, like, if I had tried to just upgrade my graphics card, I wouldn't have been able to do it because they're all sold out of inventory no matter where I look. But, 
you, you can still buy the graphics cards and you're more likely to be able to buy them in a pre-built system, right? So if you were, so kind of like, I remember thinking like, a, like this was like maybe a year ago, thinking about upgrading my graphics card. And, and uh, this is like, I, I even say more than a year ago, because it's pre-pandemic and oh my God, it, that was like more than a year ago that this started. Oh my God, the whole year has gone by in a blur. Um, but you know, even at that point, because of the cryptocurrency uh, trends, you still could having trouble getting graphics cards, and the prices were uh, even ridiculous, you know, over a year ago. And so I thought, well, rather than upgrade now, like, there's no point in upgrading my graphic card if my processor's still going to be poo-poo. So I'll save up further and look to buy like a whole uh, pre-built thing. I didn't think it was the right decision in the end. I'm happy with what I've done. But yeah, it's not, definitely not the time to be looking at new hardware, but then you start, start to think and go, well, when is? When is it going to uh, change, right? Like, let me put it this way. If you have a system right now that can run Odyssey fine, even at a, you know, an acceptable level, if it were me, I'd probably live with it, right? But I was at the low end of acceptable, and it was kind of like, okay, this would be fine if I'm just playing single player, but if I am playing with people or if I am streaming, uh, it was really pushing my limit. Or pushing my PC to the limit. Uh, plus, also, it was making some really weird noises, and the duct tape that was holding it together was starting to kind of peel off. So, you know, kind of multiple reasons why I had to upgrade. Yeah, you heard me, duct tape. If you ever remember the Red Green Show, it's, uh, duct tape solves all your problems. Just can't help but look at these systems as I go through and. You, know, you gotta wonder, has anyone been here before? Several people. I love when you, like, this is the thing. I hate those explorers that go out and, um, well, no, exactly, Rodrigo. If the game is running, if, it, if it's working fine for you, just leave it, right? Wait till it starts to crap out and then you can upgrade, right? And if you're gonna upgrade, don't go half ask, you know? Like, go, go full, go as high as you possibly can afford and not have to worry about it for, you know, years as opposed to needing to upgrade again. Hey, Tom Weaver, what's up? Yeah, I know, well, you know, it was like, uh, there was a system that had the RTX 1080i Ti thing, and I'm like, you know what? I don't need to have the absolute best, and the difference in price <laughs> from the one pre-built to the other one was a bit steep, right? Uh, like, the, like by a factor of, like, over, over a grand more, and I'm like... This is fine. The 3070 will do everything I need it to do for Odyssey. And, um, you know, if I truly, truly, truly need that little bit of an upgrade, by the time I need it, there'll be an even better card out there. You know? But if I just, you know, did and gave a shit about money, I would have dropped it. But, yeah. Get the ED Extended Universe people together in a foot combat zone. The dang Avengers. That's true. Uh, I, I would like to do uh, more stuff with them in general. Um, actually, I was talking to Ascorbius last night. Um, this was after he had premiered his video. I caught him on Discord. He was having a sort of post post launch party, getting sauced. And we were talking about doing more stuff together, just in general. Looks like another Earth like, but probably not. I guarantee it's probably, uh, probably not. Um, but hold on, let me just... Just in the off chance that it is. If it's been discovered, it probably is. Or at least it's tricked other people. Uh, but no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm getting... I'm blowing myself up <laughs> in, a, in a damn uh, dredger, and then I'm hungry, so I make dinner. Okay. We're almost there. Can we plot a route now? Please tell me. Please tell me yes. Come on. Yes! Why well, does it sound like Yoda? Sometimes, that's where these weird voices like um, people like Bradford come from. It's from just random moments where I go, what did, what did I just do? Can I do more of it? Oh, 3070 is nice, man. I mean, again, 144 frames a second in normal elite space. That's beyond anything I've ever experienced. And it's like a giant monitor now, so it's like, it's so big. Uh, my next step will be to break out the old Oculus and see how VR runs. Because I, like, I had just enough computing power to run Elite in Oculus um, Rift. 
before, and believe me, I think this is the best. This is the only VR game that I care. This is the only reason I bought a, a VR headset in the first place was for Elite, and um, I tried to play other games, and nothing ran as well as Elite. Right? Either they would make me feel nauseous, or they had frame rate issues. Now that I've upgraded, I probably won't get those frame rate issues, and that's what was making me nauseous. So like. I want to play things like Robo, Robo Recall. Um, I'd like to try that Half-Life Alex. Um, what was the other VR game that I was kind of interested in? Oh yeah, uh, Beat Saber and stuff like that. Like I'd like to try that stuff too. But um, I wasn't able to. Like it just like the VR just pushed my old system over the edge. Except for Elite. Elite was the only game, the only game that could run uh, the VR stuff well consistently. Uh, which is great, because I think this game is, like, perfect in VR. And then, of course, like, in Odyssey, they're like, yeah, we're kind of dropping VR, but not really. Like, you can still use the VR, from what I understand, is just when you go into foot mode, it, like, projects a screen, right? Which is probably annoying, but at the same token, um, if they went into, like, VR mode, where you have to, like, do that thing where you point and warp the sort of teleport walk, um, that would have ruined the immersion in Elite, so I'm, I'm kind of fine with the way that they're doing it like I mean let me put it this way I haven't seen it so I'd have to you know try it try it and you know tell you guys what my opinion is after I've tried it but uh, it's not like a deal breaker to me as long as I can still um, you know get some elite goodness in VR when I'm in my spaceship what is it called again okay so Splagbot. Okay. <laughs> thought that was the planet's name for a second. Splagbot. Uh, and then what do you say, Rodrigo? You miss NVIDIA in terms of drivers. Um, AMD drivers suck big time. Yeah, I think what I like about NVIDIA, I mean, number one, I use that for my um, video capture, like the shadow, they used to call it shadow play or whatever it was. Um, but I don't know, whatever the built-in video capture thing, um, that is nice and it's built in like i turned on this new system and it was working from day one uh the way to update drivers is super simple you just go in and click a button like it's all just very intuitive um which is good for someone like me who does not have intimate technical knowledge i don't know what like vsync is or vsync does um and so i, th I think it's a pretty user-friendly interface uh even setting up the new monitor was a bit of a challenge for me but um uh, there was like an NVIDIA control panel that was easier to use than the Windows one. So definitely, like, you know, I've, I've, I've actually, because I upgraded to this, uh, what is it, 3070 or whatever, from a 970, right? So it was a big, big leap, um, uh, sort of upwards. Definitely, like, you know, and that's the thing, like, that's where I don't get these people that, like, get a new phone every year or upgrade their system every couple years just incrementally just like a slightly better graphics card it's like when you go from a you know a 970 <laughs> to a 3070 my jaw was open for like a few days you know every time i would look at something that i was playing um i'd be spellbound right it was such a big difference that you notice it right and you really appreciate it but if you're just upgrading incrementally like you may not i don't know i'm not one of those people that like notices the tiny little upgrades right But, um, yeah, maybe in 10 to 15 years, they'll have quantum computing and whole new video cards that will, you know, send your processing power into a space network or something. Uh, who knows, right? But for now, I'm very, very pleased um, with the way this performs. And obviously, you know, once they optimize Odyssey a little bit more, um, I'll still be getting great frame rates on the ground in, in the, um, uh, the bases. Well, in due time. Oh, time. oh my god, I'm so hungry. This is one of those things where I'm like, uh, like even just, I'm like, would it be faster to order um, a meal delivery as opposed to like having to make my own food? I don't even think I, yeah, I was gonna make stir fry tonight. But I think I might just order a pizza and do that tomorrow. Space pizza. Also, that is something that I want to see. Is I want to, They've given us space taxis, um, and they use the adder, and I think that's perfect. Absolutely perfect there. The next thing they need to do is put space pizza. 
and space pizza delivery. And let me get missions to deliver pizza, but more importantly, I want to just like see pizza delivery guys all over the cosmos. Because with the billions and billions of people out there in the universe, uh, what you're telling me they don't order pizza? But I want to see like little pizza adders going around and you know hunt them down and, and steal their pizza, and then deliver it myself. <laughs> to, to take it where it was destined anyway, or eat pizza. Now that that would be the thing is like maybe may, uh, this is the thing. This is pure speculation, but like can you imagine if like in early Odyssey development, they're like yeah we'll put the bartender in and then commanders can order drinks, and then they change it at some point to just be oh they can trade materials, which is dumb. But like, <clears throat> if you could order drinks from the, the bartender and, and drink them, like, do you remember? Because I do remember, like, as they were starting to announce Odyssey or just early on, like, people were seeing early stuff and wondering, like, will they put in survival mechanics? Like, will you have to eat food and drink water? <laughs> and can you imagine? Oh, I got a, I got a scoop actually. I got a scoop, 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 scoop. Uh, can you imagine if? Uh, they put it in the game where like you had to load up on an exploration trek a trip with like pizza and snacks and, and beer and all that sort of stuff and you know as you're going you jump into a new system and it's like you have consumed one pizza i mean there's part of me that goes that's kind of cool like if they just put it in optionally uh like you go get a drink or, or eat a pizza slice cool or even better if like you ate pizza and then it gave you some sort of like nice warm fuzzy feels bonus and you're, you know, you would shoot longer or better or something like that. That would be cool. Uh, hold on, I don't see any here. Okay, so the once we get here, which is the next jump. So if you don't know about the backstory of Dredger, or what this system's about, um, recently, this is not too long ago, maybe about a month or two, uh, there was a, a old generation ship called the Hesperus, which was discovered um, through, I believe, listening posts. Um, and uh, essentially, the, the generation ship was discovered. It is in an asteroid um, signal source. So as we get here, you see here it is in, I believe, cluster one, which is interesting because they've never really hit stuff here before. Um, and when people went out to check it out, it turned out that, um, surprisingly, next to it, there was an old abandoned derelict dredger. And the dredger, quote unquote, clans, um, in the Elite Dangerous Lore were like, you know, essentially going out there and, and using the dredger to collect materials, but there's still apparently some dredger clans out there that are still, you know, sort of ancient humans that have branched off and just been going around surviving on these sort of megaship colonies, right? Which I love that lore. I think that's a super cool, super cool idea. Um, but here's the thing. Um, for those who have been playing for a while, dredger has actually appeared in the game. I want to say it was in a beta. I don't know, it was somewhere in Horizons, maybe it was the Beta 4 Horizons, maybe it was one of the Horizons updates. Um, they were in the Beta, everyone was like, super cool, these are awesome, and then they mysteriously disappeared, and they hadn't been seen since. And so just randomly, oop, did I pick the wrong asteroid? Or do I have to be in Horizons now? To, did I pick the wrong belt cluster? What'd I do? Um, what the hell is that? Uh, no, no, no. Oh, it's sad. What is that, though? Is it just one of those, like, lines of stars? Is that maybe a white dwarf? There's no white dwarf here. Hmm. Okay. Um, wait, 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 wait. Oh, it's in the B star. I'm at the wrong star. My bad. So I'm like, I'm pretty sure. Uh, oh yeah, uh, again, yeah. The soundtrack is all Tokoso music, and it is phenomenal. Uh, dude is a musical genius. Absolutely love his work. Um. Yeah, I was gonna say that. I'm like, for the second, what have I done? Oh wait, hold on. Look what they've done. Look what they've done. Why you do this, Frontier? I guess the cat's out of the bag, so they're just like, eh, we'll let everyone know. Uh, but yes, okay, well that makes it a lot easier now. <laughs> but yeah, it was kind of cool where, um, you know, obviously, like, it had been a while since we'd heard about, 
you know, a big freaking mystery. I don't feel like I'm in Super Cruise. This star must be unusually big. How big are you, boy? It's not that big. Yeah, it's not even as big as our sun. Just some weird gravity wall there. Uh, but yeah, so like, obviously we hadn't seen dredgers in, in years and years and years. There had just been sort of um, a few of them in a beta, then they disappeared, and all of a sudden we hear about a new mystery in the game, a new generation ship to find, and on top of that, just randomly, a dredger. And on top of that, the location where it was being found, inside of an asteroid cluster at the B-Star here, was something we didn't know that they were ever doing, right? So... For all you people looking for racks, though, you know, we've always heard, um, you know, you're obviously not going to find a system called racks on the gal map, but maybe it's somewhere in a system hidden, and hey, it could be in an asteroid belt. And who goes to check these asteroid belts? No one. No one drops in a star. There's no value in, in dropping in an asteroid belt unless you need to mine, and even then, just look for a ring planet, right? So that would be a great place to hide things you don't want people to find. And now we know that they know to do it and how to do it. And they have a system for doing it. So I think that's, um, you know, the Hesperus thing, while not ground shattering, had a lot of coolness about it. Um, the other thing that was kind of cool about it was that when you ultimately uh, went to the Hesperus, you were then given a message as you were trying to leave, contacting you and asking you, hey, can you bring those logs uh, to me, I can't remember the name of the guy. It was like the Oracle or the, you know, the the Doracle, the Oracle. I, I don't know, whatever. It was like one of them code names. The the Scavenger, the Scoop, the Scoopinator. I am the Scoopinator. Please scoop the data for me. Um, point is, he's like, yeah, I'll pay you a couple million bucks if you bring me the data. And you know, um, after that, I might let you know if there's more stuff to investigate. Right. So I brought him the data, not knowing whether he was using it for good or ill, just to hopefully, you know, put myself on a list of commanders who completed this sort of mission um, in the hopes that there will be some future follow-up with that, that character, right? And that's, like, the, this to me is, like, you know, when we were talking earlier about, like, what can what are things that Frontier can do to, like, make this game interesting? It's, like, these in-game mysteries, to me, this is optimal gameplay. This is the coolest part. You have a one-to-one... -one galaxy it is literally a giant haystack and drop me a few clues and lead me down to this area of space where you know i'm gonna have to search for something now don't make don't make me have to search five million stars give me clues and hints to, to light the way signal sources or, or um, listening posts or breadcrumbs in the news or something right but i think that that tends to lead to like the, the, what suits Elite best, right? Like, like exploration, I think, is, is great in Elite. And, you know, finding stuff and looking at cool stuff and the scale of things, like, it all kind of culminates, I think, in a really nice, um, delicious um, story soup, you know? So, kudos to the Frontier for doing the Hesperus thing. I'm not sure. Like, and again, you wonder in, in the back of your mind, did they put this in recently? Like, did they throw the Hesperus in the game three or four months ago and then sort of lead the breadcrumbs? Or has this been in the game for like two years and no one's ever found it? Or has it been in the game even longer, right? You know, there, there's something in the back of my mind that thinks with like, you know, uh, the only thing we know about Raxla is really that, you know, David Braben has said it's been in the game since the beginning. And then there's sort of that more nebulous quote where like Michael Brooks said to a room of like content creators that someone had visited the system Raxla was in and left, but no one ever found it, right? And you always doubt that and think, like, oh, you know, they're probably just saying that, you know. But then you see something like this and you're like, yeah, you know, maybe. Maybe. And JP Strider, yeah, I, I'm sure some Roxla hunters were looking in outer asteroid belts for, for you know, for, for Roxla in many different places. But again, it's a one to one simulation of the Milky Way galaxy. Let's say Roxla is like five systems away from Shinrata in an asteroid belt. It might even still be likely that even though they looked, they didn't find it. Or maybe you had to go in the asteroid belt and then perform an action or do a series of actions. Or maybe you had to have a certain ranking or something in your cargo for it to appear, right? Um, no one knows. But definitely, like, the Hesperus was one of those things where it kind of reinvigorated um, what I was so interested in about um, in early Elite. Um, 
Specifically, like, when I started making the Dangus videos, when they were, you know, um, spoon-dripping the return of the Thargoids, right? Like, at that point, up until the first barnacle was spotted, you didn't... There were only humans in the galaxy. There were no indications other than Soontail relics and the Mars relic that there were even aliens in this galaxy, right? Other than the fact that everyone knew about Thargoids from the previous games and expected them to make a return, right? The return. Um, but when the first barnacle was there, it's like, okay, now there's something. We're, we're on a path. What's next? What's next? And I think that was a great era uh, for the game because they would kind of drop those little things in there. Um, unfortunately, I think it must be hard for the developers to do because, you know, as much as they... they you know, I remember, like, when Thargoid bases went in there, I'm pretty sure, like, there was a leak where someone, you know, dived into the code and found, like, oh, there's things called Thargoid bases, right? It's like... I know there's been some more recent leaks. I haven't actually read the details of myself because I want, like, that plausible deniability, right? I want to be legitimately surprised by something cool and new. Um, but, you know, I'm sure someone saw in the code, oh, Thargoid Mothership, motherships are coming. That's why everyone's talking about motherships, right? But, yeah, who knows, right? And how many red herrings do they put in the code as well? That would be a... If I were a, a developer on a lead trying to hide something, I'd be hiding it by um, putting more obvious things. You know, I, I'd call my, like, Thargoid Mothership, like, background texture 269, and then I would put, like, something like, you know, um, Guardian Mothership as, like, a, a fake thing that, that is just, like, a rock texture. <laughs> but then, of course, you, you know, then you hire a new person. It's like, so how to... How does this game work? Well, if anything's called a rock texture, then it is uh, definitely alien technology. And if it's called something alien, then it's just a rock. Don't be confused. Like, how do you balance that, like, coding and simplicity needs compared to, like, I don't want people to, like, hack my code <laughs> and, and leak my secrets? Rodrigo, you're saying uh, you'll give the game a second try because it's so good and there's so much potential. Yeah, no, I mean... I'm certainly disappointed about a lot of things um, related to Odyssey, but um, you know, I think that there, there's there's so much in this game to like. Not everyone's gonna like the same things, and you know, I'm gonna give it a try as long as possible because it is definitely my favorite game. I've had more bang for buck and more fun in this game than you know most other games that I played all the other games that I've played. Okay. Just wondering if, like, is are these signal sources, like, all in the same space? Yeah, I guess they are, right? It's kind of weird to see, like, three signal sources in one, right? It's a three for one. Signal sources are going crazy. Buy yours today. And, and wait, there's more. With these three signal sources, we'll also send you a free sun. Alrighty. So, uh, we'll just scope out the area first. So, where is the Hesperus? So there, there you have a low-class science vessel. There's also a tourist beacon already. Oh my god. They don't, they don't waste any time, do they? Let's just see what's on the tourist beacon. The Hesperus was a research vessel that vanished in 3113. And what, it's 3307, so this is like 200 years ago in uh, space time. Uh, it was the sister site, uh, sister ship of the Atom Master, a derelict megaship in the Toucan system. Both were owned by Azimuth Biochemicals and were investigating evidence of alien artifacts. The wreck of the Hesperus was discovered in April 3307 with the entire crew missing or dead. It had been salvaged by the Scrivener's Crown clan, who removed its cargo and data drives. Log 1. This is the first of two encrypted logs they discovered, but were unable to encode. Um, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to read this whole thing. If you want to read all this lovely lore, uh, Pharma Sapien, Psychopaths, yeah, come on out here and check out the logs yourself. It's worth the trip, um, especially all the cool stuff that's in this area to check out. But, um more interesting than uh, the uh, Hesperus itself, which is cool and interesting, are these dredgers. And man, I, you know, I would love to see more of uh, these just randomly popping up and having story items. Like, this dredger is, uh, you know, attacking this small outpost in a system. 
Like, how cool would that be? And what's cool and unique about them is uh, really this front bit, which is a sort of a large gated area that sucks things in and crushes it up in its maw. And that's what we're going to be doing here. Now we're going to be ending our stream. And oh, okay, hold on. Not ready, not ready, not ready. Not ready. Ease it down. Ease it down. They're pretty scary looking um, things. But yeah, this thing has just been going through the entire... Um, uh, going through space since God knows when. Uh, 200, 300, 400 years. Eating stuff up. Um, how many weeks is that? What, weeks between the Hesperus and now? I don't know, you do the math. <laughs> uh, in my opinion, uh, this is the best space sim at the moment. I agree. Uh, I, I don't think there's... I, I mean, I love No Man's Sky for its creativity and stuff, but... Um, it's not really a space sim, is it? And um, Star Citizen is a wonderful tech demo and great potential, but not sure it's uh, also what I would call, you know, a game. All right, I'm gonna start rolling. Let's do this. All right, this is Death by Space Treasure. Turn flight assist off. No, 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 And then the black screen of death. Oh my god, are you serious? Come on. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. Okay, that works. I'm like still in there. I'm not dying. <laughs> Is my ship now, like, invincible? Oh, 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 no, no, no. Stop it! Ah! <laughs> this is horrifying! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> you flew your conda in that dredger? Man. This dredger has been well fed. Maybe a little too well fed. Well, that is death by space stretcher. And if you can get that stupid damn camera to work, then, uh... Oh, that's lovely. I, I get to redeploy a fleet carrier here as opposed to warp all the way back. That's nice. Because actually, one of the other deaths that I have is, um... And I might as well just do this while, uh, while um, capping off the stream. Is to smash into a space uh, tourist beacon. So, why not do that? Why not do that here in this beautiful location? Um... But yeah, I really hope you're going to get uh, CGs where we have to stop a dredger from a collision course with a station or base. Yes! Or like, you know, this asteroid is going to hit a planet and like the only way to stop this asteroid is um, everyone has to shoot it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But I would love more like um, moments like that, right? Moments of just like, ah. Okay, I'm going to actually target the uh, tourist people again. So I'll just go back, I'm going to ram myself into the tourist beacon, that will be our final death for the stream. Uh, and then I'm going to go see about eating some foods. But um, yeah, again, just as we you know, kind of wrap up the end here, I uh, appreciate you guys for sticking around and joining me on this dangerous expedition. I'll be uh, attempting to stream you know, most Saturdays around the afternoon, Eastern Standard Time, so whatever that is in UTC. I don't know, but like 2 or 3 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time is usually when I try to do it. Um, I get more consistent with it. And um, if you haven't been following along with my sort of story videos, the next one will be out pretty soon. Um, as early as next week, I'm thinking. Though i um, waiting on some voiceovers and then need to do a little bit more cutting, a little bit more filming. But it's pretty, it's looking pretty good. But I would say like 75% done. And it is funny, man. This new episode is really good. I'm really happy with it. So that'd be cool. Um, yeah. And then other than that, you know, um, as I continue to stream, I might start eventually looking at like doing like that dual stream thing between like uh, uh, what is the other one? Twitch and uh, YouTube. That might eventually be part of my plan after I'm getting my you know stream legs stretched. 
But uh, overall, I've just been, you know, despite all the flaws, despite all the controversy, I've been really enjoying uh, Odyssey and just kind of getting back into the game. I haven't, like, wanted to play uh, the game and just had the desire to just goof around in it um, really for, for quite a long time, like a couple years, right? Since, like, early, uh, early Odyssey. Damn you, Space Treasure. All right, uh, we want to slam into Tourist Beacon. Where is Tourist Beacon? Uh, let's see. Wait, hold on a second. What are those canisters? It's just a bunch of shit around here. Galvanizing alloys and all that stuff. Probably some good material farming of this location. Okay. Actually, let me just, uh, before I do that, let's just... Can we rub up against this generation ship to... Get our hull to an appropriate level so that we don't embarrass ourselves by slamming into that beacon. I feel like I could go into the dredger and just have it chip away at me. But... Okay. Stop a dredger by slamming your carrier into it, yeah. <laughs> That's one way to do it. That would remi that reminds me of um, there's the Star Trek original series, the the Doomsday Machine. Where there's that like crazy thing with the hull that can't be destroyed, uh, just going around eating planets, and oh my god, it's on a trajectory for Earth. And you have like that second um, Enterprise type ship there, and uh, this sort of crazy. Uh, it was like the crazy captain. It was like Captain Kirk it goes on it, and then they're like trying to transport him. And he's like, I'm gonna ram this Enterprise ship right down its goddamn throat. Like that was a dope episode. That was the one that got me into Star Trek, originally. The Doomsday Machine. Look it up, man. If you never watched the original Star Trek, it's pretty dated now. <laughs> Some episodes are very, like, of that time. But, I don't know, I'm just trying to line this up perfectly. Okay. But, um... So I, I would say, like, you know, not 100% of all episodes are going to translate into, like, good modern... Tales on like you know TNG or something, where I don't know even TNG is very dated at times. But anyway, where'd it go? Where'd you go? I have to do parallax to find the damn thing I was looking at. Here it is. But where did I go? Which direction did I come from? Which I think whatever. I'm just gonna do a nice close up, but in front of the star a little bit. So that you can... I think, yeah, maybe there. There. Let's see that a little bit more. Okay. Alright. I'm going to start rolling. Uh, Jamie, sorry, you're saying you're always, you always miss my streams. Now you got the notification right uh, when you... Uh, right when I got work and sat down at the bus, good times. Yeah, I know. I'm, I, I'm bad at announcing it, but I'll try to do, like, regular times. That way, um, you know, people at least know when it's going to happen kind of thing. Remember that? That Like, I'm bad at watching people's streams, too. Um, oop, there we go. I have to do that footage in slow-mo, because <laughs> you can barely see that. <laughs> I see Evolution. Yeah, I'm, I'm winding up as well. Um. I'm gonna call call the stream there, but no, thank you guys for joining. And you know, I'll, I'll be doing this you know, regularly in the afternoons uh, on Saturdays. So I'll stop by, hang out. I'm always streaming in open, so you can always always welcome to join the wing or come and blow me up. I don't care. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining, guys. I will see everyone on the next Dangus. Um, oh seven. Perfect timing with the music there. <laughs> All right. Bye.